Okay, maybe we will take the freeway. Okay, so we're making money off the deal. Oh, we're going to Hollywood. Shit. Forgot about that. We're in Hollywood. Do, 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 do. Okay, so... So, um... So, the Adolf Hitler Nazis, they were hunting to kill, and you don't read books or we'll kill you, and we're going to force you in these hate cages, which are disguised, which is LAPD and the jail cells, um, are talking about proper procedures. But but if I was living my life like everyone else, I'd be, I wouldn't even be near, the situation wouldn't even come close to existing, okay? If, if, if I wasn't being hunted, okay? I, it would be, okay, four people took me to strip clubs, one in each state to exterminate me, and that's not proper procedure, is it? Okay, and by the way, if I went to strip clubs under my own decision-making, this wouldn't be happening, correct? So, it's not about the strip clubs, it's about the people paid off to have me killed, okay? And, um... Like, you understand where I'm going with that. It's, um... So, then they're babbling about procedure. And the only reason my stepfather, Arnold Silver, is talking about procedure with his used car salesman lingo because he has the inability to be an honest, decent person. And I don't know why my mother even fucking married this guy. But, but um... Because she fits the same profile, I guess. Um, but, um... So proper procedure is people should be paid off to try to set people up in a frame or rid them of the world. And proper procedure is if everyone else knows about it, they should say something. This is what's going on. It's wrong. Okay. And proper procedure is the black people trying to manipulate me to think that, that I'm NWA and it's about fuck the police for the First Amendment constitutional freedom of speech because they don't want the fucking Jew out in public breathing or talking to people, right? Um, well, Kevin, you can't stereotype. Well, uh, if I haven't met one that didn't take part, and this is a worldwide affair... Actually, I did meet one, or I didn't meet him. He stopped the Long Beach... He stopped the Long Beach attack thing, or he tried to, uh, from the black skater. But... Um, and I was sort of like surprised, like like in this worldwide mob, but still, but still, this is a planetary affair, and nobody, and I'm not just talking to black community, is coming forwards saying it's wrong. They're not even admitting it's happening, and that that is a form. So so what procedure is that? There's a planetary ex- murder operation or extermination operation since five years old for lack of some hair or other things like that that are t- totally like like nitpicking imperfection the trivial pursuit and as we speak right now at this very moment in time hey you over here what's going on what's this about what were you told how were you given the information who's doing it you don't have the right to know that just fucking die so is it for me well, you know, maybe we'll throw you in jail and then you'll get out and then then we still won't tell you, right? You'll just be like, I don't understand. It's for you. It's for you. For the Constitution. For the First Amendment. It's for me. Uh, they're not my conscious choice. They're not conscious choice. Eh. They're not conscious choices on my behalf. It gets all premeditated. Out of hate and anger. It's not, there's no, there's no. Okay, right? If I get together with some people and we say this is what we want to do for the First Amendment, freedom of speech, okay, then, then you're doing something. But if someone puts a gun to your head saying you're going to do this for the First Amendment, freedom of speech, and I'm going to make it happen, then it's not about the First Amendment of freedom of speech or NWA. Okay, you're just being hunted. Okay, so, so, have I ever had a dialogue about these other than some guy saying 
Um, I don't think I got that line on it, did I? Some, or maybe I did. Some guy saying my license plate says fuck the police. Yeah, I did. And I have a license plate, Kevin Perlman Target. Does my website say fuck the police or does my website say I'm a, I'm a government target and I'm being hunted and this is unacceptable, right? You understand? They're completely different fucking things. And it's not just about the First Amendment of freedom of speech. It's about the, the breathing amendment. It's about government killing people. Okay. Uh, so procedures... I mean, give me a fucking break. Okay, it's like... Hey, uh, hey uh, Adolf Hitler telling you about procedures. Like, like, you know what, um, we, we've had you shackled for five years straight and you drooled on yourself and drooling on yourself is not proper procedures. <laughs> okay, right? You're just like, what? Okay, so... Fucking magnifying glass thing. It's killing me. Steve Levinson tear dog's throat out or more remove dog's throat and mass attacks. I guess I, I mentioned I pretty much went into that. Um, Royer tells me I shouldn't post things on the internet. Judge could revoke bail, and this is true. And someone could make bunk calls to accomplish this with the people trying to set me up with these corrupt police officers hunting me since five black eyebrows trying to make it look like OCD and mental illness. So, so, um, So that's true. You know, the, you know the judge. Normally, the judge, though, I think, would be like, "Listen, Kevin, would you refrain from posting things on the net?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, okay." But, but my lawyer. So this was sort of a pure pressure move from my lawyer and Steve Levinson. More so, Steve Levinson, because he said, "I have a friend that removed a dog's vocal cords," and that was after I said, "Your friend Dincy," and like 15 minutes later, he sort of. Okay, so. Did that really happen, or is it a threat, or is it... And it seemed like he was connected with my lawyer, and I don't want to jump to conclusions here. Um, however, if these were normal circumstances, I wouldn't have to be posting anything about anything on the internet, other than maybe a few friendly jokes and being social or not social or whatever, right? So, so the circumstances here are... I'm being forced in this situation because everything is corrupt and illegal and the arrests are illegal, the worldwide punching in the back of the head is illegal every day of my life, minute by minute, to get, give them what they want, to lock me away, to... So you have no way of defending... You can't even pay a lawyer. My lawyer's been paid like fucking shitloads, okay? And I can't... I don't know him, 
So, but he's very standoffish and doesn't really want to, um, like he's not, I've asked him twice this week to call me and he's avoiding me and, right? And so, so they seem connected, okay? But I can't tell you because there's a planet of people trying to lock me away and cover this up and, and eradicate me since five years old. So, you shouldn't post on the internet. But what do you do? Right, proper procedures. Well, the proper procedures is the the proper procedure is criminal defense attorneys are supposed to to defend you and and judges. I'm not saying my current judge is bad or anything. He actually seems like he could be on the level. Um, but Eric Harmon was he fucked me over illegal operation. You fucking name it. Um, and um, there's a planet helping, and there's no honesty behind anything on any level and right now it's sort of like hint hint if you post something anything if you post anything on the internet we're going to lock you away that was sort of the seemed like a indirect conspiracy message now am I being too sensitive and I don't know you know but but it doesn't seem like it okay so especially with the past history of everyone and everything right um, and the daily attacks, and the you better learn to accept it, and because we don't want to admit that what we did, they did is wrong, or their lives are wrong. Okay, um, what they did, not we did. Okay, I have a list of things I'm not allowed to have an opinion about. Wait, oh, not allowed to have an opinion about myself, or I'm hunt, or I'm hunted. By my family and the judicial system with worldwide support. Only people that ever end up in my life are the most psychotic. I think I went through that. As I'm told, I'm not allowed to tell anyone what's being done to my life. Especially the police that's five years old. And these worldwide videos are making people go irate because they can't have the truth out there to the world. But And these videos, I, I don't know what I was... I think I'm referring to all the, the proof I have in my website and the videos um, are making people go irate. But you're going to say... But you're going to say... Okay, so I have proof of these worldwide murder operations or eradication operations, correct? And that's making everyone worldwide go irate. Now, if you're a same rational person, you're going to say... You're going to say, if you're a same rational person, you're going to say, why would a planet... Okay, why would a planet be mad at someone for saying there's a planet of people trying to eradicate them and it's unacceptable and you have a right to breathe and be treated the same as everyone else and this heinous, illegal, worldwide, 47-year, minute-by-minute extermination operations are unacceptable and why would that make anyone mad? Okay, that's what you're going to say. Now, they're going to lie and they're going to go... I don't believe you, and and you're just doing this for attention, and man, buddy, and you're going to say, and you're going to say, well, then why didn't you just call me man or buddy, okay, I mean, so you know what's going on, so why... And that also happens at the police station with every single police officer worldwide. So you're going to say, why would you be mad? So you're, you're mad at the guy you're hunting to kill out of hate and rage for five-year-old Jews without eyebrows or whatever. And he has an opinion about it, and that's what's making them mad. They're, Look, you don't have the right to kill me or eradicate me. You don't have that right. And they're mad. They're irate. They're like... This, fucking piece of shit you're exposing me from from hunting you to kill you since five years old you piece of fucking shit how fucking dare you 
you sick fucking, you, you ruined my planet of fucking Jew killers. And you're like, huh? <laughs> like what? Like, are you confused? I'm confused. I, uh, are you confused? Well, you're not confused because you you know what's going on and I don't. But I, it's not sure shit ain't for me. Okay, but um, okay. So so it's not explained. It's just a complete paradox and conundrum and and a bulk of confusion of why an entire planet is hunting a five-year-old Jew, but we, we can we can piece it together and we can say, okay, well, the psychology community is throwing these fucking bunk labels and over-dramatizing trivial imperfection. And you can see the, you can see the patchiness, the, the patch atoms. See the patch atoms. Okay, so I'm growing them back. And like I said, that's going to make them angrier, right? Okay, because because it's all about you don't have eyebrows and you're dangerous and this that. But then when you have eyebrows, or better yet, if I go to the gym and be healthy, they get angrier and angrier because the Jews walking around or whatever. And then you go, what's going on there? You know what you did? I don't. I can't fucking. I can't. Can you? If you have the energy and time to build planetary murder operations, don't you have the energy to or or the the capabilities? Don't you have the capability of just telling me what's going on? I mean, maybe that'll end it right there. I think you did this. No, I didn't. Well, yeah, you did because you're a liar. Do you have proof? No. Uh, okay, it's, it's over, right? No, it's not over because I don't believe you. Okay, you don't believe me, don't talk to me. Oh, well, now he got away with the crime. Okay, well, I mean, that's why we have the judicial system, right? I mean, that's the whole point is that it keeps everyone safe. And the last thing I want to do is support a judicial system and say, oh, I'll go to jail so that you're allowed to... I'll go to jail. I'll willingly not fight against this. Right? The black community. Kevin, just accept. I, I willingly will not fight against this to enable LAPD to hunt and kill whoever they want out of their hate, rage, and security fear. Especially based on psychological labeling, right? I mean... Hey, possible ADHD blows fucking brains out. <laughs> you know? Possible minor depression blows brains out. So now, and I never thought about it that way, but that, that is, I think, hitting the nail right in the head there. Okay, um, that's probably why they're trying to make it an NWA, you know, fuck the plays, First Amendment freedom of speech. Well, it's a little bit more complicated, right? Um, this isn't a two-bit fucking media, two-bit Hollywood fucking, um, a two-bit Hollywood fucking publicity stunt, which is probably, uh, realizing that, that, uh, Steve Levinson is involved with some musician media thing, but he hasn't, he hasn't told me who he is, see, he just showed up, uh, manipulating, okay, lawyer tells me, fuck, he hasn't divulged who he is, he's coming by with a fucking wig and shit, and he's, befriending me and when I walk away if I start gravitating towards other people the mental the provokings the verbal provokings ramp up like you either hang out with this guy who is sort of nice to you in a one a little bit more indirectly uh okay let's say you go to a car meet or anywhere else and every person is provoking you man 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 whistle 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 and then there's one guy that comes in and so this is the dynamics and he's has something to talk about he has something to talk about he's not whistling at you he's not calling you man over and over however he's working with everyone else in 
manipulating, provoking ways, but it's in indirect versus direct. So you're gravitating towards the indir- you're gravitating towards the indirect abuse because you don't want a one-on-one fucking abuse. And then you walk away, and then it gets more aggressive, like 70 people throwing rocks at your head or, or walking by going, all righty, all righty, all righty, all righty. And then you gravitate back because you don't want to deal with that, so you gravitate towards something that seems positive, but he's working with the police to try to gather information and manipulate you down the wrong path and hint, hint, that it's, and they're going to try to cover up that this guy works for this media and it's a media thing and Kevin's working with this media too and you're like you're not in on it okay you're not in on the scenario you're not they're sort of using you as a scapegoat or a patsy right and it's worldwide but it's a worldwide operation where it it really doesn't make sense if it's a worldwide operation because then you can't gravitate towards anything right okay so Are the eyebrows... Are the eyebrows making people hunt you to kill you or set you or frame you? What is this? I think I think what I was getting at there, I didn't tell you very well, is that, remember, the okay, so the police keep saying that it's the eye... Or that I'm... Kevin is making... Okay, now this is just shit. What do you do? Uh, Kevin is making a planet of sickos hunt me. Okay, uh, for since five years old. And I explained like example, my teacher going down to a jokey t-shirt in '91, and I can apply this to anything. I apply. If I buy a hat right now, doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter if it's a top hat. Doesn't matter if it's a fedora. It doesn't matter. If it's a baseball cap. They'll come up with some excuse that I'm making them hunt me to kill me, and it's because I'm doing this to them. Okay, like narcissistic, psychotic murderers. Actually, that's more like schizophrenic, psychotic murder. And 1991, I buy a Lord's Gym t-shirt. Everyone worldwide, I know all of you know what I'm fucking talking about, so you, you can't say that nothing's going on if I can make that statement right now and talk to you as a planet and say you all know because I'm told I'm imagining this scenario and that in lies the entire operation there's no admission to a worldwide fucking murder operation there's not one single human entity that's ever walked up and said you're Kevin Perlman and this is what's going on I'm making them hunt me and there's no admission that I'm no worldwide so it it can't be both ways I can't have random strangers going Oh shit, uh, my light, wait, uh oh, uh, my phone battery died, but I'm still recording, okay, let's, let's, let's finish this thought, okay, so, so the argument is, it, I see someone like I explained the bus, and he's like, honk honk, this is by the Van Nuys Courthouse, and he gives me a piece, or whatever, and... Well, but he doesn't know me, right? Because he either knows me and can tell me how he knows me or he's, he's non-verbally letting me know he knows me with a double horn on in this or the... But if I... Verbally, he doesn't know me, right? Well, it can't be both ways. Wait, does that make sense? It can't be... Wait. It can't be this way or the other. So you have to admit. This is what's going on. You're in the dark. You don't understand what's going on. World paranoia. Like all these death threats. World, we're doing... Why are they doing it? Why are they doing world of paranoia? Well, it's sure as shit not to make someone healthy. Correct? I mean... Um, um, world of decapitation. I'm doing it to make you healthy. World of um, 
me chopping your arms and legs off. I'm doing it to make you healthy, right? Okay, so, so, world of hurt. World of hurt. I'm doing it so you can have a good life, right? Okay, right? Um, so, I don't remember the topic. Oh, are the eyebrows making him do it? Well, if the shirt's making him do it, then the eyebrows got to be making him do it because the eyebrows are a lot more psychological labeling, or I don't know how to say it. Um, if the, if a if a harmless jokey T-shirt bothers someone, I would think lack of eyebrows or the compulsion to pull eyebrows is a lot more aggravating to them. So, if I don't have eyebrows, I'm making a plan on me to kill me. I'm making them do it. Now, is that a good way to cure mental illness? Like, like you don't have eyebrows, so I'm going to bash your skull with a lead pipe over and over until you have eyebrows? It's a negative reinforcement. It's not going to help you. It's going to make things worse. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop this. Uh, okay, so I'm going to let this phone charge, but luckily I can do my little hand signals here on this camera, so, and it's pointing the right direction, so, um, oh, but let's, let's actually, make sure the camera's charging, uh, okay, so, where are we here? The Sean Dincy obsession, working with the neighbors and J. Oh, Ooh. um. Okay, the LAPD obsession. I'm toning it down for now. The LAPD obsession. And working with the neighbors. Um, now, if this is being streamed off my phone, which they usually do, right? Then they're going to try to say, okay, well, I'm trying to keep everything out. It should be, right? So that's sort of the point. That's the level of you're like, I'm trying to live my life. And, but none of this should be happening on any level, right? So, so uh, okay, so... Uh, let's just say the LA working with, LAPD obsession working with I don't even know where I'm going with this topic anyways the LAPD obsession working with neighbors I mean that's pretty obvious right I mean they're working with a planet okay I don't even know where I'm going with that because um, the run up and accuse I've had this... Okay, okay, so this is interesting. So there's a tag to here that people run up and they'll, they'll want to accuse me of something to, to start a fight, okay? And these run up and accuse tags like... Like, hey, you... Uh, you you passed out 100 million guards on my car and this and that. Uh, you look familiar. I might have passed one out. No, you didn't. You you did this. You raped my sister. You ate my dog. You did. okay? And what they're trying to do is get you swinging and punching, and they call the cops. They go, this crazy guy just attacked me or whatever, right? And these attacks always get aggressive with large groups of people, either right before arrests or at the court dates. So, example, last Friday I had a court date, and the last the three days prior or something. We had people running up and trying to start shit and get in my face and this and that. And they're, they're hoping that they can get me to run after and chase them and put their lives in danger. And they're going to call the cops. Now, the cops are telling them to do it. And more importantly, what you need to understand here is that 
that um, um, if the cops wanted a fair trial and the cops were honest people, they wouldn't have to try to get reactions from me to try to lock me in jail. After they get what they want. Which is, example, we're going to arrest you and then you're going to go to trial. Oh wait, but the trial is... The judicial system is normally designed to protect the innocent. Correct? So, LAPD's actions of working with my neighbors my entire life, for since five years old, to try to provoke me and set me up and make me look like a violent paranoid schizo and lock me away. Um... Well, that, before you even talk about anything else, that's all you need to know, right? But, but then you're in a trial, which is a frame job because it doesn't talk about the the entire situation as a whole, correct? It doesn't talk about the situation in its entirety. It, it segments out. Example: If every day a thousand people punch you in the back of the head for 42 years or 47 years, is that going to go in the courtroom? No. But that's the argument. So you're not having a proper argument. It's a frame job like everything else, right? Um, oh, am I, am I going the right way here? And so then they're finally getting putting you, Mike Huntley, we're using the system against you. We're trying to lock you away. We, we don't have any reason behind anything here. It's just Jason Perlman doesn't like Kevin Perlman, but so does Ron Perlman, and so does Anita Perlman, and so does... And you're like, oh, I'm trying to live my life. I'm trying to do something. What's going on? You know, you know what you did, what I do. I'm not going to tell you. And, okay, so then I finally get these arrests, and then guess what? Kevin pleads not guilty, and I'm going to fight against it with the truth. And guess what? LAPD and the bailiff, and I was working with all the neighbors, and they're provoking for setups, and this and that, and you're like, wait... But this is the place where I'm supposed to have the argument. I'm supposed to have the argument against my psychotic accusers who are hunting me, right? No. Well, we don't want you to have the argument. Wait, you don't want me to have the argument. You just want me in a cage. Because I'm a bad guy, so I'm not allowed to have my side of the story. All right, Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman, you're not allowed to defend yourself. Mike Huntley also, you're not allowed to defend yourself. So, so I'm such a bad guy, I'm not allowed to tell the truth? Like, like this, these are all lies, these people just are stalking me? And with the judicial system. With people in the judicial system. Okay, right? So then I must be guilty. Because, because only good, decent kind, fair, honest people are, say, you're not allowed to have your side of the story and we're going to kill you no matter what, right? Correct? Okay, so everything with Bailiff Sean Turner and my neighbors and these things that, that get on video and I talk about and I expose, does that make sense? I mean, something's got to make sense here, okay? So, so, so there's nothing going on for nothing. And then they're hinting like, this is for you. And you're like, I don't understand. It's not for me. I don't understand. This is about mental illness. This is about addiction. This is about this. This is about that. It's not about anything. It's about hate. Okay? I hate you. I hate you. I'm going to destroy your life. I'm going to stop you from having a normal life. I'm going to keep saying it's for you. I'm going to keep trying to make you think it's for you. I'm trying to think... Uh, uh, I'm going to think... I'm going to try to make you think you deserve it. Okay? Or like... Like, yeah. Like, you know what you did. So, accept it. I don't know what I did. So, it's not acceptable. And it's been going on minute by minute for 47 years. Yeah, this this technically starts twelve thirteen, but you know he's rocking on his crib or something. You know, so it's like or banging your head or whatever. Okay, so um, which was fifty years ago and nothing, but you know my family still. You know what you did fifty years ago when you were five years old? We got a plan of helping. Okay. Um. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, let's see if this battery charges. Yeah, 5%. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, 
blacks accept it, don't say anything. Now we're having sort of the black people accept it. We're having the the disgusting gastrologist doctor who's befriended me, clearly working with my father, okay, and he's not there because he wants me to have a good life and trying to help me. He's there because um, he wants to cover up my father's crimes, right? My father's uh, crime spree for the last 47 years. Okay, he's a fellow doctor. You know, I got your back, doc. Okay, right? Your son's talking. You haven't killed... You're, we, we're trying to kill your son. Your son's talking. Well, we can't have that. Okay, so... Um, let's see. Or better yet, your son bought a car and is trying to do something positive. And by the way, this, this Corvette thing is a four-year... Oh, that's a car wash. I don't want to be here. Um, I don't know if I'm sort of blocking a car wash entrance exit. Okay, so you know your son bought a car. He can't. He, he's not allowed to do anything positive and be out of his cage. Okay, but why? Why are they trying to put me in a cage? Okay, why is my house my cage and I'm not allowed to leave it since five years old or whatever? I'm not allowed to go get college degrees and. Okay, they get mad. Okay, so. Um, Why is Jesus. Uh, why did I just put my other phone? It's exhausting. Magnifying glass. Why is lie after lie being disseminated worldwide out of context and in secret? Billions invested. I don't even know if I was... I mean, I can't really specifically answer that, but... But I've explained it like 50 fucking times, right? Like, you know, imperfection. Imperfection and their fear and insecurity... And I think I explained that at the beginning or towards the beginning here. So I'm just going to... Correction from last video. Oh. Oh, correction from last video. Road Rage, Jason's runs versus my dinking around with cars. So, so... This will probably be... Oh. This will probably be a short topic here, but I got it. Oh, jeez. Okay, GPS U. And don't fall over. Fucking put this. Oh. Because I'm going the wrong way. Oh, we're going back that way? Shit. Um, uh, actually. Okay, what did I just say? I don't do too much at once here. Okay, good. I got my other phone charging here, and I can see what I'm doing. And I do not have audio, though. This is... Oh, I see. That is light. The 
Hello. Okay, so this mic is working. That's good. Um, so, um, okay, so, okay, where was I? Um, wait. Oh, correction with the last video Road Rage Jason's. Okay, so I was mentioning that they're pinning Jason's things on me, but they were, I wasn't really specifically clear, even though I, I'm pretty sure everyone knows where I'm going with this. Okay, so Jason and friends would go out on their runs every weekend. I, the reason he was calling it runs, I, I don't go into this one much. So, so I used to, at the age 14, I bought a weight bench, and I would go out jogging or running. And they got mad about it. Okay, so so Jason was mad that I would go out. Why was he mad? Well, not because. Just we got to remove Kevin from society. I can't with Ron. With Ron Perlman, but he wasn't like jealous, man. Okay, um, so I lift weights and I go out jogging and running and being healthy. Okay, I'm 14. I'm building muscle. I'm reading Arnold Schwarzenegger books. I'm doing this. And they got mad when I got jogging. And so he was 16. I was like 14. And, um, and, um, so Jason, Jason Perlman was 16 and my brother and I was 14 and they would start going on their runs. Okay. When I'm weightlifting and jogging. So, so if you're not noticing a pattern of behavior, that every time I do something, someone else does something, like criminal or something, and then tries to divert, it's Kevin. Okay, like, you understand? So, so if I go out jogging, being healthy, Jason and friends go out on their runs, okay? Their, what was Jason's runs? They were, they were to get people to chase them on the roads, okay? Just shit like that. Okay, like chaos. Like, um, it piss other people off and get them to chase them. And, um, they go through drive throughs and spray water at them with a water fire extinguisher. Okay. Um, and then go ballistic on them after they chase them. Okay. The same things that are being done to me from almost every stranger worldwide. However, before that was because I kissed a black girl. At eight. So this is, I'm 14. They're not going down to eight years old. So you're going to say. So now you're going to say, well, why is Jason mad at me for going out and being healthy? And my father. Okay, now, now, I turned 16. Okay. I turned 16. So he's pinning all these things on me. And he's told to by my father. And my family. Okay, they're all in on it. I, well, Kevin, how do you know that? Well, because to this day, my mother doesn't think that what Mr. Quigley did, uh, my English, 10th grade English teacher, telling me to punch Paul Schaefer in the middle of the class is wrong. Well, it's to, it's to make you strong and, and beat the shit out of everyone, right? No, it's to have a, a classroom of people lie and say, Kevin's crazy and beat the shit out of Paul Schaefer, even though Paul Schaefer was taunting me. As you can see from everything that's unfolding my entire life, that no matter how many times, no matter how many blows to the back of the head I take, if I'm in a point where I have to try to stop it, LAPD runs around with the entire planet saying, Kevin's crazy and violent paranoid schizo and, right, consistently as we speak at 52 years old while every minute of my life is where my group's provoking me, right? So you can conclude that we passed where we needed to go here. Um, that that it, they're trying to get any type of reaction to say Kevin's imagining it. We need to lock him away. Okay, so so Jason's mad or I don't know, Jason's just a psychotic murderer and my father's telling him to do it. But but, so Jason's going out on his runs, they're calling him runs, causing chaos and havoc, 
and they're doing it for the sole purpose to pin it on me. Okay, say look what Kevin's doing. Now at the same time, I'm lifting weights and jogging. And then they're really getting mad at with Corey Bixby, I recall, at Calabasas High, because I was I would use the track and um, I think during PE or whatever, I can't remember, and I would jog and get exercise, and, you know, I wasn't being told to do it. I was doing it because I want to build muscle and cardio. Does that make sense? So, so, we want to make it look like Kevin's trying to get people to chase him. But I'm not Jason, I'm Kevin. See, that's where it gets confusing. Jason and friends... Are going to lock me in a mental facility. Wait, what was the threat? Me and my friends put a teacher in a mental institution and we're listening to everything you do on the radio, threatening me indirectly, and then... That was after me blocking the crowbar he was swinging at Gregoire. And then the blood is thicker than water speech. So, I need to go out and hurt my friend Gregoire because Jason's angry that his girlfriend either broke up with him and started dating Greg or she was cheating on him with Greg. I think I think he they really already broke up, but they tried to make it appear like they were cheating. Okay, so so and then Gregoire's mad at me because I figured this out that Gregoire was always on Jason's side. Right? So Gregoire was working with Jason in hopes that I would help Jason bully Greg. Like, like... Okay, so... So, Jason goes after Gregoire in jealousy or anger. That Jen, Jen Yang... Is she is cheating on him. Let's just say that. Jen Yang's... Uh, Jennifer Yang is dating Greg while Jason's off at University of Colorado. And supposedly she's cheating on him. And I... Jason finds out, and he, he runs after Gregoire with a crowbar. I block the crowbar, and then Jason gives me the blood is thicker than water speech. Like, I need to help him hurt my friend Greg. Hint, hint, you need to go break his fucking kneecaps, or you know, something like that, right? And then come the threats that we're going to lock you away, Kevin. Okay, but they're not super direct, okay, and they're not super aggressive in nature. Okay. Um, and I just so then no before that were hit my Jason's runs because I was working out okay so I'm lifting weights and I'm jogging and Jason and friends are going to go on his runs see see a literal literal run is jogging and running Jason and friends are going to go on his runs Road Rage and Chaos, getting people to chase him, and every time I talk to a girl or something on the internet or anywhere worldwide, it's chase or be chased, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rid you of the world. But wait, but where's it coming from? Because it's happening for no reason. Okay, so Jason and friends, Jason and friends, how do you say it? Like he's copying the name Run. And making it a different thing. And then what they're doing is saying, see, Kevin used to go on runs. Kevin used to go running. And it, implying that it's Jason. Okay, right? Like, like um, I ran and Jason ran. But I'm jogging and Jason's causing chaos and destruction. And then what happens is those worldwide groups, you know what you did. And they're implying, because remember, you know what you did, but I'm not going to tell you. So now you're confused. Why am I not allowed to know? Because that, that in itself doesn't make sense, does it? If if my father... If my father thought... Or didn't want to make me look crazy... That I actually did the things Jason did... Then he would directly state it. Not, you know what you did, but I'm not going to tell you. Or my mother... Your past caught up with you. But... What past? I never said that. Well... So you want to make me look like Jason. Right? So, then they say they think you're a schizo. So, Susan Donner, 2001. Dr. Susan Donner, they think you're schizo. 
they think you're schizo. Well, isn't the notion of Jason Perlman copying Kevin's, the name, the name Run, and then saying, yeah, Kevin goes out running every weekend. Oh, so Kevin goes out and does these road rage things. No, that's Jason. But we're trying to merge them into one thing and say it's Kevin. And then it's Kevin Schizo, because I never said anything. Kevin's questioning it. What the fuck's going on? I never said anything. Well, Kevin, uh, nobody said anything, so you're schizophrenic. Do you think you're Jason? But wait. Jason has a secondary psychology degree. He's a, he's a urologist with a secondary psychology degree. Anita Perlman is an art therapist with a psychology degree. Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman is a medical doctor with a psych- secondary psychology degree. So, so is it fair to say that they're using psychology as a weapon to exterminate the five-year-old child? Yes. It's not only fair did the circumstantial evidence on every fucking level known to man with a hundred thousand different incidences and worldwide support is identical and unheard of, correct? Okay, circumstantially. And proven. And proven uh, from the newer things. Okay. From the newer daily things, it's been proven. But circumstantially, for the, like the events, my father taking me on a cruise and Darren Moselle and Jason... Perlman using um, Jason buying me a Kershaw knife for no reason and here to have a have a pocket knife and then every night let's drink as many I'm 14 years old let's drink as many kamikazes and B-52s those are World War II airplanes um, in uh, 1941 and my last name is Perlman and trying to flip me out and get me drunk and angry and belligerent and in hopes he can get me to go after him with a knife and things like this hinting about World War II schizophrenia messages I mean these are undeniably well you know people drink B-52s and common causes yeah like every single night like why didn't they choose my ties and and green zombies and Caucasians and purple-headed monsters and, you know, I mean, why were they airplanes in the middle of the ocean on a boat like Pearl Harbor? Okay, so, like Pearlman, Pearl Harbor. Okay, so, so, I mean, with with 5,000 of these similar events, you gotta say that something's going on. It shouldn't be, right? Okay, not, don't, you don't talk or we kill you and that, that is not happening and okay or we're gonna we're gonna remove your vocal cords as well but we didn't say it directly we said i have a friend that did this to his dog right after me saying or your friend didn't see or whatever okay right so so the the so when i turned 16 i start working on and building cars i buy books just like weight bench books or weightlifting books I build like how do we build car engines and I start working tinkering with my cars and buying cheap piece of shit like $300 69 Firebird that was a fucking train wreck and you know where Brian Weaver's calling me Kid Taco he's calling me a Mexican oh hey I can't say that because I just ruined all the Mexicans lives well I didn't say anything about Mexicans Brian Weaver said Brian Weaver is calling me a Mexican but you're not mad at Brian Weaver, you're mad at me. You're mad at the guy taking the fucking blows to the head, right? How dare I fucking say something about the blows to the head? The Jews gotta die. Brian Weaver can fucking call you Spicks or whatever. You don't fucking care. But if Brian Weaver calls me a Spick, you're gonna hunt me and kill me for Brian Weaver calling you a Spick. Wait, Brian Weaver calling me a Spick and then you're gonna hunt me and kill me saying you're, you're, you're doing something to our culture. Wait. I'm confused if Brian Weaver is calling me a spick or or Kid Taco or making racial not yeah racial racial statements they're not really racial but he's sort of saying you're a Mexican because your car's a, a piece of a, like a a piece of shit right like your car's a it looks like a Mexican's car that's what he's saying and so he's calling me Kid Taco joking and then the Mexican community or Latin community worldwide is like how dare Kevin wait huh like like how dare I be abused by this guy this guy's belittling you 
Brian Weaver's belittling you and you're coming after me. It's like everything else, right? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Why are you... When Brian Weaver says it's a public shaming, did those words come out of my mouth or did they come out of his mouth? They came out of his mouth. And I'm also being publicly shamed for Jason's shit. And I'm also being publicly shamed for that guy over there. I don't even know who he is, but he did this, right? And I'm being publicly shamed for jumping in front of a crowbar for protecting my friend from Jason Perlman. And I'm being publicly... Wait, did I miss it? Oh, I'm being publicly shamed because Brian Weaver for 10 minutes kind of sort of bullied Ryan Hirsch. I'm, I'm being publicly shamed because... Tom Farley got together with everyone to throw eggs at Eric Johnson. Are these my decisions? No. Okay, so, so, why is Brian Weaver not being publicly shamed? Why is Jason Perlman not being publicly shamed? Why is Tom Farley not being publicly shamed for standing on horse trails and throwing eggs at cars as they drive by? Or, um, why, why am I being punished? for everyone else's things. Uh, why is Richard Grumberg and Tom Farley stealing the Woodman skateboards? Why are they not... Why am I being publicly shamed? But then we're coming to schizophrenia. Now then it comes to mental illness and schizophrenia. Wow, how did we just jump from this to that? Kevin, you think you're Tom Farley. Kevin, you think you're Brian Weaver. Kevin, you think you're Jason Perlman. Wait, we just jumped from you did this to you're schizophrenic. That sounds like a cover-up, right? Or a method of eradication to make someone look crazy to rid them of the world. Or Kevin's too sensitive and conforms to media. And Kevin's too sensitive and he conforms to Jason Perlman. And therefore, Kevin did it. Or Kevin needs... We need to lock him away. And do I have an opinion? Hey, hey, do I have, an, do I have a say or opinion about myself or who I am? Or is that not allowed? Is that taboo? It's taboo. I'm not allowed to say... They're lying. I'm not allowed to say when my mother says I conform to, conform to media, it's completely fucking bullshit. It's a complete fucking fantasy and delusion of theirs, or a better yet, it's being set out of hate and rage for someone, correct? Like, I just fucking hate my five-year-old child, and I want to throw him in a fucking dumpster, but I got to do it in a way that I'm not arrested, right? Okay? And that fucking child is now 12 or 13, and he has no eyebrows, and I can't live with myself. I cannot live with myself without facial hair, so I gotta fucking kill him or rid him of the world. Okay, that's what this is about. Okay? But, okay, so I turned 16. And, uh, what streets am I on? I'm Sunset. Oh. Sunset Boulevard. Well, we must be on Hollywood. Okay, so, um, hey, I think we're by the Hollywood Palladium here. The Hollywood Palladium. I committed some going to convention crimes here. Same with Adult Con. Okay, so, um, but these people that are mad at me for no reason don't got my back. Okay, so, um, did I, I have supported them my whole life, and when I say that, I'm talking about, uh, my web construction and design that was sabotaged and boat anchored, but still, still, I was doing shit to get help them, but they don't fucking care because they're full shit. Okay, so, um, because they're lying, liar, lying full shit people. Okay, so, um, and you want to prove me wrong, you can fucking prove me wrong, but, but, if you keep the lies going, then you're proving that you're a Jew-hating, child-raping, lying piece of shit. Okay, so, uh, where are we going? Oh, so I turned 16. I turned 16. And, um... Now, let me pause here. Everything that those comments there a few seconds ago, every industry or thing I've tried to do, it didn't matter if it was 3D animation, visual effects for Hollywood, or uh, hobbies, or anything else, has been destroyed and boat anchored from day one since five years old. So I just want to iterate that it does not matter. I could right now, I could go out and say, I want to build. I want to design parts for boats. That's not the best analogy because my father's like a boat obsessed boat guy. But but I want to build 
parts for boats and instantly it would be sabotaged and destroyed by every person on the planet. Okay, I could come up with the CAD specs, I could do this, I could start to make them, I could go out to sell, it would be destroyed by every single entity. It would be destroyed by the person uh, fabricating the parts, it would be destroyed by the salespeople to sell it, or it would be destroyed by, and then they have some cover up, how my fraud is just about meeting women, or all sorts of, okay. And it would be systematic, too. Okay, each industry would be the same exact template of destroying Kevin's life. Okay, so, so 16, 16, um, so I turned 16, and I think the point I wanted to make here is Jason Perlman is going out on his quote-unquote runs at the same time that I'm jogging and getting exercise and weightlifting, and they're trying to merge them into the same thing. Like, does that make sense? Like, um, wasn't there a horror movie? Oh, like the movie The Thing or something where you're merging the heads together. Okay, so, um... Had a visual visual of that scene in that movie. Okay, so 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 I go out sixteen and I do the opposite. Okay, I'm doing. I want to work. I'm teaching myself how to rebuild engine. I'm doing it within my own capabilities, though. I'm just not. It's not like I own a shop or anything. Okay, but but I'm a kid fucking around. You know, I'm I'm pulling out my car engine, I'm rebuilding it, I remember having an engine stand in our Hidden Hills garage, I'm sure my mother was tearing her fucking hair out, going, why is there a fucking piece of shit car on blocks in front of my Hidden Hills driveway, okay, but, um, you know, our Nikki Six, oh, shit, uh, Nikki Six, um, sw- wants to swerve and hit me at random because Jason Perlman's license plate on his Mazda 232 or 323 or whatever um, said I swerve and hit people at random. So if Jason Perlman puts the license plate frame that I swerve and hit people at random, Kevin Perlman's got to die with worldwide groups. It's a public shaming. It's a public shame. Let me understand this. Brian Weaver, his words, it's a public shaming, is shaming me for his shit and Jason's shit and everyone else's shit. And then I'm a schizo. Tom Farley stealing with Richard Grumber stealing Ian Woodman's skateboards at uh, whatever his name is, Mr. Woodman that ended up trying to kill his the two brothers tried to kill or did kill the parents for the insurance policy or whatever. So I must have did that too, right? Okay, or I'm a schizo. It's one or the other, right? Okay, so um, so I turned 16 and I'm building cars and I won't deny that I did some horrible monstrophic things like peel out in the car. Uh, However, I see that every fucking night, every Friday night at the car meets. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. In 2024, every weekend I see people leaving and peeling out and loud, roaring engines and fucking 70-year-olds doing it too. And nobody cares. But Kevin Perlman, in 1988, peeled out in his car, and it's still the end of the world. Are you confused? And also, Brian Weaver called me Kid Taco. So the Latin community's got to kill me. And also, um, I wasn't into Crux. um, Crux. Uh, what are they called? Uh, Jesus. Uh, El Caminos. So I gotta die. You know, I mean, who, who would not be an El Camino? So I gotta die. Right? El Camino, people have to hunt me to have me killed. It's a public shaming. Okay, you're going like, what, huh? Like, like, why would that guy not have the light? Why would that guy not have the right to just not like El Caminos? I'm not saying, I'm not saying you can't go like them. I'm saying I don't like them. Did I ruin your life because I don't like El Caminos? Do you have the right to kill me because I don't want to... Okay, um, do you... Do you... Do you not like my shirt? My Idaho shirt here? Well, now I have the right to kill you, right? With worldwide groups. Right? Or you'd say, okay, fine, you don't like my shirt, I don't care. I mean, it doesn't bother me. You don't like my shirt, I couldn't give a fuck. But don't want me to have me killed, right? Okay, or, um... 
you don't like my car? Okay, when Aubrey Fisher, when Aubrey Fisher says, Kevin, you're weird. And I go, okay, you know, I mean, I can't. You're going to have your opinion, so I can't change your opinion. You're, you're either going to think I'm weird or you're not weird. But, but does Aubrey Fisher have the right to get together with the entire Model Mayhem community and photography community worldwide to have me hunted and killed and locked away and rid of the world? Because Aubrey Fisher thinks I'm weird. I get, you see the difference? And then it's going to jump all the way down to things that don't make sense. Okay? Well, when you were 14... And you're going to see how synonymous all these arguments are, right? When you were 14, you said to your mother, Fuck you and who cares what people think? Okay, so... I mouthed off to my mother and I said, Who cares what people think? And there's a plan of people hunting me to kill me because I said... Fuck you, who cares what people think? Now, let's let's do the math here. If my mother flips out and says, I gotta kill my son, because he said, fuck you, who cares what people think? Fuck you, who cares what people think? In my one and only argument with her ever until 29 and finding out there's a worldwide campaign to kill me. Okay, stay with me here. My one and only imperfection argument with my mother, being a kind, loving, caring son. Fuck you, who cares what people think? And she flips out, and there's a plan of people trying to kill me. And my father says, Kevin, you think differently. Is it about my thought process? Who cares what people think? Or is it about someone, someone snapping and flipping out saying, that fucker said fuck you to me, I'm going to fucking kill him. Literally. Okay? But why is a planet child rapist helping? That's the more important question. Because if Anita Perlman was coming after me with a fucking pickaxe, I can understand that. I mean, I can not understand it, but I can see that a singular entity is mad at someone else and they fucking go after him. But what I can't understand is a mother says, my son said fuck you to me, so planet, help me kill him. And the, the entire planet Earth says, yeah, you know, he has a problem with authority figures, he's 52 years old, and we're going to kill him with every resource on the planet, or non-stop since 14, and something's not making sense. So if every day of my life I've hunted to be killed for saying fuck you to my mother, then something's not making sense. Now, now, once again, this is the important part. Well, Kevin, that was that was 40 years ago or 30 years ago. Okay, so see how it's turned around? Kevin, you suffer from obsession. You suffer from schizophrenia. You're too sensitive. Oh, wait, I didn't say I'm too sensitive. I said there's a plan of fucking child raping sickos trying to fucking kill me for these things that don't, don't matter. And then what my family does is go, Kevin, you know, you shouldn't... You shouldn't hold that in and with their psychology degrees, right? Okay? I couldn't even remember those things until I found out there's a planet of people trying to kill me, right? And taking part in the the public shaming, right? Brian Weaver. It, Kevin, it's a public shaming because you said fuck you to your mother. And by the way, what is the, what is the definition of public shaming? Uh, a planetary, an entire planet throwing rocks at someone's head for 47 years, minute by minute, that says, we will never ever stop for any reason until you're dead and gone? Is that is that the definition of a public shaming? I've never heard of anything like that. That's not the definition of a public shaming. Okay, so so it's a, it's a, it's a public murder operation, right? So you got Jason Perlman doing these things, mad at me for buying a weightlift bench and jogging and being healthy. We have Brian, We have Mike Hotley. Let's sign up to the gym. Here, meet Rody Morales, the gym manager. Rody Morales is working with LAPD to take me to strip clubs and trying to plant drugs in my house and make me look like a drug dealer with LAPD for being healthy. So that's two different events there where I'm trying to be healthy and Jason and his friends with my family are trying to kill me over. But, you know, it's because you bought Arnold Schwarzenegger books, right? And read about his weightlifting methods. And I bought a lot of other books, too. But they'll obsess on the Arnold Schwarzenegger. Maybe because my stepfather's an 
name is Arnold Silver, so so I've committed a crime there too because he's heavily involved that I need to die. But but okay, so what's it about? Because nothing nothing's making sense other than a psychological op- warfare operation to rid you psychology as a weapon where police officers are paid off to exterminate exterminate me no matter what the cost, correct? And the more I find out, the more you don't talk, we fucking kill you. We're gonna we're gonna remove your vocal cords, okay? And that was pretty much the original threat at 29, right? In the office with uh, World of Paranoia, and you're a fucking dead man with LAPD. But wait, but why is LAPD telling my brother to go out with Armenians and Persians and do all their road rage shit and then say it was me? I mean, that's a lot of resources. I mean, just the things this week alone on video, you'd be like, I I just don't. The fake Department of Justice car, uh, the neighbor drinking a beer in the fake Department of Justice car, the car washer working with a bailiff, Sean Turner, in a fake, the car washer in a fake Department of Justice car, as if he's there for a reason, but he's not. Um, There's some fake police vehicles always camped out from the second hand. car lot, old, used, outdated police cars, all my neighbors are buying and camping out, pretending they're police officers, I mean, all sorts of shit, that you just be like, they're not doing it for any reason, just to try to scare me, and, and make me think I'm in some kind of, um, well, Kevin's paranoid, and he thinks he's being hunted by the FBI, and, you know, like that type of thing, right, it's all, it's one giant paranoia campaign, or uh, paranoid schizophrenia, but what's it? What's it about? It's about eradication. It's about locking people, away, making people look crazy to lock them away. But why? Jason Perlman, me and my friends are gonna put you in mental facilities or whatever. Okay, Mike Conley's death threats. Originally, Jason Perlman's friend in uh, 2001, World of Paranoia. Okay, it's got to be about something. Well, we want you to have a healthy life. We, we, we want you to use up for mental illness. We want you to have a good, decent life. We want you to have a normal life. But I don't suffer from paranoia. I mean, to, to watch a bunch of fucking ass puppets run around looking like fucking idiots and trying to make me look crazy is not trying to cure people. It's trying to make people look crazy. Okay, there's no, there's no reason my life should be threatened every day and things be happening and done to me every day of my life, minute by minute. Where I have to get proof of it, it's not it's not to help someone. Well, Kevin, you can't see yourself. Okay, you see this guy walking right there on Hollywood Boulevard? If I walk up to him right now, he'll be like, Kevin, you can't see yourself and we and you need to get help. And you'll be like, Who are you? I don't I don't fucking know you, dude. Dude, I don't know you and you don't know me. So how are you getting the information? Okay, so is this about Jason's runs? Jason and Friends Road Rage runs? Well, then why are they taking me on cruises trying to flip me out to make me think I'm in Pearl Harbor? Because I thought it was about Road Rage runs. And in 8th grade, I wasn't driving in 8th grade, correct? And when I was too shy to talk to Christy Reynolds... Tom Farley's told to work on me with, with Tracy Picos, and that's when Ryan Brian Weaver starts with the fake bullying for 10 minutes with Ryan Hirsch. So is it about bullying? Because I, I thought, is it about Brian Weaver kind of sort of bullying Ryan Hirsch for 10 minutes? Because I thought, about, I thought it was about road rage things. Oh, but wait, or is it that I'm supposedly a drug dealer because uh, Rody Morales was paid off with, with LAPD to try to plant a trash bag full of marijuana in my house. So wait, now it's drug dealers. So we're, we're, we're jumping from thing to thing until Kevin Perlman no longer exists, correct? On government flag and killer eradication operations. Okay, so that was that was a really long dialogue for that one sentence. Um, but I wanted to... I wanted to... expand just from a pro- previous dialogue that... that my car activities weren't were completely different. My car activities were positive things. 
and Jason Perlman's car activities, which are which are two years later. See, they're two years later. So I'm two years younger than, than my brother. So so Jason Perlman turns 16 and he's out being a fucking terrorist. Now, isn't that interesting that Jennifer Pilchick Perlman says, I'm the terrorist of Woodland Hills to cover up Jason Perlman's things, right? Working with City Guard and all the other worldwide security companies. And it wasn't me with the strobe light flashing security guards. It was Jason. It was Jason Perlman and friends. It wasn't me doing these things. Uh, Jason Perlman was stealing the phone booths. Not me, okay? Jason Perlman was stealing the stop signs. Not me. So, anyways... I'm out, I turn 16, and I build cars, and I go to Kevin's Burgers, which is a whole different topic of my friends seeing that I'm doing something positive and wanting to once again work on their freaky schizophrenia, and I don't know, I'll, I'll just I'll just try to quickly rattle this one off. So, so Jason... Perlman and friends, and I, I made a few of them, but these aren't crimes. These are kid shit. Okay, so Jason Perlman wanted to make combustion burgers. So every time the Jason and friends would cook hamburgers, they would load it up with like wild turkey and vodka and try to get the hamburgers to explode. And you know, me and my friends were like, oh, that's kind of funny. Let's try to. It never really worked. I couldn't ever really get them to explode. But, and you know, just kid shit being kid shit. Kid shit being kids. That is, they aren't crimes or wrong or anything. It's just kids being kids. Now, I, I turned 16. I'm about one year older than all my friends because I was sent back a grade. Or no, they sent me in between grades. Kevin's a slow learner, so we're going to we're gonna hold him back in between first and second, I think it was. So that took me out of Tom Farley's class. And now that, now that I think about it, that's a good thing because Tom Farley's a piece of shit. So, so normally I would be in Tom Farley's class, but I was a grade behind. So that made me one year older than my friends. It also meant that I got my driver's license one year before Brian Weaver and friends. So I would be... Well, Kevin, you're a copycat. Right? Kevin, you're a copycat. Like the movie Sigourney and a Copycat with Sigourney Weaver, right? No. Kevin, well, there probably is something to that, actually. But, Kevin, you're a copycat, right? Because you're copying Brian Weaver. Or Shane Weeks or whatever. Well, wait a minute. I'm a year older. So, it would be impossible for me to copy anyone because they're copying me. You get it? If I'm a year older, I get my driver's license... A year before Brian Weaver and Shane Weeks and, uh, and Tom Hoke and Alex Armacost and Damon Riggins, the big Damon Riggins, because because he's black, he has the right to kill this dirty Jew, right? Okay, with his friends and the wrestling coaches and things that don't make any sense. Okay, so I got my driver's license before all of them in my grade. Me being the original one. If that makes sense. And I started working on my car and buying books and then they sort of started copying, right? Now I'm not I'm not like, how dare you do the same thing? But my point here is that when they're lying saying I conform to them and I conform to media and I'm a schizophrenic and I'm copying them and it's a public shaming and this and that, they're copying me. Okay. Not that it's a big deal until they make it into an issue. So then my friends who want to sort of do the same thing say let's go to Kevin's Burgers on Friday nights where all the cars meet now getting older finding out that was all staged okay there was ill intent there was ill intent to try to make me look like a schizophrenic okay so so let's stop here Jason's out doing his road rage shit I'm doing positive things, just like I'm doing now, by buying a Corvette, but but there's a plan of people trying to kill me for doing positive things, just like 16. What am I missing? Well, you go most weekends, and so you, you're crazy. 
but so does everyone else. And they're not crazy. And they're stalking me. So the people that go every week say I have OCD. But they go every week. And I need to be forced into a mental facility. But they go every week. They're not saying anyone else has OCD. They're saying it's perfectly normal. Except for the guy without the eyebrows, correct? Except for the guy without the eyebrows. The guy missing a little facial hair. That applies to coffee shops. That applies to pools. That applies to colleges. That applies to gyms. It applies to everything. Every fucking thing. Since five years old. What's it about? Government flag and kill operations. What's the reasoning? I can't I can't specifically other than stupid the trivial things that don't matter based on psychological profiling and labeling and we think he might be the next Unabomber and, and we gotta stop the crime before it happens like Sean Dincy's Facebook postings we gotta stop those evil party goers because of noise disturbances and you're like what? some guy's gonna throw a party you're gonna put a fucking bullet in his head you know because someone might call hey you know it's a little loud can you tell him to turn it down okay right? Because Sean Dincy's too lazy to go out and hop in a car and, and get paid. Get paid on salary and hop in a car and say, can you turn your radio down? Can you turn your music down? So he's going to put bullet holes in people's heads before they their volume's too loud. Okay, so psychological profiling and government kill operations. We think he might be a danger to himself or others. We're going to kill him before it happens, okay? We're going to execute him or eradicate it. And it's not about cars. It's about psychological, you know, we think he's the next Ted Bundy or something like that, right? Okay, so, and I got stories about that too. But, um, oh, so Kevin's Burgers. So Kevin's Burgers. I actually need to drive. So Kevin's Burgers. Um, Kevin's Burgers. Um, what was the reason they chose Kevin Burgers or possibly even named the uh, little hamburger shop Kevin's Burgers? This is that's an interesting little paradox there. Was it was it named Kevin Burgers and my friend said let's go to Kevin's Burgers or did they actually with the amount of resources on me per fucking hour still to this day, did they actually name it Kevin's Burgers because they knew it, I got into cars and then said, either way, that's that's a little off topic, but my friends take me to Kevin's Burgers and all the car guys show up and guess what? With schizo- idea of reference schizophrenia messages, we're hinting that, that hamburgers, okay, there's a whole thing. Cars are women. Okay, cars are women. How does this how did how does this come to be? Because of a paper, a jokey, or a an English class paper I wrote? Okay, so cars, my fan these worldwide groups of my family can't differentiate that is a, that a car is made of metal and a female species, a female human being, is flesh and blood. They can't they can't differentiate that. Okay, that's the first thing. So when all these auto shops are trying to blow up my engine and shit like that, uh, they're synonymous with combustion burgers. Well, a car is a piece of metal and a girl is flesh and blood. Now the second schizophrenia thing or accusation is that Kevin's trying to piss off women in anger. Just like Jason Perlman getting people to chase him and then go ballistic on him. And it's all getting merged into weird things that don't make sense because I'm on, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so hint, hint, world, Kevin's crazy and he thinks women are hamburgers and he's trying to blow them up and he's also trying to blow up cars. And okay, but the the reality situation here is that none of it, it's all fiction. Okay, the only thing that really happened is I got in the cars and started building building them, and someone wants me dead. And when I say building them, I'm not talking like... I'm not talking that I'm a pro car shop or anything. I'm a 16-year-old with 
lack of fun, lack of funds, who's in a file room filing files at my father's office till my fucking fingers bleed so I can pay for some car parts, okay? And my father's making up lies that I stole $10,000 with the police because he's mad at me for getting in the cars because I'm not focused on going to medical school. And I'm talking to those evil black people. However, even worse than my father mad at me for kissing a black girl is the fact that the black community supports a murdering, fucking child-raping father. That's the problem. The black community isn't saying what Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman's doing is wrong. The black community is saying, we're going to hunt you and kill you for kissing a black girl with Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman, and we're good, and, and, uh, how do I word it? Your kind is not allowed to associate with us, even though I couldn't give a fuck. Like, 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 I don't judge people based on their skin color. I, I, but I judge people, people based on what they do and who they are. But, but if the black community is trying to cover up hunting me to kill me since eight years old for kissing a black girl and saying, oh, we fucked up, instead of saying we fucked up and, and, okay, how do I say that? Kevin kisses a black girl. The black community is told something like I'm a white supremacist and hate black people. The black people hunt me my entire life for 47 years or 43 years. I find out. I say you've been lied to. And their moral and ethical, this is important, their moral and ethical decision, instead of saying we didn't know that and we fucked up, is you don't talk or we fucking kill you. And no relaxing for you, nigger. Well, I don't care who you are. But if you can't say that your people fucked up because my father's a liar, then you're a piece of fucking shit. If you cannot say that you were lied to and you fucked up and try to cover it up, then you're a piece of shit. It's that fucking simple. Okay? And that applies to everyone, really. But the most dominant hate, Kevin Jew hater, seemed to be the black community. And I try to cover this up. And say, oh, well, you know, we were lied to. And, and still, it doesn't excuse the behavior because based on hearsay... Hey, I can say that person over there hates black people, right? Do the black people have the right to kill them? No, they don't. You understand what I'm saying? Even if that guy over there, even if that guy over there really did hate black people, they still don't have the right to kill them. Okay, you understand? And he, even if he, if he kept the belief system to himself, then really they don't. They seriously have no right to, to do anything, right? So, so if you have black people hunting people to kill them for thought crimes, like we're the thought police, uh, we heard that we, we think that you might think that you don't like us. And there was a black guy that actually approached me right before the 2017 arrests of the, what they did. And while I was trying to go find a decent lawyer that was going to be honest, and he was giving me the speech like, well, you know, um, there are people out there that don't like black people, but they don't say anything. And I'm thinking like, okay, well, some guy doesn't like a black person. He doesn't say anything bad. Then he didn't do anything wrong. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that over that guy over there is entitled right from God himself to not like that culture. He might, he might not, you know, I don't like, I don't like the Navajo Indians. I don't understand them and whatever. And it ends there. Okay. I don't like, exactly. I don't like El Caminos. Do I, am I entitled to not like El Caminos? Yeah, I am. And if El Camino and worldwide groups hunt me to kill me for, and I, let's say I don't even say it. Let's say I don't even say I don't like El Caminos. Do the world in El Camino 
and an El Camino, El Camino Worldwide mob have the right to kill me if I don't like El Caminos, and I don't say it. So, so that black guy that I was talking to, working with the lawyers to stop me from getting a fair trial, is saying, if I even think you don't like our people, I'm going to hunt you and kill you. Is that a good person to you? Or is that the biggest piece of fucking scum and shit that ever exists? But he's black, so he must be a good person, right? Okay, like, you understand what I'm saying? He's black, so he's allowed to kill whoever he wants because his people were oppressed. Well, no. Incorrect. Okay? The moment someone becomes the tyrant... Okay, uh, example, our people were slaves, and so therefore we're going to... Our people are slaves, so, and that's unacceptable, so in order for us to get what we want and get power, we're going to use that excuse that you don't like our people, so therefore you're like the slave owners, so now we're going to cunt and kill you using that excuse, or whatever, or no relaxing for you nigger, because we think, and therefore... We want power, okay, it's not about um, anything else but power and control. We'll commit every crime known to man and then hunt and kill Jews and other cultures because we want power and ownership of those people and we want to make them slaves, okay, because our people were oppressed. Okay, well, I'm Jewish. And our people were oppressed way the fuck more than the African American community. And while I've been, I've tried to explain when they approach me and follow me and, and dig for dirt that they're both equally bad things, they, at least to me, they can't understand that. No, ours, ours was worse than yours, and so we're better than you, and, I mean, okay, well, I, I don't really want to engage in some of the things like that, because some of the things, things like that is a predominantly sick and evil person, okay, so, so, um, okay, so I'm Jewish, and you know what, most Jewish people don't behave like that, okay, they're, they're, they're very kind and giving people, and our people were oppressed way the fuck more than the African American community, and, um, and I would never really even want to be in a pissing contest about it, but, but I have to be, because every aspect of my life is the black community hunting me since five years old, or eight years old. And I've tried to figure out what's going on. And it's always the same thing. that They show... Like today. Like the cigar shop. Okay? Speaking of which, I got a cigar. Okay, like the cigar shop. Um, today, when the black person was waiting for me because they, he was working with UPS. And UPS notified him that I'm going to go pick up some cigars. And... He didn't approach me. He was waiting for me. He was trying to edge up over me and power me and intimidate me and say, he said something like, oh, you're Jewish? I said, yeah. He said, well, you know, I don't really have a problem with Jewish people and this and that. And I didn't say he did. And then sort of at the end, it's sort of this like thuggery provoking with the man tactic in mass worldwide groups that will ramp up because he didn't get the answer he wanted that. I'm not a bad person, and I have nothing against the black community other than they have a worldwide fucking campaign to kill me. For no reason. Because I kissed the black girl. And every aspect is the same. We're going to hunt you and kill you, and you don't talk, you can kill you. And we've gone way fucking past the line here about them trying to pretend they're good people if they refuse to leave me alone since five years old, correct? Okay. So, and they can't, or eight years old, and they can't come forwards and say, look, Kevin, this is what's going on. It's wrong. Right? Uh, that's the point 
where there's the respect is when instead of you don't talk or we kill you or make you think that you're NWA and we're going to throw you in jail and so you can be one of us or whatever the lame shit that goes on every day in my life that is on completely fucking unheard of. is completely fucking unheard of and um all right except their cheap cigars are not the good ones because i can't afford i can't afford bulk like olivas or partigas or um ahoyo de monterey's or because it's like fucking 18 dollars 10 to $18 a cigar, and you get a big pack like that, and you're like, holy shit. Okay, but, but, um, okay, so, so the, what's the point I'm making? The point I'm making here, and I really hate fucking talking like this, so, you know, they can fucking prove me wrong, and it's not just the black community, it's a planet of people, but the black, every time things start to settle down, there's a black person that follows me or approaches me, and then, digs for information, I show them that I'm a good person, and then these worldwide groups, these worldwide Jew kill groups, start back up, and the the concept of, we're good people, so you don't say, you don't talk about us destroying your life, or we kill you or lock you away, is not a good person, okay, so, so, with that cloak that we won't, we're good people and we're not what the white people said, we, the white slave owners said we were. And I, I've never, I don't think like a slave owner. I'm, I'm open-minded and I love everyone. And, and I might not get along or disagree or feel uncomfortable around someone and just not want to talk or whatever. But I'm not a mean person. Okay, I don't, I don't. Hey, you didn't look at me right. You didn't smile with me. Now I gotta kill you. You know, like, like, like. Okay. Oh shit! This guy's trying to get in here. Um, you know, you didn't give me a good vibe. Now I gotta kill ya. Okay, right? Like, like, like. Okay, look, people are entitled to feel uncomfortable around people. Feel people are entitled not to want to be around people. People are entitled not to like people. People are entitled to whatever, as long as nobody's trying to hurt someone, right? Okay. So, and I've always prided myself on being a really good, open-minded, friendly person, but there's a situation going on here for now 47 years, and you try to talk to people and say, listen, what's going on, and this, and you don't, you better accept, what is the death threat, no relaxing for you, nigger, and you better accept what's going on, or it's going to get a lot worse for you, well, if I say what's going on, and the only thing that comes out of their fucking mouths this wasn't by a black guy. This was by the dog attacker, the bald dog attacker, working with Detective Shapiro. You better accept what's going on or it's going to get a lot worse for you. But the black community was no, no relaxing for you, nigger. And, um, and me going, are you going to tell me what's going on? Or no, you're a fucking dead man. Well, you know, you're defining yourselves. You're defining yourselves. Even to this day where I'm trying to stop these worldwide fucking murder groups and they keep coming back. We're going to lock you away. You don't talk we kill you. You better accept what's going on. We got friends on the judicial system like um, Officer Jones in Topanga Division or whatever. And that's a police officer who, by the way, has put several bullets in women. And there was a whole investigation whether it was legal or not. So, you know, I, I can't tell you specifics, anything specific about it, but, you know, I don't know a lot of police officers plugging away at women, but you never know. Okay, but, um, but you know, if they're going to throw their lies on me, 100,000 lies on me, they're, they're not good people to begin with. If they can't come forward and say, look, there's a plan of people trying to rid this guy of the world and it's happening instead of lying and saying you're a violent, paranoid schizo who suffers from obsession and a chronic police report taker. That was, I believe, was that Officer Jones? I think so. Um, let's go back to the notes. I still got fucking two and a half pages. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is fucking going to take forever. Okay. Uh, where am I here? Uh, <laughs> Uh, 
that whole thing was for an hour was correction from last video but there was some good talking points I added um, it's the things you say I believe that was an Alexis Amore statement it's the things you say and then I, I believe I tried to explain maybe on the last video that it didn't make sense because the things I say are private and twisted out of context to the world you with me so, if I'm in this guy's house right here, and I say, Dro, anyone? And I say, I don't know, uh, let's, let's see, let me try to remember some of these things I'm mad about. I can't really think of anything, because I, I haven't really said anything, right? Um... I don't know. I'm trying to think about some of these things I say other than me being obnoxious on the internet to prove a point, but but it's the things you say. Maybe maybe she's talking about the movie quotes. Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm schizophrenic and so am I. I mean, who says that? Uh, Bill Murray does in the movie What About Bob? Okay. Oh, well, now Kevin's trying to make us think he's a schizophrenic. If I quote a movie line from What About Bob in 1995... I'm not trying to make someone look... I'm not trying to pretend I'm a schizophrenic. I'm quoting a fucking movie line. And people obviously know that. Unless... So, so... No. Okay, so this is a perfect example. How would Alexis Amore and the rest of the entire planet know that in 1994... How old was she? Okay, she's 47 now. She's not that much younger than me, but... But she would have been... five years younger so okay that's not a good example okay let's say let's say that 18 year old right there is going there's that Kevin Perlman and he, he said roses are red violets are blue what about that 18 year old right there how would that 18 year old right there know that in 1994 or 95 or whatever I quoted a line from the movie with Bill Murray what about was it Bill Murray I think so what about Bob? How would they have that information? In an internet rela IRC internet related chat chat room of like 25 people with a, the channel said Colorado. Okay, so we're in a Colorado channel because we didn't have all the social networks or things. It's very simple, it's very text based. In 1994, in a text room of 25 anonymous people, I quote a movie line, and that 18-year-old there is mad at me like, you did this and you did that for quoting what... And, and I can tell you how many times a year I see people sort of joking about the same thing based off me, but it's a movie line, but I said it so then they're mimicking it as if like guilts or something, you know what I'm saying? It's like like we're guilting you, and and um, it's a public shaming or what? I, it's confusing because there's no there's no definition to the situation, and you're imagining the whole thing. And then you have the psychology community trying to lock you away and say you're schizo and paranoid. And so, which which is the part? It's it's your behavior, Mike Huntley. I'm the only one with the normal behavior. Okay, so... So... So, it's the things you say. You quote a line from a movie in 1996, and it's 2024, and people who are as young as 18 or way younger are running around going, you know, 
you said that? And you're like, I'm trying to understand this, the level of, of stupidity, or, or not even stupidity, just... It's like watching Dumb and Dumber from a planet of Dumb and Dumbers, right? It's like, it's like a bunch of people going, you want to hear something really annoying? You know, you know, it's like, it's like, like, you're like, are you for real, dude? Or like, how do you have the information? Are you for real? Do you, can you do one plus one equals two? Uh, but it's a planet. It's an entire planet. And not one person's going, well, this is what's going on. Except my golly. Indirectly. World of paranoia, and you're a dead man. So, is it is it the things you say, or we're trying to collect every aspect on an infinitesimal level and twist it out of out of context and rile up the masses and to try to hunt you and kill you, and then make you think that it's your fault? Because it doesn't make sense. Because I'm not doing anything different than anyone else. They're just twisting it and contorting it into fiction. And making things look like it wants to look. But it, it still is hard to twist and contort a movie quote into a crime. I mean, you're just like... Or, or maybe you tell jokes and you've told one off-color joke your entire life. And there's a plan of people trying to kill you. It's the things you say. Well, I watch that guy, and every fucking comment out of his mouth is like, nigga this, nigga that, blah, blah. Okay, right? And you don't care. Yeah, he has 500,000 racial jokes, and you don't care. But but the one moment of imperfection one time from Kevin Perlman is like, you know what you did, and we have a planet hunting you and kill you, and it's a public shame, and you're like, you're just, you're just looking for child-raping Jew-kill excuses, right? Because... Because, you know, yesterday, yesterday I was, I was, uh, tightening an exhaust manifold and I turned the wrench one millimeter too much. So, so you have a worldwide campaign to kill me for that one too, right? I mean, okay, because everything's on that level of, of the, you, you better be a perfect robot or, and we're going to collect this one infinitesimal thing. I'm going to hunt you with every person on the planet every day of your life until you you keel over and die for your entire life over, you know, you're, you're fucking 100, and, 100 years old and they're like, when you were five, you farted wrong and you're like, and I got to deal with this from every single human being on the planet and some public shaming. Something's not right. Some, something's not making sense, right? So, so, it's the things you say are really we're trying to collect whatever... We're trying to collect every aspect of your life and to justify killing you because the common denominator is we're going to hunt you and kill you or eradicate you because you did this or because you did that, but killing people is wrong and, and illegal. So... Because you talked to my girlfriend, because you, because I think you stole a car, because I think you are a drug dealer, because I think you, because you're Jason, because there's a miscommunication, but wait, killing people is a crime. Well, we're not killing people if we do it in a way that we can get away with it, right? Okay, with Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman and Jason Perlman. So... But the question here is, the only question of importance here is, how would that 18-year-old have any piece of private data? That's the crime. That's the government data collection and dissemination and out of context and riling the masses to kill a 5-year-old Jew or an 8-year-old Jew or whatever, or a Jew. So is it about Jason Perlman's road rage activities or is it about eight years old kissing a black girl and if it's about eight years old kissing a black girl, that's before Jason Perlman's road rage activities, correct? So now we're not talking cars and driving, we're talking 
children kissing a black girl. Obviously, the girl is the same age. She was at Science Guys Day Camp. Okay, so... Oh, 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 that's right. Um, Kevin, it's the things you say. Rules are meant to be broken. That was an old, I mean, people, most people know that, that sort of saying. Rules are meant to be broken. Harmless joke. How does that go worldwide? And a literal. And a crime. So, so example... I mean, you've heard people joke around. Rules are meant to be broken. It, it doesn't mean... Okay, if you're a sane, rational human being and not a psychotic murderer... The, the, the term... I don't know what you call it. Is it called a term or a saying? Because mobs... It's not my saying. I heard it from someone else. You know, but... But rules are meant to be broken. Does that, does that mean that... Um, putting bullets in people's heads because there's a rule that says uh, it's illegal to kill people. No, that's not what that means, okay? It, it means like... And Arnold was trying to throw... My stepfather was trying to throw that bullshit on me, trying to make me think. It means... Um, you know, little things are JY. It, but it's more of a joke than anything, okay? So if, I, if I'm joking around and I jaywalk and I say... Well, you're not supposed to jaywalk. You know, rules are meant to be broken. You know, it's a joke. Okay, it's a, it's that thing. You know, non psychotic murderers have senses of humor. Okay, and so if someone tells a joke, we're, we're, rules are meant to be broken. It's a joke. Okay, you're joking around. It doesn't mean you're gonna go out and kill people. It doesn't mean okay. But my family can't understand that, or better yet, they can understand it, but they can't understand it when it comes to Kevin Perlman because there's motive to exterminate, and they keep telling me that everything I do is wrong and it's perfectly normal, right? Okay, so, but when they say it, it's coming from a planet, and we keep ignoring the planetary mobbings to remove me from society, okay? So, but Kevin, you think differently. Well, if I think differently, I wouldn't have heard it from someone else, right? Like, I, it wouldn't be something that people joke around with. Okay, it wouldn't be a common... I don't know what you call that. Like, a common joke people do. Okay, so... You think differently. Sarcasm is illegal and a crime. No one would ever do it. There are imaginary Kevin rules. Okay. So I believe I started going through this dialogue. Someone was like, oh, you broke the rules. And then I, I'm like, rules? Rules of what? Like, what are these imaginary rules? I think... I think on the next page here, I might have a list of rules I broke. They're like, I farted past midnight. But, um, the rules. Unless Mike Huntley wanted me to see the movie Fight Club and then increasing his worldwide Jew kill operations or whatever. But, but, oh, and then the sarcasm, my mother was spazzing out. Like, sarcasm is the end of the world. Okay, and so everything is, is similar here. That any form of imperfection, on the slightest, minute level, is the end of the fucking world at all costs. So if I'm having a bad day, or maybe I'm doing just a sarcastic joke that, like, there's... Once again, there's different varying degrees of sarcasm, or or positivity, or negativity, or, or trichotillomania, okay, there's degrees, or OCD, or depression, or ADHD, there's varying levels, and when I was talking about Greg Gutfeld, well, I can't function in society, and, okay, well, if someone were to take a joint and go, you would barely feel, you, you wouldn't, you would Greg, Greg Gutfeld didn't know that because he's an uneducated piece of Jew killing shit, and paid off to do what he was told to do to my life and um, with Fox News and um, so he would know that because he's a judgmental prick that has no concept of the shit he fucking bat flaps his lips about, right? Okay, so anyone that's ever smoked weed knows that it's not on or off, okay? You, you have to smoke a lot of it to be belligerent. Okay, and... Um, 
So, so sarcasm on the slightest, even if you're having, let's say someone's having a bad, let's say someone's the nicest person known to man, but they have a teeny bit of, they say something a teeny bit sarcastic, and we all know that some sarcastic things could be nasty, and we know that some can be jokey, right? Okay, so not all sarcasm is evil. Okay, it's not an evil word. Okay, but in my life it is. In the slightest moment of imperfection, just like I'm explaining, like the armpit, hey, Sean Brian Seven says your armpit smells, and it's now a disease. It's like now, like, Kevin suffers from the armpit smell disease. Well, she's really saying you're a dirty fucking Jew, and dirty Jews need to fucking die, okay? That's what she's really saying. Okay, with Lorena Escobar. But, and, and they're going to be the ones that throw rocks in my head minute by minute until I keel over and die because of us dirty, dirty Jews or whatever. But they're going to mask it in a way that they can get away with it, right? Okay, just like the, the, the people trying to make me think that these paranoid schizophrenia tactics are for me, okay? They're not having direct, honest conversations. They're having cryptic idea of reference manipulation conversations that met with larger and larger mental illness groups, okay? And trying to make me think it's for me. Like, hey, it sounds like you're like a really good guy, man. And then 5,000 people per week will start saying, man. And they're not doing it because they like me. They're doing it because they want to punch you in the back of the head, okay? If they like you, they're going to say, this is what's going on, and I respect you, and that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, and I'll speak out against it and not sit there with the cryptic mimic idea of reference Illuminati cult tactics. Because in the quote-unquote world of paranoia, why do we have a world of paranoia campaign? Well, I'm not allowed to ask these questions. You better accept what's going on or it's going to get a lot worse for you and no relaxing for you, nigger. And a lot of other things said. Okay, but... but Does that sound like a friendly type of thing? I respect you, no relaxing for you, nigger. <laughs> right? Like, well, Kevin thinks differently, says the people that are wanting me to kill me, correct? And I believe that was the Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman statement. Uh, have I, okay, that person right there, have I told them what my personality is? Or were they given lies, defamation, slander? They were given false information. To do what? To, to give me a normal life? No, because someone wants me dead. And it starts at five years old. Okay, people don't defame people because they want them to have a good life. And in methods that is worldwide and in secret. And you're walking around going, what's going on? World paranoia. You're a fucking dead man. Did I miss something? And that was, that was 23 years ago. And minute by minute, there has been not one minute that I've been dealing with plants of child raping murderers for 23 years. Not one minute. Day or night or anything. Okay? Just, you don't, you better accept this killing, hunting you to kill you. Okay, and the the biggest people's the biggest supporters are is LAPD or the police and the government and psychology community. I mean, if I was a psychologist, I wouldn't be like, "You don't talk or we fucking kill you." Okay, I mean, we want to help you, so if you if you say something, we're gonna kill you. Okay, I mean, you'll be like, "Huh?" Okay, my mother, I just want you to have a normal life. Well, then, if I can speak the truth, okay. Okay, so. Lake battery died here. We're gonna go on, or did it, or did I think it did? But But Kevin's kind isn't allowed to take walks. I'm not sure if there's something to Victoria Walker's name about that. Like, like, I mean, for all I know, they're saying you're not allowed to steal Victoria Walker away from her boyfriend or husband when they say you can't take walks or how many walks have you taken or whatever. Because everything is some kind of paranoid schizophrenic mind game to torture and kill. But, but. Technically, if you wanted to talk about Victoria Walker, I mean, she's like everyone else. She kept calling me and me just being a nice person. Um, Personally, I think she was sort of like a short, ugly, troll, pizza face 
disgusting looking. I don't even know how she was a stripper unless she was good looking when she was young and then just got really ugly at her mid twenties to thirties. I mean, I don't know because she wasn't very fucking attractive to me. You're like, <laughs> okay, well, hey, Kevin, you're an asshole for saying that. Well, you know, this person's involved in a worldwide murder operation to kill me for me being nice enough to let her in my life and try to help her out. And when and when she when she ha- was when she was down and and find out that she's hunting me to kill me or eradicate me. So um, with Michael ba- with criminal defense attorney Michael Bialis, her husband, and um, or Rudy the Rubber, if you want to call him that. And, um, <laughs> Rudy the Rubber by Alice. And, um, and then Matt Bomaraki, which she married later on, and then was stalking and hunting me. And he was, I'm like, if it wasn't for me, they wouldn't I even met. And then I co signed for the Redding Ring, and you think you're showing, like, that you're, like, a good person. Okay, like, I'm helping you out so that you can marry this girl and this and that. And you're trying to steal my bitch. Now, they, he didn't say it, but they just keep hinting, well, Kevin, you're in triangle relationships. Well, I'm not in a relationship. I mean, she's married to this guy, and I knew her for several years prior, and she calls me once in a while, and it's like, Kevin, can you, you know, come over? My computer's not, or... Kevin, I want to make money, you know, will you build this website for me, and, you know, you can make part of the profit, sure, whatever, and this and that, and I find out that everything's a frame job or a setup, or, and then it's like, and it's, it's about blurring the lines, and you're like, this is fucking absurd, because if I were to say to you right now, have any of you ever been friends with someone of the opposite sex who is married, or with a boyfriend, you're going to say... Every single person on the planet is going to be like, because it's not, it's not possible. Just like I'm explaining going to social events and you come here, you come here every day, every, all the time. So you have OCD and so do all those other people. Why is, why is it different for Kevin Perlman than everyone else? Okay. So, so every person on the planet is friends with someone of the opposite sex who is married or in a relationship, correct? It's not possible to not be in one of those, have one of those triangle relationship friendships or something like that. Or the only way it's possible is if you live out in a fucking island in the middle of nowhere. So are they trying to cover something up? Yeah, Jen Hess. Jen Hess, pretending she's Jessie Jane, a porn star, and pretending she's a schizophrenia, and then me finding out that her name isn't Jessie, her name is Jennifer, and that she's married with a kid, and running around, well, she's running around saying she has my baby. But Kevin, you're a bad guy for doing the research. I'm a bad guy for getting curious and finding out what the fuck's going on with these crazy fucking unheard of behaviors. So I got to be killed. Now, is that what he says when you you take too many... Why do you take so many walks? I mean, because I don't know, because that makes sense, right? So, technically, you'd say, well, there's two blonde stalkers right there trying to have me killed. And how much money are they taking? And I can tell you right 100% fact that Brian Longbotham was the motherfucker paying off Jen Hess to have me killed. Okay? But, but who is paying off Brian Longbotham? Because... Okay. So, right? Now you're going to say these things shouldn't be happening. Okay, even even if Jennifer S. or Victoria Walker were just way the fuck, uh, what do you call it? Like super bimbos. <laughs> like just, just, um, just fucking complete airheads. And didn't have motive. This shouldn't be a worldwide affair. We keep ignoring the fact that someone is trying to collect every infinitesimal aspect of my life and twist it out of context and make it the end of the world and launch worldwide campaigns to kill me. So, what's it really about? Kevin, it's your behavior or your past caught up with you. No, it's about killing a fucking five-year-old Jew and trying to come up with a justification. Or an excuse. Every aspect of the things I'm being accused of either are not me or they're perfectly normal. 
Okay, uh, Steve Levinson. How many cigars do you smoke a week? How many cigars do you smoke for a week? How many cigars do you smoke 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 for a week? You're obsessed. We gotta lock you away. <laughs> well, the proper answer here is why the fuck do you care? Right? The obsessed caring about things that don't matter, like my family. And then launching worldwide campaigns to kill me over it, but but we're still missing the point. Or we're missing the the Okay, if I walk up to you and say, you see that guy over there? He smokes more than one cigar per week. Or he smokes too many cigars. We got to do something about it. We got to lock him into a mental facility. He needs to get help. You, you're going to be like, what? Can you can you go gravitate that way and and go go shove your head in the fucking mud or something? Okay, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who cares? Okay? Well, Kevin's the guy that keeps buying cars and can't stop. He bought one Corvette four years ago and everyone destroyed it. And that's like the only car he's bought in like 15 years. But we don't care about Jay Leno. He's a good guy. And then it's Kevin thinks he's Jay Leno. Well, did I say I think I'm Jay... Did I say I think I'm Jay Leno? Or did you say I think I'm Jay, Jay Leno? With... With um, wait, who was it? I don't know. So, so did I say anything? I'm Jay, Jay Leno, or did you say I think I'm Jay Leno? Well, I never said a fucking thing about anything. Actually, as a matter of fact, I think I've only said one thing, and that was the age 29. What the fuck is going on, Mike? <laughs> That's it. That <laughs> that is pretty much it. Okay, so you can't say that I've done anything. Okay, so so um. Let's go down New Hampshire. Let's go down New Hampshire here. Okay, so... Imaginary... Oh, I wrote imaginary Jew kill rules. Kevin has broken. That, that's more appropriate. Imaginary Jew kill rules. Kevin has broken. Okay. For example, I like the star. No, well, Starbucks and coffee bean, and every coffee shop worldwide. While well, you were outside and you read a book and you rested your feet on a chair, that's inappropriate behavior. You you violated the rules. Wait, resting your feet on a chair, reading a book outside. I guess, what, what would happen to me right now if I bought a Lazy Boy chair for my house? I mean, I can't fucking imagine the ramifications of the judicial system on that horrific, unspeakable crime. Okay, right? So you rested your feet on a chair outside at a coffee shop reading a book, and worldwide groups get together to kill you. Resting their feet on chairs with copycat tactics. And Steve Levinson is now going to try to force me into mental facilities. For another cigar. Okay, so, uh, because I smoked one yesterday, right? But, but, guess what? Smoking cigars is healthy, but, but, a hundred thousand punches to the back of the head, mental, a hundred thousand mental bludgeonings to the back of the skull every day is not unhealthy to, but, wait, a cigar is unhealthy, so in order to cure, to make me healthy, he's going to have a hundred thousand people a day mentally bludgeon my skull and with mental blows to the back of the skull to make me healthy. Like like negative reinforcement by bashing your skull in with a lead pipe to stop you from smoking cigars. Well, I think at this point the cigars are like fucking medication then, right? Like, like the cigars are fucking the only healthy thing for me, technically, at that point, right? Okay, so the, what's the moral story? Don't fuck with people's lives. Don't play God with people's lives. Don't tell people what they can and can't do. Don't try to kill people for ordering a steak at a restaurant. Okay, whatever. Okay, so, um... Kevin's... Oh, Kevin's kind is not allowed to take walks. 
Oh, this is the imaginary rule list. The imaginary Jew kill rule list or child rapist army uh, kill list. Kevin's kind isn't allowed to take walks. Anywhere ever. Or, or theoretically because you took too many walks in the past. Well, uh, I'm sure... Can you process that? It makes no sense on any level. Um... Kevin talked to women. Kevin's not allowed to talk to women. But, but Kevin, why don't you date? Well, if I'm not allowed to talk to women, I can't get to the dating part, right? Okay, um... Um... Or technically, I'm not allowed to talk to anyone. But, um... What, oh, I wrote that twice? Oh, I put talk to women and then talk to people. Because really, it's not really about talking to people. But, but you get the idea. They're, they're trying to make you think like... Like, we're just going to keep bashing your skull until you're dead and gone, but, but, you know, you broke the imaginary rule. Well, what's the rule? You're imagining it. Nothing's going on. Okay, um, Kevin's kind isn't allowed to get into photography. So, 1996, Mike Wexler, you, you, you're not allowed to take pictures of people. Jason's friend, um, they wanted, Jason wanted me to meet his friend Mike Wexler in Colorado after I, I started going there, and Jason had friends. And, uh, there's even Jason Baum, that's a little more more obvious and aggressive, but J- Mike Wexler with the you're not allowed to take pictures of people for 19, getting into Professor Nick's photography class, meet me on Nick's at second, and um and um and um I get back into photography around 2005. Brian Longbotham instantly starts in on me. We should go down to Starbucks. He invites his friend, uh, Tia Leone and Martin Sheen. Hey, Kevin, take their pictures. Okay, whatever. And then Kevin's a Pavarazzi. We have a worldwide campaign to kill him. Well, first of all, that's not the definition of a Pavarazzi. Um... Pavarazzi is someone who waits at Hollywood events and makes money, money off the photos. Money. Sitting sitting at a coffee shop and taking a picture of a public figure is not making money and nobody normally cares, especially um, the actor. They don't, they don't care. I mean, how many pictures were taken of Jay Leno this weekend with a crowd around him at the car show with my Eclipse in it? Did anyone care? But if I were to pull out a camera and take his picture, it would be the other world, right? But I don't care. I don't, I don't need his picture. It doesn't mean anything to me. Okay, but... Um, um, but Brian, Brian Longbotham take picture of my friends that he has come down and then there's a worldwide campaign to kill me so so for things that don't matter that nobody cares about but they care if your name's Kevin Perlman okay right they care if your name is Kevin Perlman and you're missing some eyebrow hair so is it about doing the same thing as everyone else and being hunted to kill for it or is it about something else a diversion from the truth a cloak, a mask and a cloak of what's really going on that we want to sort of try to drive you crazy and get what we want, right? Because, Kevin, you have a problem with authority figures and it's your behavior and you don't understand the way the world works. And it, uh, So, you know, if I go out and I buy... Um, a Dodge Charger, let's say, they'll say... Well, people don't buy Dodge Chargers. You bought a Dodge Charger, so we have to hunt you and kill you with worldwide groups. And I'll say, but I see them everywhere. I don't, I don't understand your argument. Well, but you don't need to because you know what you did, and we're going to kill you. Because you think differently. I'll be like, I, I'm confused. Well, if you can't understand it, then we got to lock you away because you're not well-grounded. And <laughs> you're like, what? This is, am I in a fucking try zone? This makes no fucking sense, right? Okay, so... Um, But we can, we can talk about the Talking Tina Twilight Zone. My name's Talking Tina, and I'm going to kill you. No. Okay, so... And that, there might be something about that with that Tina stripper. I'm not sure, but... But anyway, so, you know, you never know my life. It's so fucking strange. 
Okay, or maybe it's gremlins on airplanes, right? Okay, um, terror, what is it? Terror at 20,000 feet or something? Okay, so, um, Kevin Scott is not allowed to get into photography. So, 1996, 2005, and then Aubrey Fisher gets mad. I get in the, I'm getting back into photography, and, um, I sign up to one model place to do a, a time for print with people to sort of get experience. And then Aubrey Fisher says you should sign up to Model Mayhem where she's working with worldwide groups to mayhem to meet me to death with the Jew kill schizophrenia and kill tactics. And it's all co it's all cloaked and covered up because, because Kevin tapped his foot around me. What? Does that make sense? Well, you're a troll. So I have a worldwide campaign to kill you. Uh, well, maybe if you don't like me, you shouldn't talk to me, right? I mean, maybe it's not about launching worldwide campaigns to kill people that you don't like. Maybe it's you shouldn't talk to me. If you don't like me, you shouldn't talk to me. Or maybe, Eric Christensen, if I don't like your t-shirt, I shouldn't befriend you and hunt you to kill you with the San Diego Police Department, right? And Sherry Christensen. Correct? Uh, Kevin, you can't talk like that because you don't, you don't know how the world works. Okay, well, these are government flag and kill operations. Based on profiling and killing. Because anyone with lack of eyebrow hair is the next Ted Bundy, Ted Bundy and Unabomber. Okay. Um, you're not allowed to use your pool jacuzzi because it's on the opposite side of the tunnel of your complex. I'm also not allowed on that side or that side or out of something like seven entrances, I'm only allowed to use the one closest to my house. Or I've committed crimes that need to be locked away and every neighbor at every place on every planet in every public place will hunt me to kill me for what I did. Did I miss something? Am I? Are you confused? I'm confused because I, I've never heard of anything on any level like it ever. Except for maybe a horror movie and I've still never seen a horror movie with an entire planet trying to kill one person um, and, or some crazy unheard of comedy or maybe something with zombie a zombie movie I mean but but like I've never even heard of a writer write something like that it's so fucking strange okay so And we had a fake Brazers guy there. And, of course, next door is courtroom, court reporter, court, courtroom Debbie Woolman, room 101, Van Nuys Courthouse, owning the property adjoining my wall, which you know there's audio surveillance and probably uh, computer hacking equipment and all sorts of shit in there. There's no, there's no fucking doubt about it. Hey, we only got two pages. I've gone through two pages, and there's two pages left. Okay, so I'm starting to get tired here. Uh, you're not allowed at... Oh, we're still on the list. We're no, oh, I can I can I can breeze through this with the, that Julia Sophia slash Rudy Morales trying to lure me down to the sunset to bash my fucking skull in or whatever they were doing. Because when I didn't go, they got extremely angry. Okay, so um, and people don't normally behave that way. Okay, so um, you're not you're not allowed to park. Oh, you're not allowed to park benches or anywhere for more than five minutes. That's where the no relaxing for you nigger thing started. I sat at a park bench for more than five minutes and was no relaxing. Okay, um, and I'll, and actually the the 2013 arrests with Dincy were for sitting on the sidewalk longer than five minutes. Okay, so um, and then they threw on some bunk charges to sort of cover it up. Um, You're only allowed to own one car, but you're not allowed to go anywhere. You're not allowed to leave your house or go anywhere but to work and back. So you're you, you I'm only allowed to do functional things. But I'll still be met with a worldwide attack. So so if I if I say I'm gonna go home 
from my job and stop at a coffee shop and relax, especially Golden State Sports Medical with the black employee Brandon and Alita angry at me for, and you're going to say, well, but how are these events connected? Because Brandon is not going to know anyone at Barclays or very rarely going to know every single person and employee at Barclays Coffee and hunt you to kill you for for stopping and relaxing after work at a coffee shop or going to a, a happy hour, right? But Brandon was black, and it, was, it wasn't just Brandon. It was the entire office, but the higher aggression rates have always been from the black people. Um, it always seems to start and then funnel out to everyone. So it starts from a black person, funnels out to everyone. Like, um, Kira Noir follows me to Ralph's in a Starbucks, and then I somehow ruined her life by handing her a card, and then it wouldn't have mattered if I handed her a card or not, and then boom, worldwide groups, like, you know what you fucking did. You're like, huh? Like, did they say hi? Is that what it was? Okay, what if I have sex with a girl? I mean, if I say hi to a girl, there's worldwide groups trying to kill me. What if I have sex with one? I mean, like Gen S, right? I think it's really fucking bad. Okay, so, um... I'm not allowed at any food establishments like supermarkets or restaurants because uh, I eat too much. And Steve Levinson was heavily on the hinting about going to a buffet in Tahoe and eating too much. Wait, you went to a buffet and you... <laughs> Let's think about the irony here. You went to a buffet and you ate too much so you're never allowed to eat food again. Because you suffer from the... The... Accept... Obsessive compulsing eating disease. Well, uh, if you're not flapping your gums, if you're not flapping your gums with bullshit, let's talk about facts and specifics. I'm 52 years old. I'm 5'7", and I weigh 170 pounds. If I suffer from the can't stop eating disease, mental illness, type, mental illness disease, then I'd weigh 350 pounds or a lot more, correct? But when you see that 350 pound guy walking by, you're not running around going, I gotta lock you in a mental institution because you suffer from the, the eating disorder disease, even though he probably does, you don't give a shit, right? But the guy that's 5'7 and 170 pounds, and I'll, I'll agree with you, that I am way the fuck too fat, which, which upsets me and I should be at a gym working out and being healthy which I'm not allowed to do for no reason at all with every gym worldwide if you see Kevin throw rocks his head and kill him for no reason with that Laura girl and so many other random fucking child raping Jew killers just like my father's office and everywhere else Greg, there's nothing I've done to anyone they're just trying to kill a five year old Jew without eyebrow or hair and cover it up okay they're trying to to make it look justified, even though it, it can't look justified. Okay, so, um, no matter how nice and friendly I am. Okay, so, Kevin's kind is not allowed at pools. Kevin's not at any, allowed at any food places. Well, well, if I, if I'm not, okay, if I'm not allowed to eat food, what are the ramifications? What, what's the motive and what is the ramifications of not eating food? Well, there's one of two things. Either you'll get extremely sick from not eating food and if you don't die, which is clearly one of the motives to kill... They'll say this guy can't take care of himself and put him in the state will get an LPS conservatorship and they'll try to force him into a mental facility, right? So what is the motive? To say you're not allowed at any restaurant or food establishment. So, uh, 
how do we force people into mental facilities? Okay? My father's tactic was trying to make me look like agoraphobic. Might even have something to do with a girl high for all I... And Lord... And Tracy Lords for all I fucking know. The guy's so sick in the fucking head. You're not allowed to pull holes. Any pool all worldwide. Uh, Kevin isn't allowed to get college degrees. So I didn't even know these things were going on in college, but they were. I'm not allowed to get college degrees. But I thought... I thought... Everyone in the government saying I'm anti-capitalistic. Just like my family saying I'm um, anti-Semitic because I don't have a I don't, I don't eat kosher I don't, I'm not wearing a yarmulke and I don't have a Hasidic beard. But everyone else is okay that is Jewish and doesn't dress like that. And okay, so um, so what applies to me doesn't apply to anyone else. There's there's special rules. There's special, there's special, there's special secret rules, and I'm told the rule by lead, by my skull being bashed in with lead pipes. From every stranger on the, on the entire planet Earth. But nothing's going on, we're all paranoia. And nothing's a bad thing. Just you can't see yourself. I forgot about that tactic. You can't see yourself, tactic. Um, damn, is it almost 1 a.m.? Um, let's head home. Um, Kevin isn't get allowed to, to. Kevin isn't allowed to get jobs, start his own companies, make money. Okay, the only people that I've been allowed to make money with is my jailer, Mike Huntley. I mean, I did work other jobs, but the same stocking things were going on. I didn't know it. After that, any attempt to start a new business or website idea or anything was instantly boat anchored by worldwide groups. Um, and at a lot more aggressive level than previous before that. Um, Kevin's kind is allowed to tell anyone when anything's been done to him. So, so the more police reports, the more uh, insurance claims with flat-out video and proof. The insurance companies try to steal all my money. And it's funny because the last something like twenty-four insurance claims, I said I don't want any money. I just want to create a paper trail of what these people are doing and the insurance company is trying to raise my rates all insanely crazy to say well you know look what look what you did look at all these claims and they, they go well 40 years ago you got a speeding ticket so it's a conviction or no actually it's three years like I got like one speeding ticket in 20 years I got one three years ago and the insurance company has, has like quadruply charged me each billing cycle and I try to like like um look you know you can't you can't keep compounding the the obnoxious fees for no reason saying that and then so finally I started reporting them to the insurance company uh, fraud op, fraud groups and whatever to crack down because USAA is also working with my neighbors to destroy all my cars and, and LAPD so so and they're making money off the deal correct so we're gonna bash the sky skull in with lead pipes and we can make his money off them too but is it about money or is it about hate it's about hate Money is secondary. If you want to pri prioritize what's going on, it, it's money is secondary. It's we want to kill the fucking Jew for lack of some eyebrow hairs because he's different or something like that. And then, but you know, I might as well take the house and cars because why not, right? Okay, so. Kevin's kind isn't allowed to tell anyone... Oh. K 
Kevin's kind isn't allowed to date women, have sex, have friends who aren't. This fucking print is too small. Who aren't. Oh, who aren't his jailers or slave owners while having my skull bashed in. Okay, so so that's a perfect example. Let's head to our zone. Um, okay. Um, every female's like, or person for that matter. Oh yeah, that's there's the, that's the guy that or or this or that. And so I'm either not going to talk to him. If I see him, I'm going to throw rocks at his head. Or the worst of the worst, like Steve Levinson, I'm going to befriend him, tell him he's imagining it, and try to fucking kill him with every resource in the police and government. Um, and then I say, you've been lied to, and they say, you don't talk, we fucking kill you, and whatever. Okay, so... So, um... So where are we here? So, so... Shit, what did I just... Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, so aside from... Like, the girls in college, which I wasn't like a super dating guy or anything, but every... Every date was the same. I didn't realize it. Uh, girls trying to set me up or intimidate me or freak me out or or make it look like I'm crazy. Uh, see a ninja tank, Christina Stalinsky, uh, Tatiana Dobkins, and, and and everything was like the same conspiring uh, paranoia things. I didn't realize they were going on. But I was still very good at, with my common sense, like this girl saying uh, on internet related chat, come over to my house, um, don't worry the door's open, just come in and uh, you know you go over to her house. Of course she drove a Jeep like Kelly had, so, so at that time I wasn't picking up on how she was linked with Kelly Hatch, but then now looking back you're like, but wait, but how would she have information about Kelly Hatch at Southern Oregon State College all the way in Colorado. See, that's that's the point that everyone's pretending isn't strange. Okay, how's she going to have any information from Kelly Hatch? How is a planet of people getting private information, private out of context information from Kelly Hatch and the police and government? Okay, so, so that's the only question of importance. Nothing else is important. Well, did you, didn't you, to Kelly Hatch and did you... Nothing, nothing's been done to Kelly Hatch. She's a fucking. She was paid off to have me fucking killed or follow me up and play victim, however you want to word it, right? But the ramifications of their worldwide uh, fear mongered kill Kevin armies is being done with the intent to premeditated intent to, to hunt and kill or eradicate. Okay, so even though on the surface it's just a girl crying wolf a hundred thousand times, every single one is told the same thing until I'm dead or gone, correct? Okay, so, so, um, example, go over to my house, the door's open, I drive a Jeep, hinting about Kelly Hatch telling me, yeah, go in my room, the door's open, but if Kelly Hatch is telling me to go into her room, the door's open, then why would anyone else have that information, and why would they be using it like it's the end of the world? Well, you broke into Kelly Hatch's room, you, you this, you that. Well, did I use tools to break in, or did she say, go in my room, the door's open? Right? And, well, we don't know if that's true. Well, what do you mean you don't know if it's true? It's so fucking trivial to begin with. It's like, it's like even if I did go in her room unannounced, that's the end of the fucking world. It's a dorm room. But, but the reality of the situation is that the only person that really could blast that worldwide is Kelly Hatch saying, Kevin, go in my room, the door's open, and Kevin, Kevin's breaking into my room, right? I mean, if you think about it, and 
if I went into Kelly Hatch's room while she wasn't there, she wouldn't know it, right? So she, you know, she's a fucking liar, okay? But she's not just a liar. She's a liar with unlimited government resources. Wait, wasn't her father a politician? Her father, I think, was a politician, now I think about it. Um, okay, so... So you're thinking, wouldn't that sort of like try to like make you neurotic? You're like, I'm a fucking afraid to do anything now, right? Because every single, every single female or person I talk to is saying that I did something to them. Or why? Then you're like, I don't understand. Okay, so, but in retrospect, absolutely nothing happened. She's just a piece of shit. And so now you know that, and you always did know that she was paid off or contacted and told to stalk and hunt with the police and government. Okay, period. And that is a certainty, okay, based on the facts. And every single person doing the same thing. No matter how much, I could prove it right now. I could say, look, I'm going to fucking go ask that girl out. I'm going to be as nice as can be, and you will see what will happen. And I can tell you what's going to happen before it happens. How is that possible? Because I'm a super psychic? No, because every single person on the planet is told to do it until they get what they want. Exterminate the five-year-old Jew with all fucking co- at all costs. Okay, so then we have then we have the point where my father wants me to to date Adriana Olivares and in, in in his office, and he's sort of introducing me to her and throwing her on me, right? But then Adriana Olivares is asking like acting like a. A moronic ass puppet running around the office going, I'm going to get the doctor's son. I'm going to get the doctor's son. And you're just like, okay, what am I dealing with here? And uh, because like that level of fucking, uh, uh, what's it called? The level of um, immaturity is just like beyond a level of turn off. And you're like, do I even want to deal with that? Like, right? Like, so then you sort of, hang out with her a little but you don't really date her or and then all of a sudden she gets weirder and weirder and freakier and freakier and angrier and angrier and boom I nailed it my instincts nailed it and then come the the because she didn't get her way the like mental Ill, mental institution death threats or whatever and then or the variance because it wasn't direct directly stated like that but um, like the I own you and you better and okay right and you're like I don't have the time for this fucking shit right and then come the judgments towards me like you know you're playing games with people and this and that and you know, okay well once again I don't have the right to make my own choices right and then that was sort of my father saying you take what I give you or we fucking kill you and if I if if I, if she tells you that she wants to have a kid with you, you do what she fucking tells you. And if she tells you, you better date her. You better. And that was sort of my father, like, you fucking date who I fucking give you. And she she tells you, she tells you through me what you can and can't do. And. And if you don't want this one, you're not allowed to have anyone. But really, in retrospect, if you think about it, Adriana was going to bury me from day one. And when she was saying, I'm going to get the doctor's son, it wasn't because she wanted, like, the doctor's son trophy or anything. What she meant was... She's gonna get the be the one to fucking remove me from society or end my existence. Okay, like now you could you could say Kevin, that's not what she meant. And, I'm, and originally that's what I thought until she started showing what she was involved in. Right. So, so you better take what I give you, correct? But what he's gonna give me is a fucking nightmare. And. You're not allowed to go out and find someone that you relate to. You take what I fucking give you, and she tells you what you have to do, or else you stand over, right? Okay. And, of course, she was trying to play the, like, I'm going to try to make it look like Kevin's abusive and hate, 
and doesn't like women, and you know, the same thing that goes from every fucking human entity, but, okay, so, Okay, um, you're not allowed to tell anyone what's going on or being done in your life. That was pretty much obvious. You better accept what's going on or it's going to get a lot worse for you. I've been to the police a hundred million times. I've contacted a hundred million organizations, a hundred million attorneys, private investigators. I explained, I think, earlier on this video how Tim Thompson is interlinked on his private investigator portal to stop me from getting help. Um, uh, I think this one's extremely important here. You're not allowed to pick and choose who you want to date or be friends with based on surrounding yourself with good, decent people. So that that's extremely important because in order to create a good good life for yourself you have to surround yourself with good people or people that are beneficial to your life correct so so do you want to be friends with a boat anchor person a boat anchor like an Aubrey Fisher boat anchor personality where everything's an issue or or, or a Victoria Walker personality where everything's an issue and she's hunting you and she has the personality of you're a rat and you're a Okay, you're a rat and you're a snitch. You want to be around a you're a rat and you're a snitch type of, of degenerate loser. Okay, right? Like, like you're a rat, you're a snitch. Um, I want to sell crystal meth for a living. Like, okay, like, like those are all boat anchor people who go no, go nowhere in life, right? Um, they're not innovative. They're not passionate, they're not driven, they're not educated. So, people with manners and common sense and morals and ethics and and I'm not I'm told I'm not allowed to to, to pick and choose who I want to be and what I want to do in life, right? So so I'm a really good person. I have a really good set of morals and ethics. I'm, I'm passionately driven to make money and create art. And I'm respectful of others and open-minded. And even I've even been to therapists that ask me how I see myself or who I am. And they get angry when I tell them who I am because they don't want the truth out there. Right? It's like, God damn it. That's not what we've been telling the world. And you can't say those things. Okay, right? You're like, why are you... Why are you someone that I don't know uh, telling me who I am, right? Like, that's that's the absurdity. That my family's running around like, you can't see yourself, and because when you dated this girl, and you're like, you're like, wait a minute, you're like, time out here. I live in I live in Colorado and you live in Vancouver and you're telling me you're hinting to me all the things I've done to this girl and same with Adriana Alvarez for that. I remember my mother had a whole like like secret elaborate rap sheet of fiction on me with Adriana Alvarez and same with Aubrey Fisher. Okay, she, she actually had fiction on me with Aubrey Fisher. Okay, so... 
So wait, if they have, if they're collecting my conversations on my dates or or one-sided one-sided scenarios from the girl who is completely out of the social loop. Okay, would you right there? Would you be like, huh? Like, what the fuck? I'm trying to go on a fucking date, and you're trying to collect every aspect of my date and and twist every aspect out of context and try to find things to use against me on the date. I mean, gee, great dating life, right? Okay, so um, and then and then spew it to the entire planet. And it's like, you know, we don't want you dating women because all the horrible, all the, look, look at your past history of dating women, all these horrible things you did to these women. Hint, hint, it's never directly said. Hint, hint. And you're like, well, you know, women aren't going to date you because of your behavior. Uh, what behavior? I'm confused. You know what you did. What did I do? Well, people can lie, so I'm not going to tell you. Your past caught up with you. What past? I never said that. Okay, so we have a worldwide campaign to kill me that hinges on your past caught up with you, but I never said that. You know what you did, but people are told because they can lie, and every human entity making up every blatant lie about me and those lies in secret going out to the entire planet Earth, but nothing's really about anything but killing a five-year-old Jew with lack of some eyebrow hairs that he started pulling at the age of 12, 13. Correct? So, really, nothing's about anything. Just kill the five-year-old fucking Jew. Government fighting kill operations. And everything that's being done in my life is completely unheard of. It's insane. It's beyond any level of insane at all levels. And the entire planet Earth is involved in a worldwide conspiracy to commit murder. And it's heavily driven by the government psychology community and judicial system who are here to do what? We have the Constitution and the Bill of Rights so that you can be safe in the best country of the world and we have psychology community so that if you need to get help, you can, but the psychology community runs around telling you who you are no matter what you say and you say, that uh, that's not me and I didn't do that. And they said, you're, they're saying, too bad, you can't see yourself and you do what we tell you or we'll kill you. So I have to, like the, like the Spanish Inquisition, or I have to admit that... I have to give the psychology community, the family, and the police coerce false confessions to be a good person? That'll, that'll give me my freedoms and a good person? Well, I don't think that'll give me my freedoms. Right? They'll just they'll come at me more, right? Saying, see, I told you so. Um, let's see. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. I just wrote, no relaxing for you, nigger. Tactic, every place. I go minute by minute attacks. However, it really did start way before that death threat. But, but the correlation between me kissing the black girl eight years old, so example, Damon Riggins in 1988 with the white IROC Z, making it about racial, making nothing, making two high school students joking around with each other a few times with cars, the end all be all of racist acts, or, and it's funny because the double naming, right? Like, Racist like race cars and racist like I don't like that culture or color or whatever. Okay, so um, but it's all cloaked under kill the five year old Jew at all costs. Okay, so um, Kevin's out breaking these rules and needs to be punished with worldwide mental bludgeonings that started five years old with my father. Tries to make it look like I conform to media. Okay, well that that one confused me because because why? Okay, we gotta follow. Let's let's try to break this down a little. 
Uh, let me start with the other one first. Wait, well, what did I just read? Hmm. Okay, Kevin's out breaking the rules. Kevin's out breaking the imaginary rules and needs to be punished. Okay, every I think we can all agree here. It, it's your behavior and you rested your feet on a chair at a coffee shop reading books and so that's inappropriate behavior that even though it's not that everything that's happening is a punishment correct like whipping someone to death since five years old so Kevin um If you don't eat the liver and onions, you're not allowed to leave the dinner table. That was like seven years. I'm not sure. And I sat there for like an hour or whatever. But and it doesn't seem like a big deal, except the form of punishment is my family inflicting pain with methods of, with worldwide groups, with methods like putting a shock collar on a dog, right? So... So, um, it's not direct. It's not, it's not like, look, you know what, um, you go to your room and it's indirect, okay? It's, it's not like, look, okay, you did this, you're grounded for a week. Okay, none of that ever happened. And it's very indirect from lack of communication. And it's like, look, if, if you, hint, hint, you did this. I don't understand what you're hinting about. I just see you grunting. And then people walk by and whistle over and over. And then it's your behavior. Uh, what's going on? Is this about something? Well, isn't that like putting a shock collar on a dog? And, well, the shocks aren't fatal. They're like, the dog's like, what's this fucking pulsating thing you keep doing? Why, why do I, I walk this way and zzz, 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 zzz. I don't know why I'm getting shocks. I, I don't know why. I just know that there's just pulses of electricity but I don't know why right and then 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 maybe the dog walks towards the kitchen and then okay and that's what my father's doing to the dog okay now Kevin let's say Kevin dates a girl and she has tattoos or she has augmented breasts and my father doesn't approve or maybe she's black because I kissed the black girl that is all right or maybe maybe um she's Latin and she's a stripper or maybe she's Latin and she is a car mechanic even though you don't really see that but um, or maybe she's Latin or maybe she's a redhead and she she um, she's a waitress she's a waitress because I come from a white collar family right well you know hi can I have your number <laughs> okay right and, and you're like you're like what the fuck right I, I don't understand Okay, and, um, and then it's, how many cigars do you smoke per week? <laughs> right? I can't do this with the glasses. And, and then it's like, um, <laughs> it's like, what time did you go to sleep last night? Uh, 1 a.m. <laughs> okay, and then it's like, hey, you just took a walk after dark. <laughs> Okay, right? And you're like, and then, and then, and then every single thing you do is an issue. So every single thing you do is, you took a walk in the morning, you took a walk at night, you asked the garage, you didn't have sex with a gay guy, you went to a coffee shop, uh, then you have these weird interrogating questions from your family, like, like playing stupid, like, well, do people actually, uh, do people actually go to coffee shops and stay there for long periods of time? And, well, you know, they put little wireless chargers on the table, so I'm assuming they want you to stay there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right? Um, you know what you did. You did this. No, I didn't. <laughs> okay, right? Everything's a punishment. And then all of a sudden, you realize 
that they're not going to stop pushing the button. They're just like, nah, at this point, they're like, I can't stop pushing the shock button, right? <laughs> and you have, the, but what's weird is you have an entire planet doing it. It's not one single person. Okay, and then you're going, what the fuck's going on? Well, you know what you did. But there's no answer. Then it's your, par- you suffer, then it's world of paranoia. My golly, that threat's world of paranoia. When I start finding out. And then, then you're ratting them out. You're going to the police. You're going to the police and ratting them out. And the police are like, and you're like, did I fucking miss something here? And then the police are like, why didn't you tell the police? Well, I've told you over like 400 times. And they're all on video and audio recorded. Okay, right? So, is that strange? And nothing's about anything? But you know what you did? Yeah, but but you can, you can, I think we can all agree that everything that's going on is punish Kevin and kill him for something like no eyebrow hairs, okay? Something so trivial that you're just like, who are these fucking sick fucks, right? But then you realize that they're getting their jollies doing it. So, so it's fair to say that my father's getting his jollies hunting his five-year-old child to kill him. And at five years old, that's when he starts trying to make it look, look like I conform to media. So, what is that? Why would a father want to try to make his child look like he conforms to media? I don't even know. I can't even really put that in the punishment category. It's just so fucking... Like, why? Like, it, it just doesn't even make sense. Okay, so because because you're like, as far as punishments, it's like, that's not as much as a punishment of trying to torque someone's brain so they're no longer normal, right? They're trying to, to change your thinking from normal to crazy, right? But why? Well, how do we force someone into a mental facility, is correct? Right? With, with our little Jew killer buddy here. Okay, why do, how do you force someone to mental Well, you, you, you make them look crazy. That's the only possible way you can do it. Because you shouldn't have to force someone to a mental facility. Because if they don't need to be in a mental facility... The only time you force something is when it doesn't... It goes against what it is, right? Like, you understand? Like, if a guy rapes a girl, he's forcing himself on the girl against her permission when she says no, right? And if I say, I don't like what you're doing with the mental illness tags and I get the death threats, you better accept what's going on or it's going to get a lot worse. That's a form of rape because... Violating people's computer privacy and hinting about it over and over, which I find out with the Brian Lockbotham spy game tactic as he's trying to make it look like I conform to the pilot he hired me to work on. Spy game probably is more of a cover up, is a way of violating someone's sanity or comfort, mental comfort, right? And you say, I don't like you violating my, my, life and information and not that you can have these dialogues with them but you know I don't like the fact that you're you have spyware on my computer and you have worldwide groups hinting about every website I surf to and why would you be doing it in other unless you aren't trying to make someone look like a violent paranoid schizo and then I don't like it can you stop you're imagining it and you better accept what's going on it's going to get a lot worse well th- these are all forms of mental raping someone to death and for the only conclusion I can make is someone saying that I supposedly did this to people, right? But there's, there's probably 100,000 different worldwide lies that I'm imagining. Nothing's, nothing's going on. Hey, what's going on? You're imagining it. You suffer a world of paranoia or, or then the, the people that are pretend your, your friends go, I don't see anything or, you know, you're too sensitive. And it's blatantly obvious it's going on worldwide for 47 years. So... I had to find my glasses that flew off from being shocked. Okay, so, um, so 
So punishment for no reason and in, un in unheard of methods. So theoretically the law system would say, the Constitution would say the punishment must meet the crime, not you hugged a girl, you exceeded the four second hug rule, so therefore every day of your life someone's gonna walk up and slice on you, slice you with like a knife or something like that, right? Um, um, the punishment must meet the crime, not, um, I think that you stalked that girl by calling her more than once in a day, so therefore every day of your life, uh, a hundred people are going to walk by and whistle at you for 90 years straight until you, or until they can remove you from society, or, and you know, Lorraine Escobar, like, she'd have these sayings like, he's crazy and he's a stalker because he made my phone blow up, and you're just like, can you go out and get a fucking education, you fucking trailer trash piece of shit, right? Okay, but, um, because nobody needs that fucking five-year-old fucking mentality. Okay, and that's why, you know, they introduced me to Adrian Olivares, it's the same fucking... Uh, moron, fucking, uneducated trash shit that, that um, nobody wants to deal with. Even even the uneducated don't want to deal with it. Okay, so, um, Kevin's breaking the rules and need to be punished, so so you understand the nature behind you read a book and rested your feet on the chair and we're gonna bash your fucking skull on the planet of people. Punishment. It never ends. And you're banned from every place in the world. I mean, how does that one even correlate? With worldwide mental bludgeonings that start at five years old, well my father tries to make it looked like I conformed to media. So, technically, the media tactic was first. Didn't see district hopping. This is, this is a... I just thought about this last week. District hopping. And I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think... I think that... See, Charles Sean didn't see... Now works in Topanga Division, right? And I'm not 100% sure, but I think he was working in District 12, uh, like Devonshire area, when I worked at my father's office. Uh, that'd be Reseda. And he might have been working in that district. Because my father is working with Elsie Sandoval and many others who I think were friends with police officers, and I think my father was friends with police officers, and, you know, these setups and frame jobs and kill Kevin at all costs. So, so, um... So... I think, but I'm not sure, I think that, that Dinsey might be district hopping, and we like, what's district hopping? Well, it's a little term I came up with here, uh, if a if a cop is stalking you, and you live in one district or you work in one district, and he can't get gets what he wants with his obsession and hate, then he's gonna hop to the next district where you move, right? So he's gonna district hop, right? So I guess it's more food for thought, but but Dinsey might be district hopping wherever I go. Okay, but theoretically he could just notify the next district and say, make up their lies. Kevin's a public nuisance and a troublemaker and uh, help me rid him of the world, right? So, because this is worldwide, but it was an interesting thing I wrote, district hopping, because, you know, I mean, that's the level here of what they're doing is they're district hopping until I'm dead and gone since five years old. Okay, so... Oh. 
Robin. Ron Perlin, 2005, people, oh, 2005 or maybe around that time, my father says, people are afraid of you, saying what he needs to say to get what he wants, since I was five years old with these worldwide child rapist, Jew kill, race, rapist, mental rapist armies, or Whatever. So I was like, okay, so I'm. Let's let's think about the timeline here. Okay, you're talking to someone who has literally been the nicest motherfucker to everyone on the planet, and not just the nicest person, but like not chumpy nice. Like I've had a, mom, a few moments of imperfection here, or you know, just just going chumpy, but but very rare, seldomly rare. Okay, so. So you're talking not chumpy but extremely friendly person and good common sense and avoiding all the traps like example, hey come over to my house, the door's open and finding out in Colorado, Denver that, that the girl's trying to set me up to make it look like I'm breaking and entering in some black guy's house and of course the, I knock on the door and the black guy's like, I'm like is so and so here? There's nobody here by that. Oh shit, sorry, you know, some girl's trying to lead me down. Okay, right? So so not not like stupid idiot, chumpy, but but just a really good person, okay? And um and um But my family need to cover that up with their hundred thousand lies and you're just confusing. Okay, so so um so Mike Huntley Okay, we, we pay off Brody Morales to take you to strip clubs. We're trying to plant trash bag full of marijuana in your house. They can't set me up. Mike Huntley even says in 2001 something like, I, I can't set you up. or something. He's angry that he can't set me up. And he says something like that. Okay, and then things really get bad. The Brody Morales death threats, like, um, it's going to get a thousand times worse for you. And I don't remember. <coughs> and... I can recall being in Honolulu and, um, uh, shit, what's the tourist Hawaii Island, um, fuck, Maui, I think, I think it was in Maui and then Honolulu, and I'm watching a stranger just going ballistic, I'm going, I, I don't, am I seeing this, because how would they know me, and, and, um, just, just like, what the fuck am I seeing, okay, but, but, um, what was the topic? Um, so, fuck. people are afraid of you. Okay, so 2004, so 2001 to 2004, something like that, I'm just sort of dazed and confused, right? I'm like, there's a planet trying to kill me, am I really seeing it? I'm seeing it, but I don't understand what I'm seeing. I'm having a hard time believing what I'm seeing because it's so un unfathomably unheard of, the methods and that nobody's having honest conversations like your Kevin Perlman and just, just, you know, like 100 people per day walking by whistling and shit that doesn't make any sense, right? Kind of like like that, that shock collar on a dog, <laughs> right? You're just like, you're like, the dog doesn't know why it's being shocked, okay? It doesn't know why it's getting pulsating electricity, whether it's harmful shocks or not, right? It doesn't know. It just knows that, that at random moments, electricity is flowing through it, right? Okay, now, my father's thinking like a Skinner box, right? He's thinking like P.F. Skinner. Is it P.F. Skinner? I can't remember. And, um, or maybe P.F. Skinner was the conditioning based on food. I don't remember. But there's one of the 
the psychiatrist that, that tried to it's in the psychology books, whatever. They tried to teach animal behavior by shocking. Okay. Um, you know, reward and punishment. Reward and punishment. Okay. So, um, so, if the dog veers towards the kitchen, is the dog going to know that, <laughs> right? Is it going to know that this electricity is about a kitchen? Or is it just going to go, I don't fucking understand, right? Hence why Rhoda's out biting fucking people because the dog's being abused by a sick fuck father, right? Okay, so so why the dog went from like nice to okay, like um, so Kevin, people are afraid of you. So 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 finally he has Lorraine Escobar hire me to do their computer networks. Why was Tim Thompson's server still there? That's sort of a good question. Why did Tim Thompson leave his servers there? Um, and he moved back to fucking Colorado, too. So, like, my job's done, right? I'm going to move back to Colorado with Steve McPike or what? Okay, so... Um, well, you built it all websites, didn't you? Kevin, let's build it all websites. Well, you built it all websites, didn't you? And he sent in Tracy Anna Koval after me and tried to set me out with their little Gene Simmons sicko shit. Okay, so... And many others that I built websites for, right? Okay, so... But Kevin, you're a fraud, and, and you... Yeah, right. Okay, those are all cover-ups. Okay, so, um... And it's your marketing. Yeah, right. Okay, this is not about marketing. It's about fucking government flag and kill operations. Okay, so... Um... So at one point in my father's office where... The very first minute, obviously, of getting hired, my father says, you can work into... You can work in the same room with Denise, and Denise is, like, throwing mental rocks at me left and right. And I'm thinking, like, I don't understand. And she has a scared look on her face, like I pumped her dog with my dick 50 times, too. Kind of like that Alexis Moore look at the L.A. Rhino. Okay, but it's the things I say, like, um, um, in 1995, Rose of the Red, Violets of Blue, uh, I'm schizophrenic, I'm schizophrenic, and so am I. Right, like the quote from the movie, What About Bob, or whatever. Okay, or unless things are being stated that I said that I didn't say, right? Okay, so... So who fucking knows? But, but, um... But the, the consensus here is that if I say hi, people are going to fucking pull out a fucking machete and start trying to chop my arms and legs off because they're, they're afraid of the word hi. Or is it afraid? Are they afraid of the word "high"? Or is it lack of eyebrow hair? Okay, let's be realistic here. Okay, so my father says at one point people are afraid of you, and I'm like trying to process this. Okay, so so there's a plan of people trying to kill me for me being as nice as possible, and they're afraid of me. Well, that doesn't that doesn't click with me. Okay, you see that guy over there walking down the street with a flaming sword, um, with foam coming out of his mouth? Um, I'm afraid of him, so we should all get together and walk by and whistle at him. A hundred times per day. Or better yet, I'm afraid of him, so I'm going to start throwing rocks at his head. Well, if I'm afraid of him, I'm going to stay clear of him. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be around the guy I'm afraid of. Yeah, I don't, I don't run up to the guy I'm afraid of, and... I'm afraid of that lion over there. So I'm going to go, go... I'm going to run up to it, and I'm going to keep punching it in the nose. Okay, so... So, the first minute of being hired at my father come the mental illness, the provokings, and the harassments, and the sitting in Denise's room, and the only correlation I can come up with in my brain is that my father is making up his lie in the 80s I stole ten thousand dollars from him because he's mad at me for for working on cars and buying a four twenty six Hemi. And Denise was the accountant, like the the secretary and involved of the financials, I believe. And there's probably something they're trying to cover up, right? Even though there would be no the only financials that Denise would have of me is my father paying me for working at his at his company. 
So, but I can't tell you anything specific other than, so Denise is afraid of me, so she has to kill me with the rest of the office. Does that, does that make sense? Did it? Well, once again, I'm afraid of the guy with the fucking swing and the flaming sword. Do I hunt him and kill him, or do I say I don't want any part of him? Like, you know what I'm saying? So if people are afraid of me, that's why they're hunting me to kill me with an entire planet. Does that, does that make sense? Or does that, okay, so people are afraid of you while they're laughing and snickering and throwing rocks at my head, right? Okay, so we're back to the original question. What's going on? And why would my father not only witness all this, but but orchestrate it? Okay, what, what was his anger about? Well, people are afraid of you because when you were 14, you bought a weight bench and jo- went out jogging? I mean, so you, so you must be the Incredible Hulk? I mean, I don't fucking know because... Because there's no level of stupidity. Nobody's nobody. No, but he's that stupid, right? I mean, it's not possible to be that stupid. Okay, so um, and if you are that stupid, you're probably extremely dangerous. Okay, but it would be one single entity, not a planet, correct? So, so then, what's it about? Okay, well, maybe the only reason they're afraid is because they're they're afraid of the word trichotillomania. I, I mean, I don't know, right? Okay. But then, but then, is it about Cold Trickle? Is it about Cold Trickle and Days of Our Thunder? Or Days of Thunder? Cold Trickle and Days of Thunder? Or is it about Trickle Till Mania? What an interesting name for a Hollywood character that likes cars. Very interesting name. Okay, so, um, it's so interesting that Darren Moselle, writing for Hollywood, Jason's friend, might be interested in that. Okay, so, um... Okay, so Jason Perlman, me and my friends are going to force you into a mental facility and we're listening to everything you do on the radio and we have Debbie Woolman, Courtroom 101. Wait, what do court reporters do? They... they collect conversations. They collect conversations, correct? And you know there's audio surveillance adjoining that wall and probably a lot more, correct? Because nobody's ever lived in that place for 26 years and I just found some data last night that Mike Huntley's Going Vertical Corporation is associated with that property on changing shady illegal shit. Okay, so, and then to the left, we had the fake Brazers place in, must have been 15 or 15 or 19, I'm not sure. With a, with a bullshit Camaro and, okay, so, and, and Nikki Delano, what was it? Oh, the grass is greener and, okay, so, um, on the other side and you're, you're not allowed on our side and all those mental illness tactics. Okay, so. Sister topping. Okay, I think I'm going to go through this topic and I'm getting tired here. Um, I'm getting pretty close to home anyways. Um, I'm out of water. And it's 1.47 a.m. Um... John Paul Naranjo, working with Starbucks and police to try to silence me about their murder operations and attempts on my life. So John Paul Naranjo. Now, it's interesting because the last two arrests, the, this arrest and the arrest before it were associated with me making saying something about his crimes against me and with coffee shops. So... Two thousand and one, or no, more like two thousand and three or four. Um, first, it's world of paranoia. Noticing a planet, people try to torture and kill me. Um, I start trying to do, do, go out and do new and different things. I start going to coffee shops and relax. 
but I'm not, it's the worldwide no relaxing for you nigger with the black people and all sorts of things. The highest aggression rate at the coffee shops are the black employees. It's all employees, but the highest aggression rate is the black employees. So, so Kevin kissed the black girl at eight, Kevin needs to die. Um, I even recall an event at University of Colorado at the restaurant, that's the sink, with a black employee crying wolf, pretending I did something to her. Well, where are they coming from? I mean, I mean, why is it random black person, black girl after black girl my entire life, wherever I am? And I don't know these people, okay? They're just random, kill, kill the Jew at all costs. Um, just you're trying to be nice and it just he, he raped me or he this or he that or he... Okay, right? And, and it just instantly goes worldwide. Well, but why does it instantly go worldwide? We're missing something here, right? They're systems designed to kill. They're government kill systems. And there is no doubt that the system started with NSA tools. FBI, NSA, psychological warfare and kill tools. And the minute it goes worldwide is 1994 when Jason Perlman wants me to see the internet so badly. Well, I'm at University of Colorado. And um, the internet was originally a military system. It wasn't a private sector thing. Okay, so um, so you can assume, based on my life, that there are psychological, there are tools with NSA to kill, based on psychological warfare with the psychology community. Well, Kevin, you know, you're, you're spouting conspiracy theories. Well, I'm a victim of it. And, and these things aren't a theory. They're doing it. And we all know they're doing it because you're all taking part. But you don't seem to know why you're doing it other than Kevin's a bad guy, right? I mean, they're telling you something and you're helping. But you don't realize that they're feeding you propaganda. So I can't... I can't comprehend why there's a planet that wants me dead for no reason, but there is. Okay, so even if it's for something as stupid as lack of eyebrow hair, but that's where it starts, correct? Uh, the insecurities and the fear and the for things that's the stupidest things on a man. Okay, so so. So John Paul Nerano, so Starbucks works on me for a good 15 years. Not just Starbucks, every every local, every coffee shop worldwide. But it starts, the first coffee shop I went to was the Starbucks on Topanga and Ventura. And um, just walking in, the rocks are being thrown, trying to sit down, people are walking by whistling. The clothing color groups are showing up, the cars parking in patterns, you name it. Things are still going on every day today, every day as we talk. And I believe it escalates for about 15 years. There's people coming in like with these angry faces like we just can't get rid of you. And you're like, well, is someone going to tell me what the fuck's going on already? Right? And then I go out. I remember I'm going to Alex Lazar for some psych, get some therapy, however. I'm sort of like okay, you know what, you say that I should do this, and I'm going to do it to see what happens, how, how do you say that, like, I'm going to, I'm going to humor you, wait, does that, I'm going to humor, I'm going to humor you, and I'm going to do this for you, because I don't need the therapy, but I'm going to do it for you, because it's almost like blackmail demands, it is blackmail demands, but, but nothing's going to make them happy, because it's really about killing a five-year-old Jew, and, And um, and the more and the more healthy I am, and the more outgoing, the angrier they get, right? So when, once these eyebrows are grown back in a couple of weeks, they're going to be angrier. They're going to be angrier than before. And you say that doesn't make sense. I thought you wanted me to be healthy. I thought you wanted me to have a normal and good life. But but you're angry. That the the more I accomplish, the angrier my family with worldwide groups get. It doesn't make any sense. They're just kill the five year old fucking Jew at all costs with it because of the lack of some hair or something. Okay, so, but it's about mental illness. Yeah, it's about trying to create mental illness to eradicate. Okay, so, 
So, um, and it's not because someone thinks differently or is wired differently or this and that. The, there, these are government, blatantly obvious. Oh wait. These are blatantly obvious. Is this mic working? These are blatantly obvious fucking kill operations, okay? There's there's no solution because... Okay, so... So, they, they are frustrated that I'm still going to coffee shops. And I'm not talking a singular... Sean Dinsey is notorious for taking a worldwide operation and trying to make it a singular. Well, why do you keep going back to the restaurant if it's if they don't like you? It's every restaurant worldwide that doesn't like me. Of strangers, I don't know. Kevin, nothing's going on here. Oh, yeah, so why was I sitting in front of the courthouse Friday and a bus drives by, double horn honk, so with the, the, the two horn honking tactic, and then it gives me a peace sign... He doesn't know me? Of course he knows me. And if that bus driver, that random fucking bus driver knows me, then everyone worldwide knows me. So you can't say nothing's going on. You just don't want to explain what's going on. You want to bury the fucking victim. Okay, so... Like that movie, uh, The Look in Their Eyes, right? Okay, where they, they... Someone takes the law in their own hands and they put an innocent guy down in their basement lock him in a cage for like 30 or 40 years and he's all like a fucking all fucked up and you know like and they're like, and like what do we do the, we just found the missing guy and and you know the the police officer or friend of the police who I don't, I don't remember the movie but but whoever was associated with law enforcement or it probably was a police officer and they like filed the guy down in the fucking basement and he, in isolation for like 30 years because he thought the guy did this and he didn't do anything, right? Okay, so so like, it's kind of like that, right? It's like, and then, you know, well, everyone, all the cops are trying to cover it up, right? They're trying to cover up their crimes for taking the law in their own hands and destroying, doing horrible, unspeakable things to this guy and like... I think in the end they just shoot the guy because he's so, like, like, like he's no longer human, right? He's, he's just like, he's like, he's been in isolation and, and for so long and in a small little room that he no longer functions as a person. Okay, so, like, so they just shoot him because, because they got to put him out of his misery because it's like, okay, right, it's, some, it's something like on that level, right? Okay, but, but so anyways, so... So the Starbucks that's paying an adventure, they have a kid there working, and he says, it's your transgressions, his name was Garrett, taking the law in his own hands with a worldwide murder operation. But it didn't start with Garrett, okay? It started with whoever started with when I was five years old, my father. Okay, so... And even that I was 29, or I was probably 32 or something, Garrett was probably only 18, so he's too young to have any factual evidence about anything, correct? Not that he would anyways. And, um... But yet, a plan of people are told that I did something that, that isn't true, or they're taking scenarios or situations out of context, and these scenarios are being intentionally created, correct? Every day I go to my house, every day I get proof of worldwide groups provoking me, I go to the police, the police lie to my face, nothing's going on, they're trying to get reactions and collect them, and then say, look what Kevin did, and we gotta lock him away, and that's been going on since five years old. So John Paul Naranjo is told to, you know, we're gonna teach Kevin a lesson because he's still going to coffee shops. So, so, so I buy a coffee, I'm sitting down, and I, and, um, I'm extremely frustrated after like 15 years of minute by minute rocks being thrown in my head and they're trying to slam papers with lies on it saying I need to sign this and because you didn't admit to these false allegations you're not allowed here and whatever and I think I started walking away and I threw a little water on him to cool him off and then he turned around with like seven punches in the back of the head and he was paid off to try to bash my skull. And I can tell you that right now. And because who demands, 
who demands false confessions from people or you're not allowed here? Okay? Hey, sign this stating you did this or you're not allowed here. Well, if I sign the lies, then I'm saying I did do it, then they're going to say you're not allowed here, correct? So, why would you, if you're adamant, if you're adamant that someone did something, you don't try to trick them into a signature, right? Like, you understand what I'm saying? Why would you trick me into signing something that isn't true and then tell me... Okay, right? So I throw a little water on him, some harmless water, and I walk away and he punches me seven times in the back of the head, and he was, he was going for the to kill and try to cover it up with a lame excuse. You know, he attacked me or whatever. And... Um, I was, I was lucky enough to stop him. And I guarantee nobody was going to stop anything until I I turned it around and, and however you want to say it, disarmed him or stopped him or... Okay. And then they're mad at me and then of course nobody wants to be honest and come forward about the situation because it's all about a planetary murder operation. But more importantly, I'm not allowed to talk about it. Why would I not be allowed to talk about this and newer and newer arrests happen when I mention his name and what he did and is involved in, especially with the coffee shops worldwide. And um, so that was John Paul Naranjo of Boys and Associates Security. But ironically, in the beginning, around 2000, Paul Humphrey said that for me at 14, younger brother of Joe Humphrey, who at one point worked for LAPD trying to set me up and frame me with Jen Hess they sent after me and Lisa Marie they sent after me um, and a lot of others uh, working with that girl from an internet related chat honey um, getting private convert all sorts of weird shit freaky shit and um, so interesting John Paul Naranjo Paul Humphrey um, and um, so they don't want to be sued but really it's attempted murder because um, the ongoing worldwide murder operations and the physical attacks and, and mental illness bludgeonings all day and and so if, if I mention his name that's when LAPD go crazy and start with the arrest right but um, so they don't want that coming out now oh shit oh so the next so the next thing you're going to ask is well was he a security company of Starbucks well, no, he wasn't. He was a property security guard that Starbucks was sort of like, hey, come here and, you know, beat the shit out of this guy if he comes in here because we don't like his kind and he keeps coming back. But, however, the problem isn't a singular entity. It's an entire planet. I've been told I'm not allowed at any coffee shop worldwide. Not just told, but, but attacked. Okay, I'm not allowed at any coffee shop worldwide, restaurant worldwide, gas station worldwide, uh, pool hall worldwide, college worldwide. Um, you name it, any public place worldwide, there's worldwide mental bludgeonings to torture me and kill me. Well, am I not allowed, why would I not allowed to be saying anything about that? Um, the camera's still videoing, but the app's freaking out on the phone. Okay, we're that's okay. We're at the end of the topic. I'm I'm exhausted and it's 2 a.m. and I'm about to get home and I still got another fucking page and a half here. Um, and um, but the correlation between the arrest and John Paul Narano, security guard of Boys and Associates Security, is extremely. That's one of the huge things they're trying to cover up. Because the only thing that this is about is your kind's not allowed to leave his house or go anywhere. So, so if you go to a coffee shop where a white group tells you to kill you with a no relaxing for you nigger, but nothing's about anything. Just your kind's not allowed to exist. Now, what is it the people are being told? Well, I'm not allowed to know. Okay, right? And, and 
And that, that doesn't make sense. That there's a planet with 100,000 lies, and I'm not allowed to have a counter-argument, and what's the form of... What's, what's the form of technology being used to blast 100,000 lies to an entire planet in secret? Non-stop since five years old. It wasn't planetary until 94, but it was community. It was community and citywide up until 94. Like, uh, like... Let's say growing up, it was all of Calabasas and Woodland Hills and Canoga Park before we have internet and things like that, right? And then as you get older, the technology gets better and they, they can blast out the lies to, to a lot larger and larger circles about me. And then pretty soon, every person on the planet has a rap sheet of fiction. Well, Kevin did these 100,000 things that not one of them's fucking true. And it wouldn't matter if one of them was true. Um... All designed to do what? Hunt and kill a five-year-old Jew with lack of eyebrows, okay? So, or technically, if I want to be specific, the eyebrows started around the age 12 to 13. But you can see why, correct? Because if you kiss a black girl and your father's hunting you to kill you with mental illness tactics or all the things that were going on in high school and middle school and elementary school and... And, um... They want me to have a good, decent, healthy life by launching worldwide campaigns to kill me and stop me from being healthy. Okay, so you keep going to the gym and you went to the gym four days a week and you have OCD because you go to the gym gym four days a week. And what gets weirder is the people that go to the gym seven days a week are mad at the guy who goes to the gym four days a week saying you have OCD and you're crazy. Well, does that make sense? Or are they saying it because they want to kill the fucking Jew or something else, right? Okay, they're just, but what's it about? Well, Kevin, you can't just accept the worldwide murder operations. You'll go crazy if you ask why. Um, well, I think you'll go crazy no matter what, right? Because, okay, I'm going to go out and live my life. Now there's a plan of people trying to kill me for going out and living my life. What's going on? Don't ask why. Well, why would you tell me not to ask why? Because they won't stop. And then you try to get away from it, and they start up again, and then they go, why won't they just fucking stop? Stop already. Okay, and then you'll learn to accept the blows, learn to accept the torture, and the mental illness tactics. Well, you're imagining it, so you're a tortured individual, so we got to force you into a mental facility. But it's not about mental illness. There's no mental illness. There's, there's, there was no mental illness, so to speak, until in front of a guy saying you're a dead man and we're all paranoia. So, so it's obviously not about mental illness. It's about anger and hate for a five-year-old Jew, and the more they are doing and the more I find out the more they want me the more they want me dead example the last two arrests have been when I mentioned John Paul Naranjo's name and well you don't talk we fucking kill you okay we're gonna lock you away we're gonna rid you of the world okay you can't talk so so now you can take that all the way down to nine years old or five years old Okay, my father starting in with the movie Wizards by Ralph Bakshi, 1977. Then going to the next movie, then the next movie, then the next movie that Jason and friends told to show me like 100,000 horror movies and say Kevin's crazy, conforms to media. And then the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. And the more things they do, the more I know, and the more I know, and the more I talk, and the more I talk, the more they say you don't talk or we fucking kill you. And it exponentially grows out on a worldwide forest fire that we're going to kill you and you don't talk or we kill you. But there's a common denominator, and that common denominator is that you don't have a right to live or breathe, and we're going to hunt you and kill you. And then you better accept what's going on with our worldwide no relaxing for you nigger campaign, and then somehow it's supposed to be about mental illness. But it's not. It's about killing someone and getting away with it. Or eradication, or whatever. It's, It's the same as what Adolf Hitler does, okay? To force, to take good people and put them into to um, concentration camps or kill them, okay? Because they're the inferior race. And at the moment, we have an extreme aggression rate that appears from some Jewish some Jewish people with their bullshit of how I'm anti-Semitic because I kissed a black girl when I was eight years old. Well, what does kissing a black girl have to do with religion? Nothing. There's no. There might be a Jewish father saying, I don't accept it, but it has nothing to do with religion, okay? So, so I think that's it. I'm exhausted. Um, 
Oh, I might continue this on Saturday. I'm not sure what day. And I'm gonna go home and get home and get a little rest. Oh, um. And Idaho. Idaho. Okay, so, anyways, alrighty. Okay, so I'm going to continue uh, this video blog, I guess you call it. We're on day three or whatever. Um, I got a little wine. Drink from thy lips. I got a little coffee. We're now committing multiple crimes, according to LAPD. Who's ever paying off LAPD with their world? Why, let's make the guy look crazy and try to eradicate him for going out and living his life. Technically, that would be two secret rules that I have violated. Uh, that um, So I was looking at the mess, the mess there, the, the wait. The mess over there. Okay, so um, so let's let's continue here. I usually am driving because I get good exposure, and um, I'm also mic juggling. I don't know why this thing isn't in stereo here, but um, testing. Okay, so I'm going through mic after mic. I was using some wireless ones. I found a good wireless one. Um, however, the battery dies in it, and then you're you're. Oops, left with your thumb up your butt because um, um, if the battery dies, then you're just talking for hours and hours and um, what do you do, right? You recorded a video but no audio. Okay, so anyways, this is, so I'm going back to old school here and this is a old fashioned the cabled one okay so it's not that good though because it's not amplified here so um but we'll see it's not it probably not isn't bad but it's not great okay so whatever so that's you know you know this isn't a production piece here this is a self-defense piece against the planet of child raping sickos you don't think that what they've been doing for 47 years is wrong okay so today lots of today going out lots of sort of smirky jokey like, ha-ha, we're making a fool out of the guy type thing. Maybe it's like, you know, he's talking about his eyebrows. and But the reality of the situation is that sort of the the reverse psychology is that that why this isn't that bad. It's infinitesimal. And also, look, I'm scruffy. I'm scruffy looking. So, you know, I didn't shave. But these are all things that they're, they're, there's worldwide stalking, a worldwide conspiring or conspiracy to commit murder or eradicate over. They're, they're um, infinitesimal, uh, trivial things that don't matter. Okay, so so they're laughing and smirking like we're making him talk about his eyebrows or we're making a fool out of him. Or, But the reality of the situation is whether they want to laugh or not it shows who they really are. It, there's a bunch of child raping bullies that have now destroyed 47 years and launched a worldwide minute by minute rock throwing operation uh, to mentally bludgeon someone's skull without physically touching them. And they're laughing like, ha ha, look, we did, look what we've done to you now. And so who's the good guy and who's the bad guy? And remember that once we're coming down to Charles Sean Dincy and the judicial system and my family, they're they're hunting and bullying and trying to torture and kill over things that are so insignificant instead of saying this is wrong okay so what has humanity come to okay now i'm not necessarily speaking out for humanity i'm speaking out for me however it does affect us all and if you can't see that then you're you're just the stupidest moron known to man okay because nobody's that stupid okay or you're just a sick piece of shit right and that's sort of the bottom line is that is that, hey, doesn't this shirt look weird when it's not fully buttoned? Okay, so, so, um, those are the things that, you know, who fucking cares, and we're destroying this guy, we're actively hunting with a planet, this guy over, um, and 
Those are the real excuses. There's no, well, they try to cover it up. Kevin's a public nuisance, and Kevin's this, and Kevin's that, and Kevin supposedly did this, and Kevin supposedly did that, all fiction, or things that are so insignificant that nobody would care. So so when LAPD and one of my groups are data mining every aspect of my life to try to justify what they're doing, that's the problem. There is no other problem. They're They're violating constitutional laws and privacy laws to try to torture eradicate or whatever okay so uh so here so where was i here hey i printed this it's 16 point fonts so my eyes don't okay um so that's what lapd is involved in okay so where was i though okay john paul naranjo see we went from four pages to eight pages because i Print it bigger. Okay, so okay, rules are meant to be broken. I'm just jumping back here. Uh, that was a joke I've said now and then, and everyone says it. And they're you, they're putting the weight of the world because it's like, hey, you you go jaywalking, right? And you're like, hey, you're not supposed to do that. And you're like, ah, rules are meant to be j broken, right? And it's like. Because nobody cares. You're not talking about robbing a bank or putting bullets in people's fucking heads or anything like that. Uh, speaking of which, we should do more of a, a profile shot, right? Or more like a three-quarter angle. Or you want high-key or low-key lighting. Oh, hey, you know exactly what I'm talking about with a plan of people trying to fucking rid me of the world over reading photography books, right? Okay, so... Um, okay, so... Rules are meant to be broken, harmless joke, how does it go worldwide, and a literal, as a crime, you think differently, because everyone else are, law all, the, all the worldwide child rapists hunting me to kill me, they're all law-abiding citizens. Well, vigilante is, like, up there on, like, some of the highest crimes known to man, okay? So, um, so... So they're not. Okay, they're hypocrites. They're liars. And over harmless things like t-shirts. Okay, I don't like your t-shirt in 91. You're making me hunt you to kill you with plans to people. Oh, I also want to note, I did post a video of all my neighbors and like the car DVRs and the the house cameras or the, the cameras on the sidewalks. And see, the difference between me and them is I put up the cameras in self-defense. Okay. People keep doing shit, and I keep getting proof. They're provoking trying to set up and frame. So, two blue Priuses, two red Priuses, two red pickups. Pickups across from each other, this, that. So, they're trying to get reactions. Oh, but we also, we got, we got a camera in case that pesky public nuisance Kevin Perlman does something in self-defense. Oh. Then your cameras aren't there for security. Your cameras there are to set someone up and try, try to try to frame them and lock them away. Correct. So now I've been I have 15 years of this going to the police station over and over. Look what's going on, and they just look the other way. Okay, they just your and, and usually it's with the provoking, the mental illness provoking, the verbal provoking tactics, and a lot of other things with people with the worldwide community working with them. So what's it about? Okay, if they're they're threatening my life over and over with the with a plan of people and hunting me. Since five years old, what's it really about? It's about eyebrow hair and trying to use that as, you know, it's a compulsion, therefore he's dangerous, okay? Or if they don't see the eyebrows, he's dangerous and we don't know what he'll do like it's the end of the world, correct? Okay, so, so that's what everything's really about. It's mental illness labeling and riling up the masses worldwide to eradicate or kill. Kill conspiracy to commit murder or eradicate um, some of the imaginary rules I've broken, so, so we have people going, uh, well, you broke the rules. The rules. Are you, are you hinting about the movie John Wick or The Matrix? Or Because most of these things are actually coming from movies to try to make it look like I, I conform to media. But however, what, is, what are they trying to achieve? What, are, what is their goal here on a planetary operation minute by minute for 47 years, getting really bad in 2001, world of paranoia, and you're a dead man, and have a good life now, and give you enough rope to hang yourself. What is it they're trying to do? Because they won't stop for 47 years. Take a human entity and 
put him in a cage, or a mental facility, or jail cell, or, or kill him, or figure out how to get him to blow his brains out, or keel over and die from the abuse, okay, from the mental blows over and over all day and night, 24-7. Okay, that's what it's about. It's not about, it's not about curing mental illness. It's about creating the appearance of mental illness to exterminate. Okay, so Adolf Hitler's next generation of warfare. Okay, did the black community seem to support so well, which is pretty freaky. Okay, so, um, and really everyone, but it, it always predominantly starts from the black community and, and outwards, right? Okay, so, um, and it's funny, it's a joke, because it's not them. It's not them. They can keep punching the guy in the head over and over all day and night and watch it like a movie, right, with their worldwide internet kill tools and propaganda channels built around me. Okay, um, that are in, that are pretty much real time, or they can di uh, disseminate disinformation worldwide instantly. But you know, with, with those resources, can't they just tell the truth? Yes, but guess what? They don't want to. They don't want to. They want to keep it covered up. Their murder operations covered up until they get what they want, and then go out and pretend that they didn't do anything, right? Okay, so uh, sarcasm, illegal crime. Uh, imaginary Jew kill rules Kevin Perlman has broken. They always ask me, what, how do you spell your last name like it's like I've done something to them? P-E-R-E-L-M-A-N. Did I, did I do something to them? It's spelled the Jewish way, you know. Um, is it about pearls? Clams and pearls or oysters and pearls? No, it's about the way my name through the family tree in the, Jew, the Jewish name, Perlman, is and so you how do you how can you even try to make that into something it's just obnoxious okay so but they do they try to work on every possible angle or method since five years old but they're not mad at my family for having the same name okay um okay sarcasm is a legal crime no one would ever do it imagine a juco rules kevin's kind isn't allowed to take walks talk to women talk to people kevin's kind isn't allowed to get into photography you're not allowed to walk around your townhouse complex or use any of the other gates. You're only allowed to use one gate closest to your entrance. Or city guard will be paid to follow you around. We're destroying all your cars with all the auto shops worldwide. And things like this that are completely unheard of. Okay, the, the resources behind it are so unheard of. You're not allowed to use your pool, jacuzzi, because it's on the opposite side of the tunnel. There's a little tunnel over here to 17, where court reporter Debbie Woolman's property is adjoining my wall, and nobody's ever lived in it for 26 years. You can do the math. There's probably audio surveillance or computer hacking tools, possibly even splitting off the spectrum. Um, oh. The spectrum. Damn it. The spectrum um, uh, cable, the internet cable connection over for hacking tools into that facilities, you name it. There's all sorts of, I mean, why, why, I mean, what are the chances court reporter Debbie Woolman is owning the property where they're trying to collect any possible aspect of my life to twist and contort out of context and use against me? Um, you do the math on that one. And Jay Pilchick, Jennifer Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Pilchick Perlman, Jason Perlman's wife, who lost against Debbie Schultz, Debbie Wasserman Schultz in 2020 for Congress, just happens to be a court reporter of Florida. I mean, do the math on that one here. That how the linked judicial events and paid off cops like Sean Dincy and Jensen and Officer Henderson and, and Detective Shapiro, Detective Angela Stewart and so many others, although and their predecessors all the way down to a very young age, probably five years old, Kevin better be a good slave or we'll whip him to death and the whippings technically have not stopped in 47 years, but it gets really bad at 2001, World of Paranoia and You're a Dead Man, Have a Good Life, You'd Better Live a Careful Life or We're Gonna Whip You to Death. Even if you yawn incorrectly, we're going to whip you to death. So we're just going to whip you to death, correct? Okay, so um, you're not allowed to take walks. You're, down with, you're not allowed to use a pool jacuzzi because it's on the other side of the tunnel there, right? And then it'll switch to there. You're not allowed to walk that way out of that gate where the, I guess you call it the hotel side is. But it's all the same complex, okay? We have two physical addresses. 
we have 21650 and 21620, but it's the same exact property. We all share the same resources. The HOA fees pay for everything, and they're trying to play a half-truth game like they always do or out-of-context game. The Kevin's not allowed on our side. You don't live here. Well, I mean, if you want to take things out of context, right? But I do live here, and I li lived here for 26 years, and my money pays for the entire place. My HOA fees pay for the entire place, and their story switches. Well, you can't use the pool over there as, as opposed to the hotel side over there, uh, but it's all one property. It's actually a very small property. So LAPD is also trying to cover that up and make things what they aren't and things like this, okay? Um and then it'll switch to the next thing. You stole a car, and then it'll switch to the next thing. We're going to try to make you look like drug dealers, as, as I explained with Rody Morales, paid off by LAPD to try to plant a trash bag full of LAPD marijuana in my house. Um, and it's been changing daily since for 47 years. Okay, you're not allowed to use, you're not allowed at any park bench or anywhere else for more than five minutes with the no relaxing for you nigger death threats and camp campaign. Okay, that's where that starts. Okay, so these are some of the imaginary rules I've broken. And you're gonna say there's those aren't those aren't that's just people pulling shit out of their ass. Like you're you're not allowed to I have a, I have a rule, you're not allowed to eat food for ten months straight. You violated the rule. Okay, well did I agree to these rules or or do you just walk around saying Hint, hint, you're not allowed to do this, and we're going to kill you because, hint, hint, you know what you did. You violated the rule. Well, there's nothing I did, but make it the age 29, world paranoia, you're a dead man. Okay, so you're only allowed to own one car. However, it's sort of like you're not allowed to drive at all, right? Because Sean Dinsey, um, if you went 56 in a 55 40 years ago, he's hunting you with every resource to kill you or with his predecessors. doesn't make any sense. Um, you're not allowed to leave the house going or go anywhere but working back. Well, nobody's going to agree to these imaginary rules. Uh, Kevin is allowed to supermarkets to restaurants worldwide. Okay, well, then how would I eat? Oh, well, Kevin's agoraphobic and he's getting sick. That would be the cover up, and we got to force him into a mental facility, right? Force him into. A mental facility because he's not out eating right well but if you're gonna try to stop someone from eating then it's not mental illness it's it's trying to terrorize someone to death until you can rid him of the world correct it's, it's a extermination operation okay um, Kevin's kind of allowed in pool halls because pool halls are supposedly shady places because uh, the people stalking and hunting me um, have observed my reckless behavior at pool halls because they watched the, hus the movie The Hustler, Color of Money, and they think that that's reality, right? Okay, um, and it's your fault for being around shady people, and you're, you're just like, I don't even know what to say because you're, you're so ignorant and fucking uneducated and stupid that, and that's fine provided you keep it to yourself and you don't pay off cops to hunt me and have me killed, right? Okay, so... Um, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so Kevin's kind of allowed to get college degrees. Okay, so why would you be mad at me for Kevin? You're not conforming to society and giving back. Well, I am. As a matter of fact, I'm at the forefront of providing for society and giving back. It's just you can't do anything with a planet of people trying to kill you for going out and living your life. Correct. Okay, um, and that was, a, what was that musician sent after me by do Dr. Alex Lazar? I have it written down somewhere. Um, the guy telling me he had a friend who's a psychic that could... He's talking about Larry King. Oh, is it Larry King? No, Larry David. Larry David show. LOL, lots of laughs. Oh, yeah, that's a site. That's a whole different topic. But uh, Greg, I don't remember his name. Okay, so, so him sent after me. Um... With psychiatrists who just don't think this is wrong, can they can stop at any point? Uh, Kevin's guy isn't allowed to get jobs, start companies, make money because they'll come up with all their lame lies. It's your marketing, and it's this, and it's that. Let's keep switching to newer, newer cover-up lies. Okay. Um,
Kevin isn't allowed to tell anyone anything's been done to him or being being or been done. Okay, so so you're a rat, you're a snitch. You don't you don't rat our worldwide wannabe Illuminati child rape and Jew kill operations, government Jew kill child rapist operations out with LAPD or the police worldwide or with NSA FBI resources. We're gonna to try to make it look like world of paranoia. We're gonna to try to make it look like you're a violent paranoid schizo with obsession. Kevin's kind of allowed to date women, have sex, or have friends who aren't their, aren't his jailers or slave owners. While well, having my skull bashed in minute by minute, and my so-called friends like Steve Levinson, I don't see anything. I don't see anything, buddy, 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 man, 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 buddy, 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 alrighty, 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 buddy, 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 man. How many cigars do you smoke per? Week, how many cigars do you smoke per week? How many cigars do you smoke per week? We gotta lock you away because you're a danger to yourself. Okay, um, you know this insane. It's the it's the psychotic murderer trying to cure mental illness when he is, in fact, himself the poster child of what he doesn't like, and he's going after good, sane, rational people with his obsession, tr with his self foreign self. Eh. Self-reinforcing delusions, correct? I'm going to to gra grab a hold of this thing and obsess on it and make it become true in his, in his own mind like everyone else and then spew out the lies to LAPD and everyone else that, you know, see, I, I, I met the guy and, you know, and, and then it'll change up. You know, like, I thought you only smoked cigars here, like it's ritual ritualistic right he'll just switch up and then there's a point where you notice these behaviors that they keep switching and changing till the person gets what he wants and is the obsessed psychotic murderer or is it angular and premeditated okay so but it's always angular and premeditated with an entire planetary conspiracy and that's what we're talking about here okay um Minute by minute since five years old. That's 47 years. Okay, so all my friends were my jailers or slave owners. And there's punishments for anything I do that they don't approve of. Okay, um, you're not allowed to tell me what's going on or being done in your life, obviously. You're not allowed to pick and choose who you want to date or your friends based on surrounding yourself with good, decent people. So, you know, my father trying to force Adrian Olvarez on me which it was a disaster for destruction because of her immature psychotic behaviors and I saw it instantly and then why does he want that type of person in my life because he doesn't really want me out dating or friends or meeting women or making money or he wants me in a jail cell with a jailer whether it's male or female Mike Huntley okay paid off to stalk and hunt and I own you. Okay, Mike Huntley, I want to start a company. We start Signet E-Services for six years. I find out at the end of six years, 2001, he was never there to make money. Okay, he was just wasting my time. Okay, um, okay so no relaxing for you, nigger tactic. Every bug place I go, minute by minute attacks. And if it's quiet and there aren't worldwide things going on, within 25, 30 minutes, people will start showing up with the attacks, the mental illness attacks, which... I noticed 23 years ago, 2001, World of Paranoia, your dead man, Mike Huntley, your past caught up with you for my mother, what past? I didn't say that. My father, you know what you did. What did I do? Well, people could lie. They're not told what they did. So there's no actual argument to these worldwide child raping, Jew kill operations. It's just trying to get coarse false confessions or me to say something about my life that they can say, see, I told you so. Like, make you think it's your fault. Make you think that you deserve what they're doing since five years old, okay? Um, Kevin's out breaking these rules and needs to be punished with worldwide mental bludgeonings that start at five years old while my father tries to make it look like I conform to media. And then we have the tactic here of people trying to be my father. We had Bob's Big Boy, Bob's Big Boy Northridge, a guy named, an El Camino guy named Ron, trying to pretend like he's my father while everyone's bashing my skull in. Now we have Steve Levinson at the Toluca Lake, Bob's big boy, fits the same profile, even worked at Tarzana Medical Center and things with my father as a gastrologist, gastro whatever. And uh, did he know my father? Well, I don't know, but you know, 
Tarzana Medical Center isn't a huge place, and my father worked there for a good problem. I'm guessing a good 20 years, right, doing surgeries. And and those circles aren't huge, uh, orthopedic surgeons. and th Those circles aren't huge, okay? I mean... It's like going. It's like going to Adult Con and uh, Nikki Delano knowing who um, Cindy Starfall is. Okay, I mean they're going to know each other. They're in the same circles. Might have even worked with each other. And and so Steve Levinson and Ron Perlman, who's eighty-two years old, he's right at the same age group as my father who's like 80, 80 or 81, and my father's an orthopedic surgeon who had an office on Ventura Boulevard. At first, it was right next door to, it was Ventura Boulevard and Reseda, and then he moved down the street, and then it finally Northridge. So, in, in the 2005 or maybe 2008, but almost every, you know, most of the surgeries were down at Tarzana, I can't say most, but... A shitload of surgeries were down at Tarzana Medical Center. Probably since I was like five years old or ten years old. You know what I'm saying? So, and they're the same age. And Steve Levinson appears to have worked in Tarzana Medical Center. And then he had an office of Burbank or whatever. And um, unless it's fake information or... Okay, me digging, Stephen Greg Levinson. But I know for a fact that when he talks about medicine, he, he has an education in medicine because if you weren't a do someone, someone that didn't go to med school wouldn't talk on those level of specifics. Uh, but anyways, either way, he's still sort of trying to play the father figure and... Um, with his bail bondsman friend and then arrests at the same time and then sort of trying to make it look like I'm sort of a space cadet like the psychos that have been hunting me my entire life, turning it around to cover it up, right? And you're like, well, Kevin, why do you talk to these people? Well, you can't get away. It just keeps switching and rotating every person on the planet. You cannot get one honest person. Okay, so... Um, And every time I call his bluff, he goes all righty with the all righty tactic, all right? And and where does where does the all righty like I don't know you? And you'll say oh, and so you'll say yeah, well I'll prove it. And then you go all righty, and then that all righty was me joking around on my Facebook and Instagram or social networks, sort of doing Jim Carrey-ish copy copycats. But then they're going to say, well, you committed the copycat crime by quoting other actors or movies. And so you're like, wait, what's wrong with these people? They're just looking for Jew, child rapists, Jew kill justifications to try to make someone look crazy and execute them. They never, they never break from your kind needs to die to, look, this is just wrong. And they keep trying to keep it covered up. And that's a planet. So you're not allowed to choose who you want to date or be friends with or no matter where you go worldwide. No relaxing for you, nigger tech. Pope place I go minute by minute attacks. Uh, Kevin's out breaking these rules and needs to be punished with worldwide mental bludgeonings that start five years old while my father tries to make it like I conform to media. Dincy hopping. Wait. Dincy district hopping. I explained that. that I don't have proof, but I think that Sh Charles Sean Dincy is sort of working at the districts where I live. Like, I'm hopping. I used to work... At Devonshire, now I'm hopping over to Topanga Division because I want that guy silenced and dead and gone for what's in his brain with Dincy's worldwide ex extermination operations. Um, okay. Um, how do we eradicate people and cover it up by saying they suffer from mental illness? And even if mental illness did exist, then it would be unacceptable. Okay, there's no possible reason while why people are allowed to hunt and eradicate good decent people um and in the end it all comes down to trivial things that don't matter okay little little well you know you don't 
you're not wearing an Armani suit, so we're, we're in danger of you, and we got to lock you away, right? The little imperfection, little lack of hair. Okay, a little lack of eyebrow hair. Okay, um, they're going to say is about compulsion, so we're all in danger of Kevin, and then everyone else is going to laugh like, look, Kevin, you're, you're not acting cool in front of camera. Well, I don't need to be cool. That's the point. I need to be honest, and I'm an honest, decent person, and I don't have anything to hide. So that's the point, that I don't have anything to prove or hide. I am who I am, and you can't sit there and, and try to force someone into being fake and then saying, if you don't be fake, we're going we're gonna to punish you and rid you of the world, right? Okay, so why? Why should you? What's the point? It's only going to take someone, someone who's fake and full of shit it's only going to, they're only going to go so far, you know, they're going to just, they're a joke. Okay, so, um, so why not just be honest? Okay, so, you know, you're a snitch, you're a rat, uh, I take what I want. Those people don't last very long, and they don't have good lives, okay? I mean, I'd rather be an honest, decent fucking person, and go out and have friends and make money, and, and real friends, not fake bullshit friends, real friends, okay? Not, I got your back, bro. Okay, like real fucking friends, okay? One of worth and substance and meaning, okay? Not, not a fake, hey, I fuck more women than you. What do you fucking do? Wow. Okay, so, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so, um... Well, like you're amazing. You're you're just a pillar of humanity. I mean, right? I got another notch on my bedpost. Okay, well that's fucking nice. You're you're just really you've done so much for the world and accomplished so much for yourself. And you know what I'm saying? Okay, so you might as well fucking collect a jar of your sperm and fucking put an LED light on it and put it on a counter and go, hey baby. Hey, people, come over to my house. I want to see. I want you to see my amazing sperm. Okay, right. I mean, okay. So, you know, like the like the line in in, in uh, Bucky Larson. Nothing grows my cock chain. Okay, right. I mean, you know what I'm saying. It's like, and that's a jo it's a movie and a joke, and you laugh your ass off. But but when you meet those characters in real life that are competing with you and however that is extremely rare so when damon riggins the black camaro guy the, the black football player in 1988 calabasas high competing with me with lapd and the government to have me killed it's extremely rare that that situation occurs especially with nsa level resources okay so um and it's not really about competing it's about Conspiracy to commit murder or eradicate the five-year-old Jew. Okay, so um, cloaked, cloaked by stupidity, correct? Trying to brainwash me that this is normal. Okay, um, Kevin's out breaking the rules and needs to be punished with worldwide mental bludge bludgeonings. Five years old, while my father tries to make it look like I conform to media. So he starts in on these never-ending tactics. With worldwide support, with the movie Wizards by Ralph Bakshi, 1977, the assassin robot Necron 99, aka Peace. So if I'm joking around, I go Peace to people, which has nothing to do with Necron 99. But they make this into that to cover up what they're doing. Correct? See, Kevin's doing this. Kevin's doing this to us. Well, Kevin, Kevin didn't even know what the fuck was going on until 29 of World of Paranoia, and you're a fucking dead man. Okay, but the psychology community with the police are trying to cover it all up because they don't want me breathing at this point for the information in my brain. They don't want to be accessories to conspiracy to commit murder or eradicate or make someone look crazy to lock them away for no reason. And there, there can't be a reason. There is no reason. Okay, it's like, it's like I have a reason for being a vigilante. Or I should say they think they have a reason, not I, me, but they think they have a reason for being vigilantes, but there's no excuse. Like when I say, when is it okay to kill people? It's not. There's no justification. There's just self-defense situations, but there's no there's no justification to hunt and kill people. And using Mike Huntley, Mike Huntley using his last name as an idea of reference, correct? Susan Donner, 2001, they think you're schizo. Well, if Mike Huntley thought I was a schizophrenic, he wouldn't be doing that. 
If you think someone's a schizophrenic, you don't try to make them a schizophrenic or make them look like a schizophrenic to get away. So Dinsey Hopping, we're back to Ron Perlman, 2005. People are afraid of you. I sort of explained that. I couldn't, I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand what the fuck he was babbling because it didn't make any sense. You're like, I've known these people in your office for 20 fucking years. I've been as nice as can be to them. I don't understand. They have these looks on their faces like I fucking pumped their dog 5,000 times with my dick. And they're afraid of me, but they're throwing rocks in my head minute by minute. And I'm welcoming, welcoming, welcoming them with open arms. So people are afraid of friendly, non-threatening people? Well, they got to be afraid of me for some reason. They're not just afraid of me. Is it the is it because they didn't shave today or the last couple of days? Is that why? If I go into the office looking like a little stubble, it's the end of the fucking world. Or or Shanna Bryan Seva, your armpit smell. You're you're trying to gas me to death and kill me with viral armpits. And okay, I mean let's be realistic. Okay, so the only thing that could anyone, the only thing. That anyone could be afraid of is some lack of hair and fear, fear from compulsion, like he has no self control and he's gonna just pull out a fucking pickaxe and start putting holes in my fucking skull. But the reality of the situation is I have more self control. Like Susan Brittany Henderson said, you have amazing self control, so what's the problem? The government's only hunting people with amazing self-control and they, they don't care about people with no self-control? Well, that doesn't quite make sense. But, but you know, when you could be the next Unabomber and you have amazing self-control, so when you snap, sure, I could be, but so could all of you. And how are you going to know until you snap? So where do you draw the line? Well, because I think, because someone in the government or psychology community thinks, therefore they can break every law known to man and launch worldwide campaigns to kill you or try to push you out of control until they get what they want and then you prove them wrong and they get angrier that you don't fucking talk or we kill you? Well, doesn't that decision go above the judicial system and law and order and now those people think they're God and can play God with people's lives? And so, you know... The Constitution protects us all except for you because I think. You because I because I think. Does that say that? Is that what the Constitution says? Yeah, you have the First Amendment freedom of speech unless I think you're crazy? No, it says everyone. It's for everyone. It's ironclad. It's for everyone. Freedom of speech, everyone. Uh, Officer Toro, if you ever take a picture of a person I'll exercise the law... In my own way, there's no there's no law that says that people can't get into photography. Officer Toro is saying, I'm making my own laws. I'm making, I don't care about the law books. I don't care about the Constitution. Internal Affairs is now trying to cover it up, right? Is that Internal Affairs' job is to hunt and kill five-year-old Jews and say, our police, our child rapist police officers are allowed to? And all these fucking morons out there are like, Kevin, you don't fucking talk, and we got to help them. I thought you were, why do you live in America? I mean, why not go live in fucking communist Russia? Even though it's no longer communist, but Putin's going crazy. I mean, why not move to Russia if you like communism so bad, so much? Why, why be here where it's capitalism and you dictate if people go out and make money or not because you don't like them, okay, right? I mean, I mean that's what everyone... While people are walking by laughing, that's what they're supporting. That's what they're supporting. Okay, you, you can talk all you fucking want. I mean, the amount of morons I have working on me per minute every day for, for 23 years or maybe 15 years of video... You say one thing, but then you don't actually believe in it. You don't believe in the United States or Constitution. So why are you fucking here? I mean, is that simple? Why why are you here if you don't believe in capitalism or freedom of speeches or art or anything else? You follow the ways of uh, socialists and communists and Marxists and 
Okay, you don't follow anything that has to do with the Constitution of Freedoms. And then you come down on me, like that guy, he keeps leaving his house and going out and trying to live his life, and how dare he, and we're laughing, or throwing rocks at his head, because he, because he, but there's no, there's no actual reason other than me saying, leave me the fuck alone, I don't know what your problem is, right? That you've destroyed 47 years of my life, and I find out at 29, and everything I say is you don't talk, or we kill you, and they try to twist and contort it, everything into something else and blast out to the entire planet with these propaganda systems that everyone knows is going on. It means they support the very things that they supposedly don't believe in. Okay, like, but it's different for you, Kevin, because you know what you did. I'm waiting. I mean, we're, we're having the same dialogue I've had for 23 years. What's this about? Mike Huntley, what's this about? You know, uh, world paranoia, you're a dead man. You don't... Mike, what the fuck's going on? World paranoia, you're a dead man. You don't have a right to coexist in humanity. Okay? And that's what they support. No, we don't. We support America. Well, you say it, but you support communism and killing Jews and, and child raping murderers. I mean, you can't, you can't polish a turd here. You are what you are. You, you are what you do. You you can you can put on fucking beautiful suits and clothing and cologne and this and that, but then the end of the day, that's nothing. That that doesn't define you. Your actions and what you do defines you. Okay, so so it's irrelevant what you say. It's what you do. And the more lies you spew out to the world about me shows you who you are, and the more you try to cover it up shows who you are. Because we all know what's going on. Okay, well, we're still on the... Or wait. No. People are afraid of you saying what what he needs to say to get what he wants since I was five years old. Saying what they need to say to get what they want since I was five years old with these worldwide you kill child rapist armies. Well, Kevin, that's, that's vulgar speech. My cat wants love. Come on, girl. Well, Kevin, that's vulgar speech. You know, those, those speech patterns. Oh, well, you know, bludgeoning, mentally bludgeoning someone's skull in minute by minute with an entire planet for how long? Uh, now we're going tracking. Hey, war. Okay. So, um... So... So, you know, at least I'm direct and honest, and I'm not walking around trying to mentally bludgeon people's skulls in with worldwide groups, trying to torture and kill them, especially with LAPD, um, who's running around, and internal affairs running around, trying to kill people and cover it up in unheard of methods, and they don't actually have a legitimate reason. Now, I don't, I don't know specifically, well, I know some of their lies. I'm a public nuisance, and I'm a pu troublemaker. Uh, some of their worldwide cover-up lies to their worldwide murder operations. Um, I don't know if they're trying to accuse me of kill so killing someone or not with Rody Morales. I mean, that, that whole thing is so... But remember, that everything's about trying to make someone look paranoid and psychological warfare. And so I proven with those daily news articles that Rody Morales while befriending me, was working for LAPD. So he had motive from day one, and Mike Huntley wanted me to sign up to World's Gym where Rody Morales was the gym manager. So, so, and he made sure that he could get what he wanted while starting a company with me to, to work with people befriending me, working with LAPD. And it appears that Steve Levinson, Dr. Steve Levinson, is also working with LAPD and his bail bondsman friend, and the pattern repeats itself kind of with Ron Perlman because my father, Ron Perlman, uh, lots of insurance oper... I don't know if he's involved in insurance fraud or not. He's a he's an orthopedic surgeon that does work comp, workers comp um, medicine, so that means that, you know, people with injuries, and then he's linked into... Uh, work comp attorneys and insurance companies and you know the, a lot of the flack I've gotten after buying a Corvette four and a half years ago is lots of insurance fraud operations with USAA with my neighbors and these worldwide groups and the auto shops worldwide and uh, so 
there's probably a connection between my father's illegal activities. Now, I can't tell you if he's doing anything illegal at Golden State Sports Medical. All I can tell you is that he reels me in that direction, doesn't want me going out living my life, and then all of a sudden things get a lot worse well, with his minute-by-minute -minute worldwide attacks. Um, and there was he was arrested for five years for some, not arrested, uh, a trial for some trivial trivial marketing kickbacks, which does seem really stupid and trivial. However, LAPD wanted to make a statement of him about, which seems a little weird, like, like did they have it out for him too? But he's not being honest with me with, with anything. And if he can't, if he's on their side, then you know what's true and what's not true. So the point I'm making here is that whole thing could have been fake. Could have been fake because I've seen a lot of shit just like the department. There's, there's the car washer guy out here and he's in a fake Department of Justice car hanging out after I tell my lawyer, you know, the Department of Justice should be called and boom, he's out there in a fake. He's drinking beers in a fucking fake Department of Justice car. It has the police antennas with a sticker Department of Justice. And I'm thinking this looks kind of fake. This looks and finally I see him in it and I talk to him which is on video, and I say, you're the car washer. And he's just like, I said, well, so what are you doing? I said, you're hanging out in a fake car here? And he holds up a beer. He's drinking like an eight ball, you know, like, oh, yeah, you're, you're Department of Justice. So we got a whole bunch of fake police cars and fake government cars around here, all sorts of weird, freaky things that are like, what the fuck are you fucking morons doing here? But yet they're getting away with the arrests and putting on charges and trying to make me look crazy with your paranoid, your paranoid and world of paranoia. That's why everything gets recorded and on video, right? Um, okay, so Kevin's not breaking these rules and need to be punished. No, people are afraid of you saying what he needs to say. No. John Paul Naranjo working with Starbucks police to try to silence me about their murder operations or seven or so punches in the back of the head. Um, yeah, I did throw a little water on him, a little harmless water, but he was already there for other reasons. And remember, he, he wasn't working with Starbucks. Like, he was a property security guard, but, but Starbucks was using him as a thug because they're running around saying you're not allowed in any coffee shop worldwide and I'm going enough fucking enough of these 23 year you're not allowed at any coffee shop or restaurant or public place worldwide and obviously Sean Dincy's doing what he always does is he's taking a planetary operation and he's trying to make it about a singular thing like Kevin's obsessed Kevin's obsessed and he keeps why does he keep going back or he keeps going back so he suffers from obsession. Now, if you read Charles Sean Dincy's investigative reports, he's just a child raping, fucking Jew killing murderer and a liar, and he knows what he's fucking involved in. Okay, so so he is actively hunting, contacting all the people in neighborhood watch groups or and saying, stalk and follow this guy and try to provoke him and make him look crazy so we can lock him away. Try to get those reactions to lock him away. Now this is a uh 47 year operation and it gets really bad with Jason Perlman and friends and my father when I was five years old and and all the oh give all those horrible things you did to Jason there's nothing I've done to Jason there's nothing I've done to anyone but be extremely friendly and Alexis Amore's comments as I'm sure everyone has read those private messages that it's I spoke with your brother and uh, you're crazy and you're, you're pathetic and you're a loon and this and that. And Did Alexis Amor actually speak with my brother? I can't tell you. But I do know that it's all starting from my father and then it's going um, to my brother and my brother's friends and my friends in, in elementary school, middle school, high school and... Um, and um, uh, exponentially growing outwards, and then my brother wanting me to see the internet so badly in '94 when I go to transfer 
to University of Colorado from Southern Oregon State College. And that's sort of when they start playing the card like, Kevin thinks he's Jason, that's why he went to University of Colorado. Um, and things like that. They don't really make any sense like everything else, but they're going to say what they need to say to get what they want, correct? Okay, so, um, but why? What's it about? Okay, so, um, I think I'm kind of where I was. Let's see. The, the, psychology, the psychological dynamics of my family and anyone who comes in my life by design, did I, let's see. Trying to remember where I left off. Because I don't remember. Well, yeah, this must be where. Okay, so the psych, the psychological dynamics of my family and anyone who comes in my life by design. That's important. By design, right, Nympho Cat? By design. Um, so by design. Um, meaning that every person that I interact with is told to do the same thing worldwide, no matter who it is. And Kevin, you think differently, and you don't relate to people, and well, if every person you meet knows you, but they don't know you, and they're told to do these things, then it's disastrous. Now, that's by design, because they want to make it look like I'm a sociopath, or paranoid, or this, or that, or the other thing. And this all starts at 29, because before that I had friends, but I didn't know what was going on. Okay, I didn't know that people were befriending me to try to lead me down the path of destruction and the lies and the smears and the setup operations and the frame job operations, you name it, just, just minute by minute daily with worldwide support. And that's what I was beginning to see at 29 with my colleagues' death threats going, I don't understand. Okay, so you need to confess to what we say you did or or or... You need to confess to what we say you did, or we will eradicate you. We want our coerced false confessions, or we won't stop hunting Kevin for extermi the extermination tactic. Why? Or they want to push me into a situation to try to get reactions and go look what he did. And then not talk about what's going on. Just like Sean Dinsey's on video, right? Ain't nothing going on, Kevin. Yeah, okay. Um, it's worldwide. It's minute by minute. It's been going on for 47 years. So then, hey, you're crazy and you did this. That's what they want. And then we, we want to arrest you or, you know, force you into a, a mental facility or jail. Okay. And you're going to say, but why? Because... Now, they don't, nobody has that right to do that, okay? You don't like someone, you just don't talk to them. You don't launch worldwide murder operations to rid the guy of the world. The guy's the nicest guy known to man. He's like, hi, I'm hi, I'm Kevin, and boom. Hi, why did you just punch me? Boom. You don't talk or we kill you. Boom. Hey, police, look what's going on. No one did anything to you. It's on video. I'm not going to look at the video. Why would you not look at the video? Unless you're a child raping fucking Jew killer. Why would you not stop it unless you're a child raping Jew killer? Okay, that's Charles Sean Dinsey. He's a child raping fucking Jew killer with a planet of child rapists hunting me to try to make me look crazy. Nothing is about anything. They just make up newer and newer daily lies and nothing's about anything. Okay. Um, the psychological dynamic. You need, so you need to confess to what we say you did or we're going to eradicate you. But what, what if I do confess, uh, make false confessions and we're still going to hunt you and eradicate you, right? And they want these this, these false confessions in the courtroom in front of corrupt judges and things like that. And you don't think the judges know what's going on? I mean, you don't think Eric Harmon in 
2019 who 2017 who gave me one single day to prepare for trial and sandwiched the op the closing arguments two closing arguments one for the prosecution one defense he didn't however you say it Wadaya the jury he did it illegally he just said does anyone know who Kevin Perlman is no okay you're all good okay uh, am I still recording yeah I app opened um uh, there we go okay the app popped up and Okay, um, so the government, the judicial, judicial system paid off to fucking rid me of the world for no reason other than, okay, nothing is even about anything. Wait, I can't get an honest dialogue other than con child raping control freaks trying to cover it up. Um... And everything's sort of a hinty guilt. Idea of reference, hinty guilt. There's no actual dialogues that you could defend yourself verbally, like, "Hey, you did this." You're like, That's not true. That wasn't me. Um, unless it's something they're trying to push me into to set me up and frame me, and then you're like, "But you're not going to have a friendly conversation if you hold a gun to my head and say you better do this so I can accuse you of this, right?" Okay, so. And that's coming from L LAPD themselves. So LAPD themselves are hunting me with every person on the planet, and then there's no what's going on. Nothing. You're a fucking dead man. We just, we just. So it's got to be about something, correct? And it starts at five years old. But what are they going to care? What do they think they're going to change? They're not. They just, they don't want someone with the information about their worldwide murder operations talking using their mouth okay they want me just dead and gone okay so for what i know at this point so they want the course false confessions to cover up their murder their worldwide murder operations okay so conspiracy to commit murder bashing someone's skull in with a lead pipe for control well last i checked it doesn't matter why you bash someone's skull in with a lead pipe. The only thing that matters is you have or you are, correct? And that's called assault and battery. That's that's bashing someone's skull and you're cracking their fucking head open, blood's flying. Well, I didn't do anything wrong. LAPD example, I didn't do anything wrong. Let's, let's use LAPD. We're going to billy club your fucking skull in for control with, with our neighborhood watch and worldwide Jew kill groups. Um... And Officer Jones, who's plugging away, he's plugged away at two girls, and they put all the criminals in Topanga Division, right? Okay, so, um... Well, I bashed his skull on him because it's for control, because I told him he's not allowed to eat sugar, and he bought Jolly Ranchers. So I didn't do anything wrong, or he didn't do anything... His statement is he didn't do anything wrong... Officer Toro, if you ever take a picture of a person, I'll exercise the law in my own way. Officer Toro saying I didn't do anything wrong, be bashing someone's skull with a lead pipe, because the secret rule about taking pictures. Because I'm bashing his skull in. In the name of control. Well, bashing someone's skull in is bashing someone's skull in no matter what the reason, correct? And that's called assault and battery. So, Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman, I'm bashing my five year old skull in in the name of control. I'm putting shock collars on my dogs. I'm trying to put worldwide shock collars on my son in the name of control. But you're bashing people's skulls in. That's called assault and battery. We don't care. Law says I don't care why you fucking bash the guy's skull in. You bash the skull in. However, if your name's Kevin Perlman, Kevin's kind is not allowed to breathe since five years old. And there's going to be all this twisting and contorting and disinformation and um, uh, uh, we're going to send you to elsewhere. We don't want to hurt you, like the movie The Giver, right? Okay, so. 
Tim Thompson, private investigators portal and method to turn private investigators against me so I couldn't get help to prove these worldwide child rape and kill operations with the psychology community are going on. Um, that's interesting. So Tim Thompson, I, I, I don't think I talked about this. Steve McPike lives in Flor in uh, Colorado, fellow pool player. He moved to Austin, Texas after he graduated, University of Colorado student. Magically wants to show me AHP. Maybe I need to go through this programming. Microsoft early .net before .net programming comes flies out. Introduces me to Tim Thompson. I, I think I explained Tim Thompson linked to Hot Body International, putting the Alexa some more box covers covers all over. Working with the Los Angeles Spearmint Rhino. Hey, the Spearmint Rhino guy called you, and the manager there. He wants you to come down and look at the Citrix environment, remote desktop environment, whatever it is. They're not very big now, but. Um, Alexis Amore, we're reeling Kevin here, we're reeling Kevin. I'm trying to make it, yeah, I did talk about this. Uh, Brian Longbotham and Sharky's Restaurant. Um, after me telling what Brian Longbotham, what sharking was in pool, and then we go down and play pool, and then he wants to take me to Sharky's Restaurant, these paranoid schizophrenia tactics. Also working with porn star Holly Body. Um, and then hiring me at Universal Studios for a pilot called Holly, Ho wait, Holly Weird by a Wes Craven production. Okay, um, so l let's stay on, on point here that, that, uh, ironically, Tim Thompson was networked with all the private investigators worldwide, building a private investigator database portal for private investigators and then when i find out what's going on and he's like well you built adult websites didn't you and you need to die with steve mcpike hey i've just networked with all the private investigators so you can't get help awfully convenient isn't it okay uh world of paranoia we have all the private investigators working with all the corrupt cops worldwide to hunt you to have you killed. And that's an insane amount of resources to wipe someone off the planet Earth. And premeditation behind it. Tim Thompson working with Mike Huntley, working with Steve McPike from Colorado, who then moves to Austin, Texas. Probably linked to Jennifer Hess, linked to Paul Humphrey, linked to Tom Varley, you name it. For the reason of... Well, you know what you did. Okay, what I do? We can't tell you. You have to confess to it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you have to confess? Okay, well, that's the only thing I can confess to is that imperfection. Okay, so... Um, now, my mother did ask me at 16 if I hit Josh Berman in the head with a golf club, but my mother's fucking beyond any level of fucking crazy and nuts, I, I found out. Okay, so, and she'll just, just try to make me think that I need to deserve to die, no matter how, on changing methods, but she does have a psychology degree, art therapist, okay, and I am being hunted by worldwide groups for every piece of artwork I've ever created, correct? So what's it about? <laughs> There's no dialogue, just your kind needs to die, oh, since five years old. Okay, so, um... If I talk to a girl worldwide, so, you, so that's why every single prime investigator worldwide won't help. They're linked in a worldwide conspiracy to kill a five-year-old Jew. And that's not just prime investigators. It's police officers or lawyers or you name it. Okay, judges, lawyers, police officers, uh, medical doctors, you name it. So if I have to go in for medical tests, you know, they'll try to figure out how to freaking rid me of the world. Okay, so... Um, I explained earlier, if I go in for a haircut, they'll intentionally do the haircuts wrong and, and steal my money, try to get me to go after them, and, and it's just, it's, I save money by not going and getting haircuts and doing it myself, right? Okay, so, if I talk to a girl, worldwide groups get together, you're a stalker, and not allowed anywhere worldwide, in some kind of jealous rage, like if I can't have no one 
if they can't have anyone, wait, if I can't have you, Kevin, no one can have you, Kevin, but it's not. However, it's worldwide conspiracy to commit murder, and the resources behind it are not something a single entity is normal, normally capable of, and it'll just jump to every female or even male worldwide. Okay. Um, the Spanish Inquisition personality trait from each and every human interaction since five years old. Okay, we're watching you, and why did you buy that hat, and why did you buy this shirt, and why did you buy this microphone, and why does the microphone have a cable, and why are you drinking wine, and why are you drinking wine at 10.49 p.m., and why did you take a walk past dark, and why are you wearing running shoes, are you on the run, and why are you, your shoelace is black, or why are your shoelace is dirty, or why are you, um... Wearing jeans, or why is there rips in your jeans, or why is there dirt on your jeans, or why uh, do you have a belly, or why did you eat more than once per day, or why did you, I need to know, I need to know if you don't tell me you're a criminal, and I think you, and boom, 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 and I have worldwide support, and blah, and then boom, instantly these lies, this is where it gets weird, magically go worldwide. So if I buy a cowboy hat, it has something, uh, an emblem on it, and it's kind of, sort of, re resembles something from past history. Then you're a racist, and you're this, and see, I told you so, and then it'll switch to, you know, your sideburn. Why do you have these long sideburns, and, and you're a criminal, and it'll just switch and change, boom, instantly go real wide. But you're looking at people's eyes and their faces, and you're, they actually, I can't tell if they believe it, but I can see the pure anger and rage in their fucking eyes towards us Jews. Or Kevin's kind, or whatever. And it doesn't make any sense, because nothing's about anything. The way you know what you did. Well, if there's an entire planet trying to hunt a five-year-old Jew, daily, it's got to be about something. Well, this is the way it works. Oh, it's your behavior, it's your personality, and you can't see yourself. Oh, uh, well, according to who? According to these strangers I've never met? Okay, according to the strangers I've never met, worldwide, there's not one, is very rare, even if I mean a neutral, they're still like gr grinding their fucking teeth, and okay, so, so, Mike Huntley's statement, you're a dead man in a world of paranoia and all that, is designed as psychological warfare, Anyone can see. Okay. Nothing really matters. Okay, so it, it's it's designed as psychological warfare to exterminate. It's not really about anything. It's just some kind of trickle to mania label. So now we have eyebrows. So what's their excuse? What's their excuse now? It's going to change. But it already has. You can see that... It changes every fucking day. Okay, so... Um, Tim Thompson, if I talk to a girl... This is really not just a girl. It's pretty much anyone worldwide. Okay. You're a stalker and not allowed anywhere worldwide in some kind of jealous rage. But, but you're going to say, normally if some girl or person gets offended by you, how does that go worldwide? It's just, oh, I like them. I'm not going to talk to them. So we're, we're like usual, we're leaving out the entire reasoning. What's going on, the reasoning, and the entire situation on any level. I mean, the first question is, why am I not worldwide? It can't be you are, you're not, but you are. World of paranoia. The cover-up, you're a dead man for finding out. Well, but it's not my fault there defaming my name worldwide and launching worldwide child raping Jew kill armies. I'm the victim. Now my mother would be my mother was on the phone. Don't don't be the victim. No, just die for you. Just be rid of the world for you. Because you had a child that you want to throw in the fucking garbage can and you want to get away with it, right? Okay, so um and you don't she doesn't want to be known with the rest of my family for what they really are. Okay, um so Spanish Inquisition, personality trait, like, you can't win because 
I have to believe in their religion and I have to confess to the lies they want me to confess to and everything's an issue on a most minute level. And then it's the mental illness labeling cover-ups. Why do you have a hat? Why do you have a shirt? Why do you have shoes? Socks? Car? Color? Why is your car blue? Why do you have two blue cars instead of one blue car? Why do you have more than one car? Why do you? Why do you? Why do you? Why do you? We gotta kill you for what you did. Well, I mean, people, sane, rational people don't fucking care. Okay, example, we saw Jay Leno down at the car show. I put my car in last weekend, and did anyone ask why he has so many cars and you're crazy and need to be locked away? Not one. Not one. I want your autograph, and uh, oh my God, you're Jay Leno, and Kevin, you have more than one car. You have you have two and a half cars because they destroyed the vet. They all got we're why we won't fix the Corvette, and you you have an obsession, and you're dangerous, and wait, this guy's like plane hangers full of fucking cars and shit. And nobody fucking cares. But Kevin Berlin has more than one car, and it's the end of the world. Does, does that sound like honest people to you, or are they making up excuses to kill a five-year-old Jew for whatever fucking reason? Okay. So they want me ashamed. Why, why are they laughing at me today? They probably they want me ashamed of of lack of facial hair or or minor imperfection because they don't want me talking about what's really going on here, and that's psychological labeling and extermination. Or eradication. How do we force people into mental facilities to get away with the crime? Okay, the crime is we're allowed to hunt and kill with worldwide angry mobs over fear mongering of empty fucking labels, trickle till mania. And they want to 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 intimidate and thug me quiet. By humiliation, right? I'm going to humiliate you so you don't talk, right? And I'm going to brainwash you into, Kevin, you're making a fool out of yourself. Well, am I? Or am I talking about what humanity really is? It's unacceptable that these people say they're good people and they see some guy without some facial hair and they got to bash his fucking skull in and kill him. Is that a good fucking, or, or try to lock him away or force him into mental facilities? Is that a good person to you? Because if that is... You're, you're a dangerous, sick fuck, okay? I mean, that's the bottom line. Okay. Um, planetary murder up, who do you tell? I, don't, I mean, that's blatantly obvious. Age 29, you find out there's a planet of people trying to rid you of the world with these psychological terror tactics and hundreds of people per day walking by and whistling at you in a barrage of other mental illness tactics that are exponentially getting worse and worse. We still have it every minute of every day. The car mental illness tactics, the clothing mental illness tactics, the verbal mental illness tactics, the copycat mental illness tactics, you name it. You don't talk, we fun kill you. Or eradicate you. Um, but 29, who do you tell? I mean, first of all, you don't even know what you're seeing. You're like, Trying to process this thing. It's like deer in headlights. Am I going to lay world paranoia? Have a good life now. I've given you enough rope to hang yourself with. You had better live a careful life. You're too out of control for California. Uh, we're using the system, LAPD system against you. Um, just die and die quietly. Or be eradicated quietly. Uh, he quotes a line from Crocodile Dundee. When people tell, when, the, when there's a problem, we tell Wally, Wally tells the town, no more problems. So what he's saying is I'm defaming your name worldwide. Um, and then using movies, Kevin, come over to my house, watch the movie Fight Club, noticing ramp up of direct attacks, trying to make it look like a comfort to media. Kevin's like Tyler Durden, whatever. Kevin's a schizophrenic. Susan Donner, 2001, they think you're schizo, but do they really think I'm schizo? Because... They're lashing out in anger and rage. So, Jason Perlman wanting to show me horror movies when I was a teenager, like 14, Jason and Friends, to try to make it look like I conform to media, telling me that his friend Jeff, Jeff Allen tried to chainsaw, chainsaw the heart in his mother's door. Wait, his mother chainsaw, 
Chainsaw the Heart in his door after showing me the movie Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. He tried to make it look like I conformed to media. And we see that still every day today. And probably hundreds of thousands of media or movies putting things now in directed at me. And that getting really bad with Brian Longbotham in the late 90s. Working with Wes Craven. And um, trying to make it look like I'm doing something to Wes Craven for the pilot Holly Weird on his frame jobs. And... Um, You know, things about movies even now, trying to make it look like I conform to media. And then I joke back and they get angry. Okay, so, um, Planetary Murder, who do you tell? Well, who do you tell? The cops play this game while he didn't go, he didn't come to us fast enough, so he wants this. Okay, well, I, I came to the cops when I had proof on video and photos, and they wouldn't look. Uh, because I wasn't going to go in there like a babbling crazy man, and that made them really angry. And when I did go down there, they were working on me with a mental illness tactic, so... And to this day, they're still working on the mental illness tactics. So... And... Um, the cops were never going to help me now, then, or ever at 5 years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, 20. The cops are behind these child rape and eradication, Jew kill operations with all the security companies. Okay. Um, period. And worldwide groups. So they've dug, in a, they've dug a hole for themselves so deep that killing me is their only way out because... They don't want to be known for what they really are um, with the psychology community and government who launched these worldwide child rapists and Jew kill armies starting at the age five. So that's why they keep trying to get newer and newer dirt or lies, spewing out lies about me worldwide, defaming my name because they don't want to be known for what they really are, child raping fucking murderers. Well, it's not all of them, however, but it is, right? Because they're not coming forwards. With the truth. Okay, planetary murder op, who do you tell? Okay. I've been to hundreds and hundreds of psycho people in the psychology community. As a matter of fact, all their conversations are recorded and downloadable. Downloadable at KevinPerlmanTarget.com. And you can see through each and every conversation, they're lying, child raping murderers, trying to cover shit up. Okay, um... No specifics, I wrote. So if there's no specifics, you know what she did. We got to kill you. Specifically, what did I do? Well, we don't have that argument, but you know what you did, so we got to kill you. Okay, my father, you know what you did. Okay, we, we, we don't have a split. We have them trying to force me into coerced false confessions by bashing my fucking skull in over and over. Okay. If you don't want to be a slimy used car salesman, don't be, I wrote. You can't, you can't blame, like my stepfather, Arnold Silver, and his, we want to buy you a car, and then you stole a car, and this and that, and everything out of his mouth is about this the way the world works, like my father and everyone else, in a worldwide conspiracy, out of hate, rage, and anger. But I'm a good person. If you don't want to be a... a a child raping murderer or a slimy used car salesman, then don't be. But you can't say that I'm making anyone do anything on any level. Whether you don't like a t-shirt or uh, you're mad at me for buying a car or whatever, right? I mean, you define yourself. I don't define anyone. Eric Christensen, I'm making him in San Diego PD hunt me because he doesn't like my t-shirt in 1991, which still goes on today with the worldwide child raping Jew killers, right? And for every 100,000 things they do per day, they have to try to cover them each and every one up, right? And that's about mental illness. Well, the only thing you can say about mental illness is lack of some hair, which is now almost back. <laughs> I mean, right? 
And that was a conscious choice. Okay, I'm going to focus on what matters, but they don't want me focusing on what matters, correct? They want me focusing on a barrage of minute-by-minute minute mental blows to the fucking skull, upwards of 1,000 per hour they get on video per day, and it's literally 1 billion per attacks per day worldwide, which was that way, which was that way in 2001 when I was finding out world paranoia with the verbal harassments and the visual harassments and you name it. But I'm not making them do it. That, that's their constant. LAPD has stated over and over that I'm making them do it. Okay? I'm making... Okay. I'm making them and these strangers do it. I don't know these people. I've simply said this is what's going on and do something to stop it. And Detective Angela Stewart, bye-bye, and then they arrest me. And that was 2017. Because you have an opinion about, because I have an opinion about their worldwide murder operations, they're going to come after me. So, so going to the police, the more I go to the police, the angrier they get. Um, about me ratting out their worldwide child rape and Jew kill operations that have me killed since five years old. And, you know, I've committed all sorts of crimes like kissing a black girl at eight years old. I was eight years old, she was eight years old, Science Guys Day Camp, and I gotta die, right? Okay, so things that it doesn't make matter, but I'm watching like every day I watch. I come home and I leave, I'm watching fucking fifteen year olds and eighteen year olds and twenty year olds and thirty year olds and forty year olds and fifty year olds and ninety year olds and it's funny because I'm coming home today in my complex and one old lady's like, How's it going? And that's the tactic that uh, Coffee Bean's been working on me for 20 years with LAPD. And and the argument is, well, Kevin was Kevin walked into the, I walked into a coffee bean that's out of business and I was trying to be nice. Hi, how are you? How, how's it going? I'll have a cappuccino. Oh, he threatened my life. Everyone hunt him and kill him. Oh, well, well, that's fucking absurd. Okay, first of all, I don't know this guy. I don't know. In, in 2004... A coffee bean on Ventura Boulevard and Tampa. I don't know this employee. He shouldn't know me, but he knows of me for some reason, but I'm not allowed to talk about that. And I'm being friendly, going, Hi, how are you? How's it going? All the coffee, and then it's Kevin Threat in my life, and everyone worldwide kill him. However, these worldwide murder operations were always going on. And so I'm walking into my complex an uh, hour or two ago, and then like a 90 year old or 85 year old is like, Hi, how's it going? I'm like, good, how are you? And she, of course, she didn't want to answer the question because she wasn't doing it in a friendly method. She was doing it in the child rapist Jew hate method with idea of reference and threats. Now you're going to say, how does this nine-year-old have any piece of disinformation about Kevin Perlman on these worldwide propaganda systems Oh, we're not allowed to talk about that. We just keep making up newer and newer worldwide lies for 47 years and you're not allowed to question it. Does that, does that sound rational or sane? No, it's a fucking murder operation to kill a five-year-old Jew from a child raping, murdering family. Okay, so I walk in. So then I say, how are you? She doesn't want to be friendly. And she says, she sees my camera and she says, so are you out taking pictures? Are you out taking pictures? And remember, Officer Toro, if you ever take a picture of a person, I will exercise the law in my own way, which Internal Affairs is sending out cover-up letters that I lied and this isn't true, okay? And showing the Internal Affairs, you're not just, you shouldn't just be worried about LAPD, you should be worried about Internal Affairs because they're child-raping fucking murderers, the police as a whole. They need to not, I mean, there's no, they, they serve no purpose. Okay, they're the, they're the crime. Okay, and um, and um, and this isn't Gotham City. So she's trying to threaten me, like you out taking pictures, Officer Toro. If you ever, you're not allowed to get in photography or studio photography. If you ever take a picture of a person, I'll exercise the law in my own way. Well, why wouldn't I? Be allowed to get in the studio photography or photography. Okay, where I'm also not allowed to work on cars, build cars, buy cars, uh, or these secret rules, play pool, 
date women or anything else, right? There's nothing about anything. Just a planetary child raping murder army to kill a five-year-old Jew. And so she says, I say no. I'm videoing. Letting her know she's being videoed. Okay. And what's wrong, kid? You want food? And, um, oh, well, Charles, Charles, Sean, Sean, Charles, Sean Dinsey says that your kind is not allowed to eat food, cat. Um, so we got to starve you. And if you start meowing or start punching you in the back of the fucking head over and over. Okay, so, right. That's a joke. Um, but I'm also not allowed to tell jokes. I've just committed the joke and humor crime. Okay, so, um, so I say, no, I'm videoing because I'm always videoing, right? It started from documenting with photos. It started with, it starts with going out doing photography and your client's not allowed to buy a camera and do photography. And then they, they, they follow you and try to attack you all day and night. And then you start getting proof of what they're doing. And then they say, you're not allowed to take pictures. And you go, well, how many people do you know that a cop walks up to you saying, if you get into photography, we're going to hunt you and kill you with worldwide groups? None. Zero. It's unheard of. And then they try to play, well, it's because you take so many pictures. They try to cover it up and turn it into something else. Okay. And then internal affairs new letter, letter is, Officer Toro didn't do that about one picture. It's not one picture. His statement was, if you ever take a picture of a person anywhere worldwide, I will exercise the law in my own way with a plan of child raping murderers. Okay. And then I go, no, I'm videoing. That's right. Everything she's saying is getting on fucking video because of their death threats. Now, do I even know who this person is? No, I don't. It's just one of the neighbors in my complex, but this is worldwide. So was I mean to this girl? Or I was like, hi, I'm good. How are you? And then she doesn't want to be friendly. Then come with the death threats and you better not go out and take a picture and this and that. And Okay, now at that point, you're really like, yeah. I do have the right to bash your fucking skull in self-defense. But you know what? I'm not that kind of person. But technically, if people are walking around with worldwide groups trying to kill you, saying you better not take a picture, get into photography, I mean, that, that really is. And you know the judicial system is going to take this conversation and try to twist it and contort it and say, Kevin's imagining it and people are in danger. But at that point... You do have the right to bash their fucking skull in or whatever, or put a fucking bolt in their head in self-defense, but they don't want me talking on a realistic level that, yeah, people don't generally walk up with corrupt police officers saying, if you ever leave your house, we're going to kill you. And that is one of Sean Dancy's indirect death threats is my kind's not allowed to ever leave his house cage or concentration camp um, because he's a child-raping Jew killer. And it's not about anything else, okay? You can you can try to polish the turd all you want and keep twisting it and contorting it and sculpting it into a newer shape. But the bottom line is that there's nothing I've done but make the age 29. You're a fucking dead man with a planet or planet of child raping murderers. And what is it really about? Lack of some hair, some facial hair, and uh, fear mongering. Okay, so my cat looks like she wants to eat. So okay, so. So, and of course, Dr. Steve Levinson is like, so do you only do videos in your car? <laughs> and uh, when I'm talking about the Spanish Inquisition here, every human entity is like that. I can't meet one sane, rational, fucking, non-dirt-digging, psychotic murderer. It's always the same like example I, i'm i'm triggering the motion detection or the the camera tracking by going like that and you're like, kevin you know you suffer from mental illness because you keep going like that okay well you know most people aren't that psychotic or insane they can understand what's going on whether it's me videoing this video right now or so why do they instantly divert everything into some kind of label or Extermination reasoning. Okay, so, and they, they're doing it consciously. It's not a miscommunication or. Okay, so.
psychological dynamics of my family and anyone who comes into my life by design. We need to confess. You need to confess to what we say you did, or we will eradicate you with a plan of people bashing someone's skull in with a lead pipe for control. So it's okay. It's okay. You're allowed to bludgeon someone's skull in and, and break their fucking. Uh, have their their brain fragments fly over the ground with fucking brain load parts because it's in the name of control, uh, according to them. Tim Thompson, private investigation firms, all networked worldwide to hunt me to have me killed. Uh, there was one out called Empire, really aggressive. If I talk to a girl, worldwide groups, you're a stalker and not allowed anywhere worldwide in some kind of jealous rage. Like, if I can't have you, no one can. However... How is there always a worldwide conspiracy to commit murder and every interaction is linked worldwide? And if I talk to this person, I'll instantly go worldwide and that person in a worldwide conspiracy to torture and kill. Um, in unheard of methods or eradicate. Spanish Inquisition personality, Steve Levinson. Uh, do you always do the videos in your car? It's about ritualistic or... Right, he's trying to th he's trying to take things with reason and make them about crazy. Right, because if you're doing things for a reason, you're not crazy usually. Like, like if I'm driving around to get more exposure, he just keeps driving, but he doesn't know why. And well, no, it's by getting exposure with signage to stop a worldwide murder operation. Common sense. Oh. Magically, nobody worldwide has common sense when it comes to Kevin Perlman. It's it's completely thrown out the door. There's no logic. There's no common sense. Oh my God, Kevin, you're brilliant. And then Tom Farley's Tom Farley's lies. That Kevin, you said that everyone worldwide is stupid. I never said a fucking thing. The only thing I've said is age 29. Mike, what the fuck's going on? We're all paranoia. You're a dead man. We're using the system against you. That's the only thing that's really been said. They're trying to collect and twist and contort out of context. To a planet of strangers. That's why every human interaction is. That's Kevin Perlman. We got to kill him. Or eradicate him. And I go what's going on. You're imagining it. World of paranoia. We're using LAPD system to execute you at all costs. With billions and billions of government dollars per year. Since five years old. Why? Lack of eyebrow hair. Okay. Um, planetary murder ops. Who do you tell? It's a worldwide conspiracy to kill a five-year-old Jew from a child rapist father. Who do you tell? All these people think they have the right to kill a five-year-old Jew. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, it could go a lot deeper than that, but we can't get an honest dialogue. Therefore, it's you're stuck in limbo with, we have a worldwide campaign to kill you since five years old, kill the five-year-old Jew at all costs. And at this point, we have a conspiracy of Jewish people because one of their older lies was I'm anti-Semitic because I don't go to temple every weekend. I don't know one, and I don't wear yarmulke, I don't have a Hasidic beard, and I don't go to temple every weekend, so therefore I must be anti-Semitic because I kissed a black girl eight years old. I don't know one fucking Jew that does go to temple every Saturday. I don't know one Jew that walks around reading the Torah. I don't know one Jew when, if I, if when I did, before I knew what was going on, did walk around wearing a yarmulke, unless they're like a rabbi. And um, and um, and everything's identical. That I'm doing the same thing as everyone else, but it's different for Kevin. Okay. Kevin, you keep going to car meets every weekend. Like like every Friday you go back to uh, well, the same car meet. Well, so does everyone else. They all Everyone does the same thing. But it's it's okay for them, but it's not for Kevin. And that, you can apply it to every aspect of my life. Well, Kevin, you have OCD because... And the people that say it are the ones that, that go every week. Kevin, you keep going back to the gym every fucking like four days a week. You have OCD. Well, that's coming from the guy that goes seven days a week, right? And it's coming from each and every one of them that all go on a on a weekly routine to be healthy, correct? But it's not okay for Kevin. 
Okay, that's the point. It doesn't make sense. The, the, the hypocritical statements with LAPD and the judicial system and psychology community to hunt, and my family to hunt and kill a five-year-old Jew. Okay, now every, everyone can see through the bullshit, but they, they keep coming after the worldwide groups. Well, this would be the only thing that's different. However, if I'm not consumed trying to stop a planet of people from killing me, then this wouldn't be the problem, correct? Okay, um, but they can't have the truth. They need to make it look like a uncurable disease that needs to have medication, but it's not about anything but hate because you don't walk around dictating people's lives and, and you don't Damon Riggins the situation, okay? You don't, you, don't make, you don't make scenarios what you want them to be so you can get what you want unless it's out of hate. Okay, um... Hate or rage or okay uh, or obsession, but obsession is part of hate and rage. If they're doing something hurtful towards someone else, and they say stop, and they say no, we won't. Okay, um, if you don't want oh, if you don't want to be a slimy used car salesman, then don't. But don't get mad at me for for ratting you out because I will rat your fucking ass out because I'm not a child raping Jew killer. Okay, um, but I'm not making him do it. Okay, so trickle till mania. I think I stated the case here that the only possible thing this could be about is some lack of hair imperfection. And now people are laughing and teasing like that just shows you who they really are, okay? That they're they're child raping, you killing shit that won't tolerate imperfection, correct? That's the point. Okay. Um, and they will kill. They will kill over it. Kill or eradicate over it. Okay, uh, conform to media tactic, Mike Huntley, Fight Club. There's endless movies. Uh, there was Fight Club. There's Don't Say a Word. There's uh, The Game. Um, this has been going on my whole life with worldwide groups, but I'm just narrowing it down to the Mike Huntley 2001 time that he was saying, come over to my house, let's watch movies, and then I'm going to kill you with worldwide groups. Uh, conform to media tactic. There's another person on this planetary murder operation. There is no other person on this planetary murder operation who is not involved. And when, when I'm saying that, I'm not trying to sound absolutist. I'm trying to... The planet, the planet Earth has about 4 to 7 billion people on it. By the way, LAPD used to follow me when I went to... Uh, <laughs> liquor stores because the imaginary rule is Kevin's kind <coughs> is not allowed to drink alcohol okay so um, and what's that really about because that makes no sense um, <coughs> um, okay so there's there's four there's seven about approximately seven billion human species on the planet earth and um Shit. And, um, there's four to seven billion people actively throwing rocks at my head or attacks. So, we, we literally have about one billion attacks per day if you do the statistical analysis. I'm not a stati mathematical statistics person, but if someone mathematical wanted to take my video or cruise around with me or just cruise around and go, this is all directed to Kevin per hour with what he sees in his circumference, which is about a thousand attacks per hour on video. Then you could mathematically, this is done across the entire United States or world directed at me, and you could do those mathematical numbers into one day of attacks per day, and it would probably come out to about a billion of attacks per day. Let's say I'm wrong, let's say 500,000, whatever. Wait, 500 million. 500 million attacks per day. Um, whatever. Directed at one single human entity, one, one human being breathing, waking up in the morning going, what the fuck's going on? And four to seven billion people involved. So when I say that, 
lashing out in anger towards me or interesting wording lashing out in anger or um, and that wording was from, from someone else I think it might have been Seymour Amster I'm not even sure uh, who intentionally lost the case in 2017 um, you're brilliant it's about mental illness well it's about creating mental illness to rid someone of the world it's not about trivial imperfection okay and um Which is why I stayed on my other video or this video that I believe my lawyer doesn't want the judge seeing it patchy. He wants to wonder, well, is he faking it? He had no eyebrows, now he has all eyebrows. So that's why I do the video of uh, partial uh, patchy eyebrows. Because I want people to understand what happens... With this minor imperfection, okay, with these psychological trickle till mania labels from a psychotic murdering family. Okay, so uh, who won't tolerate imperfection? Okay, so um, where was I? So the attacks. So we got we got the provokers. We got the minute by minute worldwide provokers. We got the neutrals. I'm not going to provoke, but I'm going to look the other way. So, let him fucking die. Let him die, I'm going to look the other way. Um, and really, is there anything else? I mean, there's there's no... Kevin, this is what we were told, and this is what's going on. So, so what was my... There is no person on the plan, planet, on this planetary murder operation who isn't involved. Now, there could be some moron out there who's never who's lived in a cave and never pulled his head, head out of the fucking sand. I haven't seen one. Okay, they either they either know they're neutral and you need to die, and I'm not going to... Or... Or the disinformation bullshit, or the rock throwing. Okay, so 4 to 7 billion are throwing rocks. Okay. So it was a planetary conspiracy to hunt and kill the Jew over lack of a little hair... And now the hair's back, and guess what? They're going to be angrier because I prove them wrong. Okay, because it never turns out that what they're doing is wrong. The more I prove them wrong, the more they can't live with themselves. So killing me or eradicating me to cover up their worldwide murder operations or their mess is their only answer. Instead of a simple admission that we fucked up. Okay, we fucked up. Okay. Uh, trying to make it look like I go back to abusive people. This is more of a Steve Levinson, right? Uh, trying to make it look like I go back to abusive people or places, but it's done with every person or place worldwide. It's designed, like everything else, to make a human look crazy, to exterminate or eradicate, no matter how many thousands of people you walk away from or places per year. It just continues to the next to try to make it look, to try to make someone look crazy to eradicate. It never stops. There's never, you cannot, it does not matter how many billions of times you prove them wrong, they just keep coming after you. Okay, like Adolf Hitler trying to hunt and exterminate the inferior race. Okay? Period. Okay? They do not care that I'm a good person. They feel that my kind, whatever that means, needs to be exterminated or eradicated. And then we have all the bullshit, fake Illuminati, paranoid schizophrenia shit. <coughs> Trying to make me <coughs> think that what they're doing is acceptable or it's for me like some kind of movie. Like, I'm using the force. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> keeping you alone, trying to trying to like overinflate my ego with fucking, um, like, wait, how's it go? Ideas of grandeur or um, like he has ideas of grandeur or or he believes that he's the next messiah or you know that bullshit that Illuminati book. So Kevin's crazy and he thinks he's the next messiah and he's not human and. We got to lock them away, right? 
Okay, so, um, but you're trying to get that, and that's, that's what it's designed to do, make someone look crazy, right? They're sitting there year after year, 47 years, I find out 23 years ago, what's going on, nothing, you're imagining it, go out, live your life, and then they sort of, these new arrests, and they just, just go silent, and then, but there, there's no, there's no actual solution, because everyone's fucking lying, no matter whether it's my defense attorneys, whether it's the prosecution, whether it's the judges, whether it's... Why, just, hey, look, we know what's going on. This is fucking unacceptable. Don't go after Kevin. Go People, fucking all you need to leave this guy alone. Okay, so Detective Angela Stewart. Detective Angela Stewart, this needs to fucking stop. Then they arrest me. So, in order to stop a worldwide murder operation to kill Kevin, you're going to fucking blow his brains out? Okay, right? Okay, so... Um, Okay, we're down to one and a half pages. So good, because I'm getting tired. Okay, black community with people keep telling me I need to go kill my father. We have sort of like a Darth Vader thing going on here, right? Um, but my father, if you understand the nature, my father paying off LAPD to put bullet holes in his 300E Mercedes when I was 14 or when I was 16... And then you can conclude that he's secretly telling the world that I did this. I'm afraid of Kevin. He tried to kill me, blah, 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 because Jason Perlman's spouting the same bullshit like, oh, Kevin drove me here. He tried to kill me and, you know, like this whole drama thing. Wait, you're going out doing your road rage shit with fucking pachinko balls, putting fucking slingshots and putting holes in cars and trying to get people to chase you and all of a sudden now you're a little fucking whiny pussy? Kevin tried to kill me. Kevin tried to kill me. Please kill Kevin. He tried to kill me. Okay. Um, so my father is paying off police to put bullet holes in his car. They're all playing victim. Oh, poor me. We have the right to hunt and kill Kevin with worldwide groups because he's a devil child. He's the bad seed, remember? He's Rhoda. And um, it's all instantly going worldwide on these propaganda channels. My mother asking me if I hit Josh Burnham in the head with a golf club at, when I was 16. She's angry that Kevin's working on cars. I have I have clunkers sitting in my Hidden Hills driveway. I got to kill my child because they're psychotic fucking murderers. And um, nothing's about anything. It doesn't make any sense. I, I would think that my family would be proud that I wasn't a little snooty snob like them, a little money-grubbing whore snooty snob, and I was out getting my hands dirty and... Working on cars, right? I mean, that's what you'd think. Not, I have to kill my fucking child because he's different than me. Okay, so, but what is the real difference here? Okay, so, what was the topic? Oh, so, so I've had multiple black people working with my, with the police telling me, especially 2017 being thrown in jail and then trying to set me up and say, you need to go kill your father and then, of course, Janet Nordette, who my father wants me to come back from college and move in with him as he's married, right after he marries Janet Nordette, which is these little frame job things. And she ends up in jail for three years. If I had my guess, that never even happened. It was all fiction. And my father's making up the lies that she grabbed a steering wheel and threw, tried to throw his his car into trees and trying to get me, trying to manipulate me to go after Janet, right? Janet Nordette. Now we're seeing the same thing. We have black people trying to manipulate me to go after my father and I'm like, I disowned him 10 years ago. He's a fucking child raping fucking murderer with a planet trying to rid me of the world. I disowned him and now we have the father, like Steve Levinson, I'm like, your father surrogate. Or the other Ron guy at the other Northridge, Ross Big Boy. And I'm like, look, I'm trying to fucking do something positive and I can't get away from these people, right? And they're all working with the police. And it wouldn't matter if I fucking met that random person there. They would instantly have a line to the police. Okay, trying to make me look crazy to eradicate me. So, so this thing about trying to make it look like I'm going after my father. Now, just remember that I've been going to Bob's Big Boy for four years and Steve Levinson came in with his bail bondsman friend, Bob, a year ago, or probably more like eight months ago. And then all of a sudden these new arrests, and they're going to try to say... Now, that's interesting because someone here in the community was mad that I was ratting out my father. Um, 
at Warner Center Park, and that's when they really started to go crazy. Like you don't you don't rat out your father, like you don't. Your father's a fucking murderer. You don't you don't say anything about what he started when you were five, right? Okay, so um, and that's interesting. So so the their defense mechanisms are that you're ratting out your father, and now we really got to go ballistic and lock you away. But they're not friends with my father. They're not. But there's something they've got to be covering up that my father started, right? They, they go aggro over just simply words coming out of my fucking mouth. Right? Okay, so, and that, that proves it. Without, without any fact, their behaviors, based on what I say, proves it beyond a reasonable doubt. Circumstantially. Correct? That if I say... Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman is hunting me to have me killed with these worldwide groups, whatever he started, and they go, you don't fucking talk or we kill you, whether they verbally state it or we lo try to lock you away, whether we whether I verbally state it or not, it's been proven, okay? I just proved it, okay? I proved it, whether they want to admit to it or not, because if I say this starts with Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman is hate for his five-year-old, and they go, well, you don't fucking talk or we kill you, and, and really bad things start happening from that linked event, then it's been proven. Because what would happen is, oh, that guy's crazy, and, you know, I got to... Not, you don't fucking talk or we kill you, we're going to work on you with every person on the planet with mental illness tactics, try to rid you of the world, right? Or exponentially make it worse and worse. And Sean Dinsey is heavily... Remember that Sean Dinsey was involved in this when my father hired me to work at Golden State Sports Medical in... Tar in um, Northridge, or originally in Tarzana, but then Northridge, and Dincy is heavily taking money to exterminate. Okay, so now they're not going to admit to that, but that's what's going on, and we all know it. Okay, so an internal affairs has recently shown their true colors with their Jew kill operations, trying to cover up, saying I'm monstrously, my statements are monstrously false or. Okay, well, how would internal affairs know if those statements are monstrously false? They would say, well, we couldn't find anything. Okay, right? Not, you're a liar. Okay, so that, that's a defense mechanism that, that, that we know, they know they're guilty. Okay, um... Of course, they keep telling them they are sick in the uh, black community. Would please keep telling me I need to go kill my father. Okay, now is that supposed to be about Star Wars, or is that supposed to, the movie Star Wars, or is that supposed to, like Kevin Kavanaugh's a media tactic, or is that how do we stop this guy from talking? We got to make it look like he shows up trying to hurt his father, and then we can arrest him. Correct. Or, or both, okay? Because this whole thing is about trying to flip someone out and make them look crazy and then lock them away, correct? So whatever method they can exterminate me. But why is the black community so aggressive? Um, and after I kiss a black girl at eight years old. So this goes down all the way to 1988. No, that's 1980. 1980... Sunny Skies Day Camp, and then Damon Riggins with the white IROXE was in 88, Calabasas High, 1988. So with my wrestling coaches and having the black girls sign up to the boys wrestling team, trying to make it look like I beat on black girls. and Okay, right, just trying to make it look like I hate black women or hate black people. Okay, so, you know, choose your poison here. Is it the mental illness tactics versus the... We're trying to aggravate you to get reactions. It's all the above. It's exterminate at all costs. Okay, but why? What's it about? I'm in the dark, you know? I have no fucking clue. Okay, but but all I know is I make it to the age 29, world paranoia, you're a dead man, have a good life now. Okay, so of course I keep telling the black community that they're sick in the head. And my father is behind sending the black community after me when I kiss the black girl at eight years old. But guess what? They get angrier. Okay, you're a snitch. You're dead. You don't talk. You better accept what's going on. It's going to get a lot worse for you. Okay, uh, no relaxing for you, nigger. Okay, so I'm assuming this is because when my father paid LAPD to put a bullet hole in, three, in his 300D Mercedes 
and realize I was finding out what he was doing. He can't have the truth coming out with his LAPD judicial friends. So, like the other hundreds of thousands of things, or lawyer friends, or insurance company friends, so like the other hundred thousand of other things, he needs to cover up. He's trying to mob me to death with a planet to try to make it look look like his lies come true with the never ending attacks. So so he's trying to make it look like the lies come true after the fact. See I told you so. So if he can get the reactions he wants, see I told you so. Okay, but you can't you can't ignore the minute by minute you can't ignore that, but they are. Everyone is worldwide, okay? Especially Child Rapist PD and Mr. How do we force people into mental facilities? Now, what is this mental facility obsession or putting child, children in cages obsession with theirs for lack of eyebrow hair? Okay. But remember, this isn't about health. It's about hate and extermination. Um, to try to say, see, I told you so. This is what Charles Sean Dinsey is heavily involved in with his worldwide murder groups called Neighborhood Watch. Now, we just got an internal affairs letter like yesterday or something saying we looked into it and nothing's happening with the Neighborhood Watch group. Bullshit. And by the way, these Neighborhood Watch groups are worldwide too. That's where it's, it's no longer just divisional. Okay, uh, trying to force people a into friendships or relationships. Uh, trying to force people into friendships or relationships. I talked about that with Adriana Oliveras. Based on blackmail, death threats, throwing them in jail, and telling them to be subservient slaves. And that's kind of, I believe, the Steve Levinson tactic here with his bail bondsman. And however, it's a catch point too because you walk away, that doesn't change the situation either, correct? Like you walked away from me, so now we're going to lock you away. Um, or rid you of the world. And I walked away from my father over 10 years ago, I believe. And it just takes over from strangers. Stranger after stranger pretending to be my father. So we're no longer talking about my father. We're talking about random strangers worldwide since five years old with my family and the government and psychology community. Well, Kevin, why do you talk? Why do you go out to dinner with your father every night? About every Friday night? About, I don't. I'm trying to bring my fucking cars there. Okay. Um, now he's, he's playing a game. Well, He's changing his story. It's not like I never taken my cars there. He's changing his story. Well, we just go out to dinner. Right? He's changing his story. Well, me and my son, me and my imaginary son just go out to dinner every Friday night. Okay, right? So he's changing up on his story here. He's trying to make me look crazy. Well, Kevin thinks I'm his father. That's probably what he's the world's being told. But we all know it's a lie. Okay. Um, or demanding trust. Demanding trust. You can't demand. My family, I, I can't tell you how many times my family with their auto shop conspiracy has demanded trust. I, You better trust me or I'm going to rid you of the world or destroy your cars or try to lock you away. Well, that's not a trustable personality. Okay, that's not. Trust is about honesty and respect. It's not about you do what I tell you. You better trust me or I'll kill you. Okay, um, and if I deviate from the, the trust path and ask questions... I need to be hunted or killed or eradicated with the police. Is that trust? Or is that you do what I say or I, I kill you or rid you of the world? It's not trust. It's not, that has nothing to do with trust. That's not the definition of trust goes against that. Okay. Um, keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. Closer. That was my father's motto here. Okay. That's not trust. That's not a trustable trait. Uh, blood is thicker than water, so you need to kill for me. That's not a trustable trait. Jason Perlman, you need to hurt your friend Greg Waugh for me. You need to kill Greg Waugh for me. Okay, that's not trust. Blood is thicker than water. That's not trust. That's why That's why I was like, look at him like, fuck you, you're crazy, whatever. Okay, um, normal forms of commutation. What is being done is to try to make someone look like a violent, paranoid schizo or suffers from obsession to lock someone away. But we all know that I don't have those traits but it just doesn't stop from stranger after stranger in a worldwide conspiracy. 
Okay, manipulations to make you look crazy. Example, my cousin Vinny or Fight Club. I think I think Seymour Amster was actually quoting my cousin Vinny lines into the trial in 2017. Conform to media tactic. And I explained that Seymour Amster intentionally lost the case, would not bring in any evidence for me, would not show the jury any proof of evidence. Seymour, why aren't you showing them the evidence? Oh, I do that. I do that later. Right? Lie to me. And I get rattled off a hundred thousand other things. Uh, Didn't see putting a, a parking ticket on my car two weeks before I take the stand, like one or two inches in the red. That could have been submitted as evidence showing his his thugging behavior. Um, then after they in, intentionally lose the case, we want you to get therapy, and then of course the psychology, the psychiatry, eh, the psychology psychology community is doing everything to cover it up. So what's the reason? To lock someone away. To how do we force someone into a mental facility out of hate, rage, knows too much, or we just want to off him, okay, out of hate, okay? Um, trying to make it look like obsession or paranoia or whatever, okay? Uh, on those big scary words, OCD, however, trickle till mania, okay? Like when you're listening to those those police scanner calls, like uh, person with minor depression, blah blah blah. I mean, that, do you do you understand how fucking petty that is? Person with minor depression is like, what well, he broke up with his girlfriend and he's he's upset, so he went to a bar to have a beer. Okay, right? I mean, okay. Um, and the fact that people are being hunted to be killed or exterminated over psychological labels, I thought I thought. You know, that's something in like the fucking 1600s or something, okay? Um, normal forms of communication. What's being done is to tr- being done is to try to make someone look like a violent paranoid schizoid or suffers from obsession to lock them away. But it's out of hate. The whole crime against me is out of hate. Um, example... I say you're I say you're this label, therefore you're not allowed to have a normal life. I say you're this label, so you're not allowed to have a normal life. But it's like it's an empty label, okay? You might as well call me a fucking dirty fucking Jew and us dirty Jews need to be put in concentration camps or cages. Okay, it's, a, it's an empty label. It's a hate label. No matter how they want to try to leverage it. It's a hate label. Uh, Manipulation to make you look crazy, my cousin Vinny, Fight Club, or Fight Club. I explained the Fight Club tactic. With Brian Longbotham at Universal Studios and working for Wes Craven, Holly Weird, pilot. Okay, so Brian Longbotham was said, hey, uh, Wes Craven wants you to splice in uh, this footage of OJ fleeing the scene and... You know, Wes is the boss, if that's what he wants. I don't I think it was to do a prank on his friend or something. And it turned out that Brian Longbotham was trying to make it look like I'm fucking with Wes Craven with 100,000 other things. But I, I didn't know that my friends were my enemies. I mean, why would I? Why would I think that my friends, every person I've ever known since five years old, wants me dead and gone? I mean, you know, normally people don't. It is very rare that someone flips out and says, I hate my friend and I'm going to kill him with every resource on the planet and these unheard of methods, okay? Um, person in Boz Big Boy telling me before arrest, he watches court trials and represents himself with these manipulations to set me up or frame me. So this is, I don't know what angle he was working. Like Kevin thinks he's a lawyer, but I will tell you this. The one thing I learned is is if you try to represent yourself, then that looks crazy. And that is one of the uh, reasons why a judge might say this. this. Okay, so example. 
you can get a private lawyer or a public defender. And those who cannot afford a private lawyer are going to get are going to use the pub, the public defender. And what if the guy says, "I don't want, I don't know anything about law, but I want a public defender." And every public defender and every private lawyer are trying to make you look crazy and throwing rocks at your head. And you say, "I want to represent myself," but you don't fucking know anything about law. And then maybe you watch the movie Goodwill Hunting. And you think that you can represent yourself, but you know nothing about fucking law. The judge is going to say, well, because you refuse, possibly, because you refuse a public defender and don't have a private lawyer. I'm going to say you're crazy and send you into it like a, a psych ward or whatever method of. Because you refused, you refused the public defender. And you have no means to defend yourself. And now that looks fucking crazy, right? So if all my lawyers are throwing rocks in my head and trying to make me look crazy, and you say, I don't want a lawyer, the judge is probably going to say, well, okay, I'll put you in a psych ward or mental, because that's not rational behavior, correct? To not want a, not want a lawyer to defend you. Okay, and if you look in the the reasoning behind some of the reasons judges will say, I'm going to send you here is because that is a big one. Okay. So that is a big possibility that if you refuse all counsel, the judges can say, well, he can't represent himself. So therefore I got to send him somewhere. Right? So if the judge is the lawyers are trying to working on you with mental illness tactics, the private lawyers you pay and the public defenders, guess what? It's a way of forcing you down. How do we force someone to a mental facility? Okay, by Charles Sean Dinsey, child rapist, Jew killer, uh, Nazi, uh, with his little Nazi resume in LAPD or police force. The ones linking to his, we kill people that are not perfect or eradicate people that are not are not perfect, uh, agendas, okay? Now, Sean Dinsey ran for district, what was it? City Council, District 12. That's the, the Devonshire, uh, Devonshire area. Police station and region. You have to look at a map, District 12. Um, or you can watch the movie, District 9. Um and uh, that's, a, that's a joke about trying to make people look crazy and conform to media. And um, Sean Dinsey's plight for extermination of those who aren't perfect, okay? In these unusual, unheard of methods, while bolstering himself, bol uh, bolstering himself politically, torturing and killing and eradicating good people to bolster himself polit politically, and now... Well, Kevin, that's that's a far fetched. Well, it's interesting that they're linked with Jennifer Pilchick Perlman, my sister in law, who lost against Debbie Wasserman Schultz for Congress in Florida in twenty twenty, right after getting out of jail and finding finding out that she's heavily involved in these murder operations with my brother. Okay, so Jason Daniel Perlman. Not da not Jason Daniel Derrick, but Jason Daniel Perlman. With Jennifer Pilchick. Jennifer Pilchick Perlman, his wife. Trying to cover up all his road rage activities and everything else that are directed at me when, I, when he was 16 and I was 14. But why was Jason going out with his road rage shit with his friends telling the world it was me? Okay, because he went out That's the rudeness crime. Uh, because he went out premeditatedly knowing with my father of the things they were going to do and my family, of the things they were going to do to pin on me before he and his friends even went out to do it. He knew. Um, just like this little Psychos movie and Darren Mozell putting the knife up to my throat, trying to flip me out, saying let's make him the fifth member of the Bee Gees, and LAPD not wanting me to talk, and the more I talk about the past to prove 
The more I talk about the past to prove the present and the future, Sean Dinsey runs around, Kevin suffers from obsession, and he's living in the past. And No, I'm living now, but everything from the past is connected to these worldwide murder groups. And you can't resolve the problem by staying in the present because there's reason behind their motive and their premeditation all the way down to five years old. So why would Charles Shondancy say that I suffer from obsession by talking about the very billion attacks per day in the present as we speak every time I walk out of my house? And Shondancy's death threats and direct death threats I don't leave my house. But can I prove that? No, I can't prove it, can I? Other than the attacks and, the, and his, his intricate wording, like, I thought I told you to go home and I'm at a completely different location. And what is a different location? Why do I have to be at a home? Why can't I be out living my life? Um, and the other hundreds of thousands of linked events with Sean Dincy alone. Okay, so the LAPD does not believe that they're basically calling me a dog that's not allowed to leave his cage. Okay, but what's it about? You know what you did. That's the only thing it's about. Your past caught up with you and you know what you did. So you're not allowed to breathe or exist or be out of a cage. That's the crux of the entire argument. And a planet of angry child rapists hunting me to kill me, going grunting and whatever, going, you know, you left your house cage. Okay, like the girl, like the neighbor earlier. Are you out taking pictures? Okay, well, Officer Toro states, if you ever take a picture of a person, I'll exercise my own law. The law in my own way in West Valley area, Encino, and the old lady here in Woodland Hills in my complex is being thready. Are you out taking pictures? How does she link to Officer Toro in Encino at West Valley Division? And I could, I could be in Colorado right now. I could be in fucking Nebraska or I could be in fucking Alabama. I could be in Wisconsin. And this is, a person would see me with my camera and start threatening me with Officer Toro and Officer Dinsey and, and Jensen, Officer Jensen and Officer H Henderson and Brittany Henderson, therapist, and Natalie Croft, psychi psychologist or psychiatrist. And... Korean estrogen, you don't fucking take a camera and go out and do photography and create art or we're going to hunt you and kill you. And that links down to my own mother and drawing a tree at fucking eight years old or whatever that she wanted me to draw a tree. Or buying a car or building cars at 16 or anything else. Joining the wrestling team at 16 or in ninth grade. Anything else. And you're going to say, how is the information going from here to there to there to there worldwide instantly? And why is there a planet of people threatening your life every day that you don't leave your house or go out and live your life? And then the judicial system and the psychology community will be like, he suffers from obsession and he can't go out and live his life. But there is no mental illness. There's what they are doing with their hate and rage for a five-year-old Jew with their worldwide child rape and Jew kill operations. There is no mental illness but some minor hair pulling. And hey, we just solved that, so we're just going to get angrier now. Now they're going to go fucking aggro, right? Now they got to come up with a new reason. Now I supposedly killed someone and I did this. Okay, so... So where am I on my notes? I'm almost done. Person Bob's big boy telling me before the arrest, he watches court trials and represents himself with... Me with these manipulations to set me up. Oh, he wanted me to go to courtrooms and watch trials. I don't know what... Maybe to pump my ego to make me think that I can represent myself. Because he said I, I've sued civilly for all sorts. He sort of sounded like an ambulance chaser, though, you know. Okay, um... It doesn't matter that I have proof of sp and specifics of everything of how these murder ops start well, I don't have proof of that, but I have a logical timeline that I'm not allowed to talk about. The only focus of theirs is good, is good memory. The only focus of theirs is good memory is mental illness. Wait. 
The only focus of theirs is that because I have a really good memory, or or more importantly, that all the events have been reinforced, because after 29, trying to understand why every day I walk out of my house with, even now, with a plan of child raping murderers trying to, trying to rid me of the world, um, that I can remember my childhood and that upsets them. Why would that upset them? I mean, people aren't mad at people for having a good memory and being very functional people and knowing about their childhood or anything else unless what their childhood was is the judicial system going, your kind needs to die and we're going to rid you of the world, correct? So, so he suffers from obsession and he lives in the past supposedly because he can define the scenario and my mother's playing that whole fucking scam too. My family is. He's not outliving his life. He's not outliving his life. Well, I can hop in my car right now. I can go to a bar. I can go to a park and get fresh air. I could take a walk. I could drive down to fucking Vegas or Arizona or uh, Niagara Falls. I don't fucking know. Um, I go to New York City and every interaction will be your kind needs to die and I'm not outliving my life. Or am I not outliving li my life because 40 years ago? Or am I not outliving li my life because every human interaction right now in 2024 is your kind needs to fucking die? Or it might be them calling me sir, but not defining what my life is and saying, you're Kevin Perlman, and you're Kevin Perlman, and this is what is going on and it has always been going on, and that's the reason I'm not outliving my life, because LAPD has destroyed it with the psychology community in my family. So, so offing me or killing me or eradicating me is their solution to cover up their worldwide murder operation or crimes, right? But they're trying to cover it up with mental illness labels to cover up their crime. It's a cover-up. We hate you, we need to kill you, you found out, or we hate you, we need to lock you away, or we hate you and we're going to prove that you're the next Unabomber, but he passes all the tests, so now we got to kill him or eradicate him because he knows too much. Okay, but we can't just leave him alone. We can't let him live his life. Hey, Kevin, it's imagining. It's not happening. Ain't nothing going on, Kevin. Well, you're, he's on video, and I have 100,000 videos proving that he's a lying, child-raping, fucking murdering piece of shit, exercising the law in his own way for me going out and trying to live my life. Example, I'm going to buy a camera, and I'm going to go to the beach, and I'm going to uh, do HDR panoramic landscapes, or I'm going to get into studio photography, and Kevin's kind with paid off Aubrey Fisher is not allowed to get into studio photography or anything else. Kevin's kind is not allowed to go to a coffee shop and write a business plan about his next business to make money, or we're going to hunt him and kill him. It's about us. It's about us. It's about us. Kill him. 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 If he goes out and he goes to the beach, if he goes to Hermosa Beach, it's about me. Kill him. It's about me. Kill him. If he goes to Long Beach, it's about me. Kill him. It's about me. Kill him. If he goes to Baja, it's about me. Kill him. It's about me. It's about drug dealers. Kill him. Okay, right? Lock him away. Kill him. It doesn't matter. Kevin has a rational... A rational argument about every aspect of his life, but what Anita Perlman tells the world is the correct story. What about the story from the first person with the brain and the hows and whys? That's not important. He's crazy. Okay, Yucca states, don't look at Kevin Perlman's website with the proof he's crazy, rid him of the world. But... Kevin's this, Kevin's that. And now we've had psychologists. Kevin, who are you? Oh, I'll tell you who I am, but we don't care who you are because our story is the one we want the world to have, not the story from the actual person. But wait, I don't know people that say, listen, Kevin doesn't know himself. This person doesn't know himself, so you need to listen to what I say about him. Do you know anyone that talks that way who aren't psychotic murderers? I don't. I've never heard of such a thing. Hey, so-and-so, who are you? 
Well, that, that doesn't matter because I, I'm telling you who you are and you're a bad person and you better accept my belief system or we're going to rid you of the world. But we're going to rid you of the world anyways. Well, but you're a liar. You don't know me. I, I don't know who you fucking are. Okay, my mother, my mother thinks she knows me. Okay, my mother is getting all this out of context information from University of Colorado and Southern Oregon State, Colorado and here, Woodland Hills, California, well, she's all the way in Canada, and she thinks she knows me, and she's trying to define each private situation that she's not part of as if she's me. Like, she's pretending to be me and then saying, I did this because of this, and I did this because of that, and I'm a bad person, and I'm Kevin. Wait. Are you on the dates with me when I am a very friendly, open-minded person and I yawn wrong and the girl's running around and he tried to kill me? Are you on those dates with me or are you helping the girl? Right? You understand? It's, a, it's sort of like a tag team smear campaign. But these, these lies go out worldwide. Okay, like Maria. Okay, going out on a double date with Maria and Tom Farley and me being constipated and somehow magically I'm masturbating in bathrooms and that instantly goes out where why? Was Anita Perlman out on the date? And Tom Farley had it in for me since day one, okay, since he befriended me at six or seven years old. Okay, working with Tracy Picos when I was in eighth grade and Miss Vaughn and Christy Reynolds and Ryan Hirsch and Brian Weaver. And I, I don't even need to go into specifics about that because I know the world knows those lies. Already. And now we need to talk about what's really going on. Why the entire planet Earth is getting this disinformation to exterminate a five-year-old Jew with a child rapist father. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter to have proof of specifics how the murder oper operations start. The only focus of theirs is good memory is mental illness. I already said that, but so because I can remember and explain what's going on in detail, it needs to be mental illness, just like Yuka's statement, he's a violent paranoid schizo, don't look at his website with the proof of what's being done to him and the truth. Ignore the truth. Ignore the truth at all costs, hunt the five-year-old Jew and kill him at all costs. Out of hate and rage, and then we hit 12 or 13 years old, you can understand why I can't deal with a child raping, murdering family that I don't know is going on. You can understand that. Okay, if you can't, you're a fucking moronic idiot. Okay, but it's irrelevant if someone has facial hair or not. That's the point. That's the entire point. At what point does LAPD have the right to exterminate Jews or people or anything, okay? <coughs> At what point does LAPD have the right to go on a killing spree <laughs> because they don't understand something. Um, 47 years... <coughs> my throat's getting a little tired here. But I'm at the end. 47... Oh, but Kevin, you suffer from the kid taco. You can't stop talking disease because Brian Weaver's calling you a fucking Mexican and hunting you to kill you with my high school friends, so now the Mexican community needs to hunt me and kill me with Brian Weaver because Brian Weaver's calling me a Mexican, right? Kid Taco, they're trying to change one thing into something else and make it look like OCD or mental illness. Okay, so, like everything else, minute by minute for 47 years. So 47 years of random strangers following me around, stalking me, thinking they know of me, or thinking they know me, and trying to brainwash me into believing thinking they know of thinking they know thinking they know me when they know of me based on worldwide defamation and slander well Kevin you're a person of importance so let us eradicate you well if I was important you would admit to the situation I mean I am of importance but at this point because I'm a I'm proof of government murder operations but if someone actually believed I was important, they would talk about the situation openly and not 
keep the situation covered up. Even if even if they call me sir, they're still keeping it covered up and not unwilling to talk about specifics about these worldwide murder operations. Therefore, they're, they're, it's fake respect. It's not real respect. It's fake respect to try to contain or control a government kill operation or eradication operation to hunt and kill a five-year-old. And real respect comes from truth and honesty. Okay. Um, trying to brainwash me into believing their belief system. What was the... 47 year random strangers following me around, stalking me, thinking they know me, and trying to brainwash me into their belief system, trying to force and blackmail me into believing who I'm not. So, Kevin, you know what you did. We're going to keep until you confess. I can't confess. I can't confess. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to show you who you are, you know. But you that's your belief system. Okay, you can't. You can't show me, like my mother keeps trying to make me think that I'm like her and she's sort of like a manipulating, money-grubbing whore who is abusive and then, Kevin, I can't tell you what I've done. I can't tell you what's going on because I, I don't know and it's a way of brainwashing like you know what you did but you refuse to admit it and I'm like you, right? Like, like. I'm going to show you who you are. And you can't see yourself. But you refuse, Kevin. You refuse to admit you're this piece of shit. And I'm going to keep showing you until you admit it. Like, like I'm trying to whittle you down into actually believing the lies. Okay? Like brainwashing. Right? Because they can't live with themselves. Okay, so... So, but I can talk about specifics. You want to talk about specifics? Let's talk about specifics. Let's talk about Jennifer S. Let's talk about Julia Sofia Reynoso. Let's talk about uh, Sia Nijitang. Let's talk about Christina Selinski. Let's talk about Kelly Ash. Let's talk about that roommate. Kelly Hatch's roommate. What was her name? Um, Stacy, I think, that, that everyone made fun of and she transferred colleges. Let's talk about... Wasn't me. I wasn't part of it. Let's talk about my roommate after I moved out of the dorms at Emerald Hall in Southern Oregon State College and that, that girl working with the police to try to, and my family tried to set me up and rid me of the world. I don't remember her name. The, the girl that said that blowjobs... I said the word blowjob or something and she said, Kevin, blowjobs are sucking, not blowing. Like I'm in a fucking idiot, right? Uh, working with the police, trying to make me look crazy. Um, the redhead... Back then, that the snake, my snake Izzy bit on uh, Izzy bit my hand because she was dropping the ratten, and then I don't remember she was she was afraid to drop the ratten or something, and then the snakes, my snake smelled the rat on my hand and started biting my hand. Okay, well I don't remember her name. Um, Cheryl, Cheryl in the Dorn Emerald Hall that that the clown Tyler the clown put the stereo up to the door, blasting the music. When she was having sex with the other guy, I don't remember his name. Okay, so I can remember all this shit that they're sort of pinning these things on me that I didn't know, right? Okay, so um, I can't remember their names though, which sucks. Um, so, oh, my mother sending me the dart blow dart gun. In Emerald Hall when Kelly Hatch was above me and all these people were working on me, but I didn't know they were working on me. And I guess she was hoping she could get me to, like, blow dart Kelly Hatch, right? So she's sending me. My mother goes to, like, Africa or something. I don't remember. And she sends me, like, a blow dart gun. You know, you like a, you, know, you put little darts in it. You blow it. And, and her whole thing there was she was hoping that she could have everyone in the dorms piss me off with Kelly Hatch. And I, then I fucking shoot... Kelly asked with a blow dart, right? That, that, that was her. That was her hopes and her dreams, right? Now, Cal, Kevin, how do you know that? Because there's a certain pattern of behavior here, over and over, daily, minute by minute, try to get me to hurt people, right? And me saying, no, I'm not going to hurt people. I refuse, but stop fucking stalking and hunting me, right? And then LAPD getting more and more aggressive, having girls try to carve me up with knives and 
uh, people chasing me and all sorts of things, right? And me getting, getting, we, we can't live with ourselves until we can make Kevin look like what we want him to be. And this has gone on for 47 fucking years, minute by minute. They will not stop until they can eradicate me. Okay, um, and in the belief system, brainwashing, you're who I say you are, and you better give us coarse false confessions. Okay, now do I have one person saying, coming forward, saying this is unacceptable? No. Kill the five-year-old Jew with no eyebrow hair at all fucking costs. Okay, um, or eradicate, or lock away in cages. Who cares what people think? Mother snapping. This is an important one. Uh, me, 14 years old, fuck you. Mom, who cares what people think? You got to die. You mouth off to me. And my family trying to divert the wording, like divert the scenario. It's not a mother that, that is mad because her 14-year-old talked back to her and she's going to hunt and kill the, kill the 14-year-old, making up lies with the police that I supposedly hit Josh Burnham in the head with a golf club. It's because I don't know how people think. Kevin, you don't know how the world works. You don't know how people think. You don't. They're curving the scenario. The scenario is Anita Perlman got mad because I mouthed off to my mother and said, fuck you, and I got to die, okay? And we're, we're, what's, what's, what's 52 minus 14? 40 years? Close to 40, 38 years. 38 years of this hostility that you said fuck you to me and I got to kill you with every person on the planet. That's, that's what it's really about. It's not you said who cares what people think. No, it's the fuck you. It's, it's the fuck you and Kevin's got to fucking die. He mouthed off to me. Now, how does that translate into all my neighbors and a planet of people? You piece of shit, for 38 years, you said fuck you to your mother, we're going to kill you at all costs with billions of government dollars per year. Well, that doesn't make any sense, okay? It's like, who fucking cares? Kevin, you, Kevin, you suffer from obsession because we're hunting you to kill you for 38 years. Well, that's turning the situation around on me, right? Kevin, ain't nothing going on. You're stuck in the past. With Steve Levinson. No, I'm trying to figure out why you want these fucking sick child raping murderers on a planetary scale won't stop hunting me since five years old and keep reversing the scenario on a planetary murder operation against one single human entity. Okay, but it's about a girl. It's not about a fucking girl. It's about killing a five-year-old. Okay, um, me. Okay, cover-ups. Trying to make it look like I live in the past, I just said that, or is mental illness stopping me from living my life? The only thing that's stopping me from living my life is a plan of child raping murderers hunting me since five years old with LAP Child Rapist PD. How do we force people into mental facilities and, or jail cells for no fucking reason? And they can't live with themselves for what they did to my life, so I got to die or be eradicated. Uh, stop me from living my life when the truth is they want me in a cage or not around the other human species. Why? Lack of a little hair. It's not about anything I've done. It's empty labels and lack of a little hair. Refusing to let me go out and make money. Keeping me on a short leash while trying to torture me and kill me with a plan of people. What's it about? It's not defined. You know what you did. I don't know. I made the age 29 world paranoia. You're a fucking dead man with the police and government. Living off just enough scraps. So, so giving me just enough scraps to function. Kind of like being in a jail cell with a little scraps. To stay alive. Out of their hate and rage for someone with no eyebrows. Example, because you have no facial hair. You're not a human being and we're going to put you in a cage. And we're going to stop you from going out making money and having friends and relationships and, and all those social dynamics by sabotaging that worldwide, which I'm supposedly imagining. And then 
here's a little scraps, here's a little money to pay rent. But you can't have the same fruits as everyone else. You can't go out and start your own companies or work for people because every, every human interaction is... And you're imagining it. So it's a way of forcing a human entity, starting at five years old, into a hate cage like Adolf Hitler and making it look like, you know, we go out and we help you with... Well, but you, you stop me from making the real money and you stop me from having social interactions and try to turn around and make it look like you're helping me. But the people that are helping me are two-faced. Hey, nobody let him go out and do the things he loves. No one let him go out and make money. No one let him date women or have friends. But we're here to save you and help you. Because we're going to give you just a teensy bit. Example, you're not allowed to date women, but here, take Adrian Oliveira's, who's your jailer and, and she owns you and you do what she tells you. And the deal is that and like a so, like socialism, the deal is that we're going to provide the bare minimum for you, but if you go out and get some real jobs or start some companies or do something innovative, we're going to stop it from happening. And if you go out and even try to buy a car and enjoy it or modify it and go to the car meets and into social groups, we're going to hunt you and kill you with or rid you of the world with all the social groups. For going out doing something positive and productive, and you could meet people and maybe figure out new ways to make money, and we're going to stop it before it happens. But you stay in your little, your little house, hate cage of ours, or concentration camp, and you're not allowed to go out and take walks with the Sean Dinsey death threats. You're not allowed to leave your house with all the neighbors in his neighborhood watch kill groups. That internal affairs says isn't happening. Of course, internal affairs says it's not happening because they don't want something of this magnitude, a worldwide murder operation, to you don't leave your fucking cage or make money coming out, coming to light, right? Where we pay off City Guard and a hundred other thousand other security companies worldwide to hunt and kill the five year old Jew who is now fifty two. Okay? And nobody's saying it's wrong. You're all supporting it. Well like I like Alexa some more, it's the things you say. You're crazy. You're a loon. But is she saying that based on a one-on-one? -on -one or is she saying it, I spoke with your brother and, hearsay, I spoke with your brother and, and more, not only hearsay, but how does the Peruvian princess here, how is she in, conspiracy, how is she in cahoots with Jason Perlman and with the rest of the world? So, you know, are they hanging out? Is, is she flying to Florida, dining? No, they're using internet, worldwide internet, kill Kevin tools. And everyone worldwide is in on it, but Kevin's in the dark. So, when Jason Perlman says, or Spanish teacher Miss Garcia at Calabasas High says, or Mr. Quigley, Kevin, punch Paul Schaefer. My 10th grade English PE teacher PE and English teacher. Kevin, punch Paul Schaefer. I say, no, I'm not going to punch Paul Schaefer, especially in the middle of the English class. Okay, why is he doing it? He's trying to set me up and say Kevin's crazy and punch Paul Schaefer and is filled with anger and rage, but then, boom, it instantly goes out worldwide. We need to lie and cover it up. And so, Alexis Amor or whoever else could say, I spoke with Mr. Quigley, technically, I don't, I don't remember his first name, and you're filled with anger and rage for what you did to Paul Schaefer in 1988. But I'm going to say, well, but how are you... Okay, like the movie Interstellar, let's, let's use a fictional reference. Like the movie Interstellar and the fifth dimensional information, how would Alexis Amore or anyone else Nikki Delano or Daniel Derrick or Courtney Taylor or a hundred billion other Ronald Reagan or criminal defense attorney in Omaha, Nebraska there, I don't know, some imaginary bloke, those guys in Australia, be able to access this disinformational 
what would you call it? A disinformational, fifth dimensional thing. So, Kevin, I don't like you, so you punched Paul Schaefer in 10th grade English class in 1988. Okay, but I didn't punch Paul Schaefer in 1988. Mr. Quigley told me to punch Paul Schaefer, and I said no to try to set me up or frame me and make me look like a violent, paranoid schizo in 1988 or 87 or 89. And to this day, you don't fucking talk or we kill you. Even even to a someone in the psychology, most importantly, even to a someone in the psychology community, you don't fucking talk or we fucking kill or eradicate you. The truth cannot come out. But more importantly, example, I'll use, use Alexis more because she made direct statements and most people don't. Okay? And Alexis Moore, if you think I'm harping on you, I would harp on any human entity that is involved in this worldwide conspiracy to execute me because every single human entity here is obligated to come forwards with the truth. I don't care who you fucking are. I don't care if you're Donald Trump. I don't care if you're... Biden, I don't care if you're um, Ronald Reagan, I don't care if you're JFK, even though if there wasn't a bullet hole in your head, um, <laughs> I don't care if you're, you're Tom Cruise, I don't care if you're um, uh, Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel, which you know you're what you're involved in. I don't care if you're a douchebag Greg Upfeld I don't, of Fox News. I don't care if you're Sean Hannity. I don't care if you're MSNBC. I don't care. I don't fucking care. You are obligated to come forwards. Okay, I don't care if you're my fucking douchebag neighbor down the street there. You are obligated. I don't care if you're Key Van Atte. Okay? With his lame ass setup and frame jobs with Ally Universal. and I don't fucking care. You are obligated to come forwards about a single entity named Kevin Perlman with a worldwide murder operation, eradication operation for 47 years. You are obligated. And if you do not, you're a child raping, Jew, uh, Jew killing, murdering piece of shit. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Okay, and you are obligated. What kind of sick fuck can just sit there and keep it going? And try to brainwash me and, and say, maybe someday it will be over. And you know, It's not going to be over. It's not going to be over until people start being honest. And that has nothing to do with bunk bogus arrests and forcing me into frame job courtrooms, narrowing a worldwide 47-year murder operation or eradication operation into this minuscule little thing, okay, of, of false bullshit where they try to stop the truthful stories from coming out, right? Okay, because this is a billion times bigger than that. And by keeping this planetary thing covered up with some guy walking around going, so am I going to fucking start talking about what's going on? No. You suffer from obsession. That's in the past. It's not in the past. It's, it's present. It's been going on minute by minute daily on a planetary scale at least since 94 and city scale since five years old. Okay, so who cares what people think? Mother snapping. Kevin, well, you don't, you don't know how people think. No, I said fuck you to Anita Perlman. She snapped with my father who was already snapped when I was five going, the, the five-year-old's got to die. And he just said, fuck you to me. He's got to die, okay? I mean, no, no. It has nothing to do with the way the world works or what people think, okay? It's this person is angry. Her son said, fuck you to her, and she's going to be the one to fucking put him in the ground, okay? Um, you said what to me? Boom, 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 okay? For 47 years, okay? Did you did you hit Josh Burnham in the head with a golf club? Okay. Hey, LAPD, my son tried to kill or kill Josh Burnham. I don't even fucking know, right? Because it's so strange, the whole fucking thing. Okay, um, so last one, cover-ups. Or maybe I already got to this. Trying to make it look like I live in the past. I did partially did. Or it's mental illness. It's, it's present. 
Every day I go out, every day I get video footage, every day there is rarely one human entity that doesn't take part on some level. Even if they're being neutral, they're still taking part on a me with methods. Um, example, the lady in my other side of my complex here in the elevator, and she said, are you out taking pictures? And she's alluding to the Toro death threats, Officer Toro. If you ever take a picture, I'll exercise the law in my own way. And you're linking, obviously, the events. Are, and, she, and, the, and the coffee bean, how's it going? Kevin tried to be nice to an employee, and we got to kill him. And, well, Kevin, you think differently. People don't say, hi, how's it going? Well, they do. It's just I'm being put in a position of we're trying to make the guy look crazy by with repetition and things like that. Okay, and um, she's alluding or insinuating with guilt, seed planting, idea of references, that I supposedly did these things I didn't do. Or better yet, she's threatening that you're, are you... Hint, hint, we told you that you're not allowed to get into photography and now we're threatening you. Like, did you go out and take pictures? Now you're going to say, but the absurdity that, that someone cares that someone went out and bought a camera and took pictures. You understand? It doesn't make sense. And But she's doing it in a way to belittle and piss someone off because she wants reactions with child rapist, Jew killer, Sean Dincy, with idea of reference or subtle provokings that are indirect. She didn't say, we told you dirty Jews, you're not allowed to go out and get into photography. She didn't say it that way. She said it in, in sort of belittling, thready, provoky comments, right? Because she wants the reactions. And on that video, you're going to see, or if you were to watch it, you'll see that I'm as nice as can be yet. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? And she doesn't want to answer. She doesn't want to answer the how are you. Like, I'm being nice. Like, I'm inviting you in on a friendly level. And she's showing that she's lashing out with hostility. When I'm nice, she's getting angrier like a Jew walking up to Adolf Hitler and saying, Hi, Adolf, how's your day today? And he's like, he's like, he's grinding his teeth and he's getting angrier and angrier, right? And that's the, the level of Jew kill hate, child rapist, Jew kill hate of theirs, that they're angry that a Jew goes out and he buys a camera and he gets into photography or takes a, a photography class in 1996 in Professor Nick's class and he then gets into studio photography or all sorts of other photography and they're getting angrier and angrier. Well, the anger can't be because, be, be, ah, the anger can't be because a Jew got into photography. That doesn't make sense. So it's more realistic to say that he's Jewish. Right? Did those fucking dirty Jews do what we fucking tell them? But let's say it's not Jewish. Let's say it's about someone who has no eyebrow hair is classified as a slave. And that slave defied me. Okay, now I don't fully understand the dynamics because... The entire thing is so strange. The level of anger in them. And of course my comments like, no, I'm not I'm not fucking taking pictures. I'm videoing. As a matter of fact, I didn't say it, but I'm fucking videoing you lashing out anger and rage at me. Okay? And she I believe got the message because she clammed right up. Okay, she didn't want to talk after that. But more importantly, when I'm being friendly, like, ah, oh, I'm good, how about you? She starts in with the balloon, like, did, like, did you fucking go out and take photos, you dirty fucking Jew? They're like, like, I'll ad lib for you. Hey, how's it going, you dirty fucking Jew piece of shit that's in my fucking townhouse complex? Good, how are you? No answer. Like, I, I don't want to engage in warmth and friendliness. Then we have the kid. The mother telling the kid last week to run up to me at the car show, mad at me for putting my car in the car show. Oh, you're one, you're, you're one of those attention people. And the mother was hoping she could get anger, getting me to say something to the kid to say, this guy's a piece of shit and, and threatening my kid. Okay, right? That's why they're child rapists. And then, let's continue the elevator conversation. So you dirty fucking Jew, how, how is it going? I'm trying to get rid of you. Because you were friendly to a coffee bean employee 20 years ago. 
Um, good, how are you? No answer. So you fucking dirty Jew, did you go out and take pictures because we fucking told you you don't leave your fucking house and go out and take pictures or do anything else and you don't fucking go to coffee shops and relax with our no relaxing for you nigger death threats and you also don't go anywhere worldwide or go on road trips or buy cars or any fucking thing else. Right? Oh, no, I'm not taking pictures, I'm videoing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right? And then she sort of clams up. And then I walk out of the elevator and the next guy walks in and he says something and she's as friendly as can be to that guy. Now, all I know is is one of my neighbors. Don't know who the fuck they are. I don't care. She's starting the you dirty Jew and throwing rocks at my head. Child rapist, Jew killer, Sean Dincy here. Nothing's going on. It's worldwide. It's been worldwide for 47 years. We're exponentially growing. What is Charles Sean Dinsey's statement? Thus Jews need to die. Now, did he say it directly? No. He just keeps arresting on his third arrest, and the fucking Jews, the Jew needs to die, and absolutely nothing's going on, and we've all seen it. We've all seen it worldwide, whether anyone wants to admit to it or not. I mean, I mean, we had Brittany Henderson. She tried to sort of flee the court date in 2018, whatever, showing her guilt and things like that. And then, of course... The next set of therapists secretly are hunting me for buying a car because she says, I suffer from post-traumatic stress syndrome and I prove her wrong by going out and buying a car in Pennsylvania. Now the reason is going to switch and change so they get what they want, right? But what is the reason that everything is one-sided worldwide and there's no ability for a counter-argument? There's a worldwide propaganda channel to the entire planet for 47 years, there's 100,000 lies, and the victim, me, is not allowed to have a counter-argument with anything truthful, designed that way to hunt and kill and, and bash a five-year-old Jew skull in with a planet of people for 47 years, designed with one purpose intent to bash someone's skull in and kill or eradicate him, as Skyler paid off to have me kill with Jason Perlman, States skull fucked people to death. She doesn't. She didn't say to death. What's the difference? Till they walk sideways, and um, they don't see the wrong in their Jew killing operations worldwide, or child rape and Jew kill operations worldwide, with upward upwards of one billion attacks per day for the last twenty three years. Well, I'm sitting in an office, world of paranoia, and you're a dead man. We're using LAPD, the LAPD system against you, to kill you since five years old with the psychology community and your family. It's about mental illness, says criminal defense attorney Seymour Amster. Do you think, what's more important, human life or a little eyebrow hair? So if someone doesn't have a little eyebrow hair, they're not allowed to breathe. They need their skull bashed in in such unheard of, humanly disgusting, sick, demented, torturous ways to kill someone. They're so sick that, that, that are undocumented, like, like water drip tortures and like tying someone down for 30 years straight, putting bamboo under their fingernails or, or dripping water on their forehead for like 30 years straight until it goes through the fucking cranium into the fucking brain and kills you or something unheard of like that. Okay, by the United States government of America with the psychology community and the only reason it's really about is lack of some eyebrow hair. I mean, what if... What if, what if I had a... a a mole here, you know, like like a mole. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what would the consequences be? But I guess that mole would have to be in the DSM-5 book of psychological labels, right? And then it's okay to torture and kill with the psychology community and these unheard of methods of psychological warfare to torture and kill. That Charles Sean Dincy will not tolerate a few missing eyebrow hairs. Okay, because that's what it's all really about. And it's all fucking unheard of and, and it's the stupidest thing I've ever fucking heard. Okay, it doesn't even make any sense. The, the amount of fear...
Kevin, people are afraid of you. You're, you're missing some hair. Okay, so that that's... Can you Can you... What if you saw an ant walking on the sidewalk? I mean, all hell would break loose, right? It would be nuclear missiles everywhere. Okay, so... Um, Trying to make it look like mental illness and stopping me from living my life. The mental illness as a cover-up. When the truth, the truth is they want me in a cage and not around the other human species, but not for any legitimate reason other than fear for lack of eyebrow hair. Not making money. They don't want me making money. They've stopped all possibility of making money. They want me on a short leaf, leash, living off of just enough scraps to stay alive. Example... You don't go out and have a good life. You don't make friends. You don't work with people to make money. You don't you don't hire people. You don't you don't date people. You don't have friends. You don't have social lives. You you're not allowed out of your house. But here's some money, like socialism, to buy some gas and some scraps to eat. And we're gonna throw rocks at your head every time you try to buy food, um, because we really want to force you in a cage, and. Then we're helping you. See, I, I'm helping you and I'm funding you and I'm keeping you. Whoa. Yeah, that's half of it. Well, what about the other half? What about the, the two-faced, you're doing this for me after you're doing that, right? Example, Steve Levinson. Um, I'm working with all the auto shops to destroy all your cars, but I'm, I'm allowing you to... Be social with me every Friday night while I work with everyone to sort of skull fuck you to death and lock you away with my bail bondsman friend Bob and didn't see in the judicial system, right? But I'm giving you something. Well, or you're trying to divert my focus onto this when... What's really important is the judicial system trying to lock me away with the judicial system and psychology community. And he himself is a doctor, and we have a history for 47 years of medical doctors working with psychology community and a worldwide child raping, Jew killing murderers to execute me at all costs, correct? And as I explained before, Steve Levinson is 82 years old. My father's, I'm guessing, 80 or 81. And. He clearly worked in Tarzana Medical Center in his prime with my father's prime, right? And you can do the math. Even if he doesn't specifically know my father, there's some level of intent to silence me, especially when a planet's trying to silence me. And he would have a higher motive than anyone out there, right? Whether... The psychology community fucked up and I got to be the one to silence Kevin and rid him of the world or, or smear his name and make it look like he's crazy and lock him away with Dincy and LAPD and Topanga Division and West Valley Division and Burbank Division, right? Okay. And, um, well, Kevin, how do you know that? Well, because he's lied. He said he doesn't know of me and he says he doesn't know of anything going on directed at me. And then he goes, all righty, all righty, all righty, and the other mental illness tactics, just like everyone else. So he, like everyone else, well, I knows of me, and Kevin needs to die since five years old. But why can't he say, this is wrong? I met Kevin. He's not what they say. He's proved me wrong 500,000 times. And say, this is bullshit. You destroyed his, everyone's destroyed his life. The, the cops have destroyed his life. The government has destroyed his life. The psychology has destroyed his life. It starts with his own hate family, hating their five-year-old. Keep trying to cover it up. And they keep newer and newer arrests. And the Jews got to die. And we got to force them into mental facilities. And nothing's going on. You can't say that nothing is going on with a billion attacks per day in a worldwide murder operation in secret. And, and 100,000 Lies, smears, defamation, slander, and how's it happening, and who's doing it, and what's going on? You're imagining it and die, you fucking five-year-old dirty Jew. Well, but I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish too. Well, whether you were born Jewish or not, the Torah preaches against killing people. 
whether they're Jewish or any other race or culture. So if you say you're Jewish and you're out hunting and killing with mass worldwide groups to kill a five-year-old Jew named Kevin Perlman or anyone else, then you're not Jewish. You don't, you're Jewish by birth, but you don't believe in the basic Torah or Bible or anything else. Thou shall not fucking kill or torture and kill or eradicate or however you want to word it. You can't use your religion as justification to kill or eradicate. Now, this last group, this latest group of we're going to rid Kevin of the world and lock him away, the, the key players are all Jewish. Now, we had a cover-up lie a while back in 2017 that I'm anti-Semitic. I believe her name was Deborah Baer, uh, working with the Olive Institute, uh, linking to my father, stepfather Arnold Silber, who always flies to Israel. And then after that, we had people like Yossi with his Made in Israel tattoo, and you're not a real Jew, and I'm going to stalk you with the coffee shops and restaurants. And then trickling down... And I'm not mentioning names right now because the trial is coming up with some of the key players with him. And the key players seem to be Jewish. And I don't know what Jewish has to do with hunting and killing. You know, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter who you are. Okay, Judaism does not define you or, or your skin color does not define you or any other religion or race or culture does not define you. What you do defines you. And if Jewish people are calling me anti-Semitic because they don't like the Jew kissing a black girl when he was eight years old, they're not Jewish. They're shit and they're scum and they're trash. And if the black community is hunting me to kill me because I black, because I kissed a black girl, then those people hunting me are, are child raping, Jew killing, shit, scum and trash. Because the only thing that defines you is being a good person. And that, that applies to, that's a universal law. Okay, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Indian, I don't know the fucking, whether you're Hindu, Jewish, uh, Christian, okay, or all the above, doesn't matter. What defines you is what you do. Okay, not your, not some fucking lame ass fucking book, and not some lame ass psychology book called the DSM Five Book of Psychological Labels. Okay, the only thing that defines anyone on any level is what you do, how you treat people, if you're a good person. Okay, I don't care about your skin color. I don't care if you have eyebrows. I don't care your skin color. I don't care fucking your religion. Okay, now my Jewish family doesn't understand that good people. Being born Jewish, they think being born Jewish makes them a good people and they can hunt and kill. Okay, and the black people seem to understand, seem to think that that our people are oppressed, so we're allowed to hunt and kill whoever we want for the purpose of power and control. That makes you shit and scum. Okay, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what you do. It doesn't even matter what you think. It's what you do. You can think whatever you want, but what you do defines you. That defines who you are, what you do. Not what you think, not what your religion is, not what your skin color is, not if you have eyebrows or no eyebrows. What you do defines you. Period. Okay, so so these key players in this latest arrest are all... The, the, the key players with their worldwide groups seem to be Jewish... And they're the worst of the worst. Now, does that does that make Jewish people bad people? No. Because most Jewish people are good people. And I'm a Jewish person. I'm a little I sway a little more towards agnostic. I am Jewish in blood, but I sway a little more towards agnostic because I believe in the common denominator that all people are good people depending on what they do. All people are capable of doing bad things and all people are capable of doing good things and what you do defines you. Not your fucking religion, not, not if you have money or don't have money because I've, I've seen a lot of people with money that, that bully and shit on the homeless thinking that are good people that have done nothing wrong 
They might be a little obnoxious or something, but they're a good person. And I've seen people with money who have everything do horrible things to people with no money or a homeless. And I've seen people with everything in life do horrible things and try to torture and kill those me without some facial hair. And they have everything. They have everything in life that you could ever imagine and they're the biggest pieces of shit known to man. They have no excuse. Okay? And I've seen people that have everything's been taken away from them and they've been exceptional people. Or strive to be. Okay? So what defines you is not your fucking religion, even though those are lies from Deborah Bear that I'm anti Semitic out of her hate with the Olive Institute an Israeli organization trying to cover up what my family started with the psychological labeling and the latest are, well, you're not a real Jew type thing, right? Well, but what is a real Jew? Okay, a real Jew does not have to wear a yarmulke or a, um, what the fuck's it called? A, uh, a talus or uh, have a big beard. And Okay, what you wear does not define you. Okay, I wear an Armani suit and shave and and walk into a corporation and does that make me a good person because I'm clean cut and drive a beautiful pristine BMW and or Mercedes? It doesn't define you. What you do defines you. Okay, you have a homeless guy with no fucking ripped up clothing and who hasn't shaved in fucking ten years and he can. Can his actions will define him and he could be a billion times better than that guy with the Armani suit and a BMW clean cut that goes has a fucking $10 million house and, and little waterfalls in his backyard and uh, goes to his, his firm every day. and Okay? Because what you do defines you, not, not what you pretend to be. Okay, so... So it doesn't matter whether you have some eyebrow hair or not. That's what defines you, okay? And you can't use the excuse that our ancestors were oppressed so and made slaves so we have the right to hunt and kill for power and control. You're defining yourself. Okay, um, if I take a walk right now and people come out with their anger and rage spitting on me or, or mentally spitting on me or whatever, you've defined yourself. Okay, period. Doesn't matter what you do for a living or you that Yuka girl putting up Google blogs that Kevin's crazy and everyone help her remove me from society with LAPD and Dincy, child rapist Dincy, Jew killer Dincy. Um, and don't look at the proof. She's defined herself. She's a child raping Jew killer or a Jew hater or whatever. Okay, um, with all of the Topanga division or most of them. But I don't see them coming forward saying this is wrong. So the truth is they, they want me in a cage and not around the other human species. All for a little lack of eyebrow hair. Not making money on a short leaf, leash. Living just enough off scraps to stay alive. So anything I do thriving with friends and co-workers and social groups, unacceptable to them. You know, keep keep the person at the lowest point of you know, like like locking a slave in a in a barn and whipping him every day, right? Okay, or putting a Jew in a concentration camp and he has doesn't have his freedoms. But they're nice enough to give you food every day, right? In the concentration camp. So you know what? Look what look what I do for you. Look what Look what I do for you. I give you food. Okay, that's that's my family with their worldwide. Okay. Out of their hate and rage for someone with no eyebrows. Okay, it's, it's all coming down to a little facial hair. And are trying to cover it up by saying it's your behavior. So it's my behavior. We get to have a, a truthful argument. Well, you went to coffee shops and you were sitting outside and you read a book and rested your feet on a chair. That's not behavior. That's not anyone, anything that anyone cares about. 
Well, you're in the bathroom for longer than 15 seconds, so it's your behavior, like once, so it's your behavior. That's not a behavior. But they're getting disinformation from Tom Varley from a double date with Maria and Adrian Olivares. Well, that's not a behavior. That's hearsay of private information that shouldn't be going worldwide. That's illegal. That's defamation and slander. And there's about 100,000 other lies like that worldwide, defamation and slander, with billions of government kill dollars, correct? Probably about a billion per year. It's your behavior. There is no behavior when we're coming to truthful arguments. Well, you said fuck you to your mother in 1988, so she has the right to hunt you and kill you with a plan of people. The defiance behavior one single time ever. With my family. One single time. One moment of imperfection. And my mother can't let it go. At, when, when I'm 52 years old. My mother with a worldwide. Jew kill child raping. Jew kill armies can't let it go. Does that make sense? No. Because it's about. Government flag and kill operations. To eradicate. Imperfection. With this Nazi here. And when there's nothing that I've done wrong, but that's not what the world has been told in these thousands of lies. So, so we, can't, we can't have an honest conversation. Just you know what you did, so we're going to try to set you up and frame you every minute of your life with an entire planet because you know what you did 47 years ago. Okay, Anita Perlman, Ron Perlman, you know what you did 47 years ago, so we're going to lock you away at 52 or every day of your life since. And we're going to, we're trying to punch you in the back of the head every minute to try to get reactions and throw you in courtrooms that don't talk about that. They talk about this, and this is out of context. With that, that I have to deal with every minute and every day of my life. But wait, the argument isn't some... The argument is one billion set up and frame job provokings per day. Or a thousand events per hour in camera. Now, is that going to come out in courtrooms about this guy says? Probably not. So, so, how do we try to make people look crazy and force them into mental facilities or jail cells out of hate? But who's paying him? Who's paying off LAPD to have me hunted and killed or eradicated? Well, we got our list a mile long. We got Jason Perlman. We got Jennifer Pilchick Perlman. We got her family. We got Dr. Rollaberry Perlman. We have Anita Perlman. We have Arnold Silver. It starts at five, so that's the source. Exponentially growing outwards, every high school teacher, elementary school teacher, college professor, every friend in college, colleges, every friend growing up, Jason's friends, every community growing up worldwide. 1994, Jason Perlman wants me to see the internet. We then have the worldwide internet super highway of kill Kevin at all costs starting in 1994. Jason Perlin playing both sides of the fence. You got to see I friends. You got to see this. You got to see that. Everyone on I friends hunt and kill Kevin. Everyone boom, boom, boom. Okay. Um, IRC internet related chat. Everyone kill Kevin. Okay. Howard 19, 1996. Internet comes around in 1994, 1995 and 96. Christina Stalinsky from Arizona. I'm going to, I'm going to seek Kevin out from Arizona Kevin needs to die, random women in Denver, Colorado. Kevin needs to die, I drive a Jeep like Kelly Hatch. How do these people know of Kevin Perlman in 96 and worldwide? I'm going to read Kevin a little. I'm going to the, the setup attempts in 1996. Kevin, come over to my house. The door's open, working with Kelly Hatch and Mike Wexler, Jason's friend, Mike Wexler. That's a lot of resources in 96. 
before the NSA really got bad with the data mining and Edward Snowden and what he came for. Okay, 2001, I'm finding out. Sitting in my office, Signet East Services. Mike Huntley wants to start a company with me. Originally, Jason Perlman's friend. Me and my friends are going to put you in a mental institution. 1988 death threats. Lawman Calbass is high. Mike Huntley, world of paranoia. You're a dead man. We're using the LAPD system against you. You had better live a careful life. If you blink wrong, we're going to kill you. You're going to kill me anyways. You're going to rid me of the world no matter how perfect I am. Why? My mother, your past caught up with you. What past? I never said that. Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman, my father who I disowned, with Jason Perlman and the rest. Uh, you know what you did? What I do? Well, when people do something, they lie, so so they're not told. In other words, world paranoia. I'm trying to make it look like I'm trying to obsessionally loop you to death. I'm trying to make it look make you look paranoid. I'm trying to mentally bash your skull on with a plan of people. What's going on? Okay, minute by minute attacks noticing in 2001. We are at 2024. Nothing has changed. Worldwide murder operations. You're not allowed to know what's going on. Or you're just. You're just. Uh, how, how do you say it? There's just a government assassination or kill operation to eradicate a five-year-old Jew for no reason, with worldwide support going on across a 47-year exponentially growing thing. Nothing is about anything, but you know what you did. Well, that's going to try to make a, uh, trying to make someone look like they suffer from obsession. Every person that's not going on, you're a dead man. No matter how obvious it is. No matter how many videos of people will say, you, your kind better not take a walk and I'm going to kill you in direct statements or punching me in the head or whatever, whether it's on video or not, LAPD will not admit anything is going on. Even if I come in for that one single event, nothing's happening. We're not going to file a police report. If I can make them file a police report, it will just be shoved in the toilet. It's got to be about something. You have this sick fucking family going around. Well, something's going on. But I'm not going to say anything specific. Trying to make it look like paranoia. Okay. And I've proven this a billion times this way and that way. This is going on, but the five-year-old Jew's got to die. Uh, statements from Alexis Moore. I guess the things you say. How would she have any aspect of my private life? Whether it's the 30 years of violating computer privacy with the rest of the world trying to make me look like this or that or... or Anything else, that's the point, is that the crime is not Kevin. It's the cyber crimes against Kevin nonstop, starting in 1994 with Jason Perlman and the government. And everyone is obligated to come forwards. Not not just, hey, planet, keep hunting to kill the five-year-old Jew, and he's figuring things out, now ramp it up. But we're all good people, and you're not because you don't have a little eyebrow hair. It's about OCD, it's about paranoia, it's about obsession, it's about, it's about you're violent, it's about you're filled with anger and rage. Dr. Alex Lazar flipped his shit when I told him about Mike Huntley stating that I'm filled with anger and rage. He got so angry, he got so angry, that's when Doc, Officer Toro came in. If you ever take a picture of a, with Aubrey Fisher, if you ever take a picture of a person, I'll exercise the law in my own way. Internal affairs, we still trying to cover it up. Hey, what's, what's internal affairs' purpose here? To kill five-year-old fucking Jews? Is that their purpose in life? Kill fucking Jews? Because in the end, whether it's kill Jews or kill people without eyebrow hair, hair that's what it is, okay? That's all it is. Okay, if you don't have hair on your eyebrows, you're, you're what's the, how's the word? You're in line for execution or assassination by the United States Government of America with Adolf Hitler tactics. Okay, you think if I go out and take a walk right now, people start coming out with the car mental illness tactics and the clothing color mental illness tactics. What do you? What is that about? You suffer from you were violent, paranoid, schizo, so we're going to kill you. Well, even if I was a violent, if if I was okay, let's say I was. I don't even know how to word this. Let's say I was labeled a violent, paranoid, schizo by the psychology community. Let's say that. 
And I go out to take a walk, and I'm peaceful as can be, and 50 people come out trying to punch me, mentally provoke me or whatever, I'm not committing the crime. They are. No matter what label is thrown on me, it doesn't matter. My actions, and my, my actions are my actions. Their actions are their actions. You can't say, I say you're a violent, paranoid schizo, so I have the right to fucking kill you or eradicate you. That's what Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman, that was his little plight when I was five years old. I say my five-year-old is a violent, paranoid schizo. I'm going to kill him with the government and every government dollar known to man with the entire planet Earth. And that's what Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman says out of his hate for his five-year-old. Five -year but the violent, paranoid schizo hasn't done anything. All of you have. I've proven a billion times that I'm being as docile and friendly, as nice as possible, and you're this, and we have the right to kill you. Well, if you're this, and we have the right to kill you, then you're the child-raping murderers. And I'm the doc, doc, docile, peaceful person. You can't, you can't sit there and run around and go, well, I think at five years old, you... How would you even have the information to justify killing 52-year-old Jews? If that information is getting out, Kevin did this and Kevin did that and everyone helped me kill him and it's going out wide, and it, and it is and it always has been since I was five years old. That's the crime. Okay? You can't sit there and hunt a five-year-old Jew for 47 years minute by minute trying to kill him saying it's because I think he's a violent paranoid schizo like Yuka. Okay, Yuka, the, the, the Asian Jew-killing child raping fucking murderer and she's basing it all off my artwork from Professor Jim Jones in 1995 or 6 in my computer imaging class which is harmless artwork of Mike Tyson fighting street fighter character Chun-Li. How does that make me a violent paranoid schizo and why did, why does she have the right to kill Jews or kill Jews that she says are, is violent paranoid schizo because she has the right to kill people. Yuka has the right to kill Jews with, with empty labels because she's better than everyone else. She, she's above the law of the Warner Center Met Complex who has been working on me since the very minute I moved in 26 years ago. And almost everyone in that building and every other building worldwide is doing the same since I was five. On empty labels. Empty labels. Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman, I think my five-year-old is a violent paranoid schizo, so I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him with the government of the United States of America with every government fucking dollar, billions and billions of government dollars probably per year out of an empty label, an empty hate label of Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman's hate for his five-year-old Jew. Five-year-old child. Five-year-old Jewish child. Okay? So, if I have proof of... Literally a billion mental bludgeonings per day to kill a five-year-old Jew or exponentially growing for someone that's just being as nice as can be on an empty label. That's like, you know, Spanish Inquisition or Adolf Hitler or, or your property. I have the right to kill you. But it's not based on anything that I've done. Okay, the only thing I've done is make it to the age 29, world of paranoia, you're a dead man. You don't have the right to coexist in humanity. That's it. Okay, Jason Perlman is a child raping, lying murderer with Jennifer Pilchick Perlman. Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman is a child raping, murdering liar. Anita Perlman is a child raping, murdering liar. Arnold Silver is a child raping, murdering liar. LAPD are a bunch of child raping, Jew killing murderers who have taken a lot of money to do it. There is no actual argument behind any of this. And no matter how many people try to bash my skull in, there's the constant message there, you're not allowed to defend yourself. Oh, that's real civilized, right? Real civilized. From the police, the government, the psychology community. They're, they're all good people, so they're allowed to hunt and kill whoever they want in the most horrific, unspeakable methods. But those evil, bad people, based on empty labels, 
they needed to be tortured and killed with the most horrific, unspeakable methods with worldwide support for no reason other than lack of some facial hair and Dr. Ronald Barry Perlman's delusional fucking lies out of hate for children because he wants to throw his child in the trash can. He didn't get what he wanted, so he's going to try to figure out a method of killing his child that he can get away with, right, with the rest of my family. Now, you got the mother. You got the mother who dates the abusive fathers. So my mother dates the child raping murderers, and she's like, I support my man, right? And then you got the abuse of child raping fathers going out trying to kill the child in unheard of methods with their government ties and all their money and then paying off the cops at a young age to have me killed, right? So LAPD, what is LAPD trying to cover up? They were paid off to have me killed or eradicated in unheard of methods. We're using the system against you. Okay? And how do we rid this child of the world with worldwide support? So how does that go to Dr. Steve Levinson? Well... He's clearly trying to protect his coworker. Maybe he might not even he might not even be associated with my father, but he's trying to protect the medical and psychological psychology community decisions to hunt and kill five year olds, correct? Because he's got his fellow doctors back. But I have a feeling he does know my father. Because those circles are pretty tight. Like I said, it's like Ember Snow knowing Cindy, Cindy Starfall at AdultCon, okay? You know what I'm saying? Chances are, even if they weren't in a flick together, they're going to know each other in those circles and, and they might, might want to cover something up within those circles, right? Okay, but this isn't about the adult industry. This is about a father hunting his five-year-old to kill him with a planet helping. And that's why when I walk out the house right now, if I take a walk right now, I'll see those angry looks on these child raping two killers' faces trying to cover up what they've been doing for the last 47 years. Okay, it's not, they're not mad at me because I've done anything. They're mad at me because they want to kill a five-year-old Jew and get away with it. And the anger is something on par with what you would see in Adolf Hitler's face when he's talking to a Jew. Okay, that, that disgust the disgust for the inferior race type of thing. Okay, that, that's what it is. So anyways, I'll end this is a pretty long piece here. And what time is it? It's This is about two hours of talking. It's 1.12 a.m. And um, I'll end this here and upload it. Um, and this one's pretty long and detailed, so this one's a good one. Um, but I think that it is imperative for people to understand what's really going on. The, the, I guess the one common denominator here is everything's based on empty labels. They're hate labels. Okay, so, and these labels change throughout, they progressively change throughout 47 years. Uh, we have the lack of hair and I'm dangerous. We have the five-year-old Kevin's a violent paranoid schizo. Because my father is trying to define things in his mind, but he's intolerant towards imperfection. Remember that I was born on Castle Creek Air Force Base uh, in Merced, California, so I'm coming from an Air Force father. However, he wasn't really, you know, he was a doctor on an Air Force Base, but he still fits the criteria. Like he sent. He sent Shelly's son, Eric, to military school for some stupid things. So, okay, you have to understand that he is intolerant of imperfection and he's a piece of shit. Okay, so, uh, but he comes off as a warm, loving father. See, it's really, it's actually a really scary personality because he's, he's warm and kind and giving and behind your back he's extremely dangerous and a psychotic murderer. Okay, so, um, and child rapist. Uh, but it puts shock collars on dogs and has no communication skills. Okay, so so that being said, I'm going to end this piece, and I'm sure I'll come up with a lot more to talk about, but the judicial system and psychology community, 
with a plan of child raping murderers want me dead and gone and I'm hunted by worldwide groups minute by minute to be eradicated for no reason. Um, this is a huge part to try to turn infinitesimal things into the end of the world to justify killing a five-year-old Jew and they want to kill Kevin Perlman, assassinate or kill Kevin Perlman since five years old and figure out how to do it and get away with it. How to kill someone and get away with it. Okay, it's not about... <clears throat> mental illness in the sense to cure or someone having a good life is about execution and mental illness cover up labels see i told you he was or or he just he just got depressed and blew his brains out is the cover up if they could push me to that point or or you know he's a schizo and so we had to lock him away and that's what they're doing. The mental illness is the cover-up label to get away with the crime. Okay, um, to get away, how do we force those evil party-goers who might listen to music too loud and disturb the neighbors and tr let's try to make him look like a public nuisance who ended up dead and gone or in a cage for the rest of his life, incarcerated for life. Quote, unquote, Green T. Phillips, prosecutor Green T. Phillips, 2017, they want, we want to incarcerate him for life because he's a child raping Jew killer and cannot deal with someone with lack of eyebrow hair. Okay, so that is it.